All right, we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. I'm gonna do from my apartment here in uh, Yokosuka, Japan. Um, actually, uh, recording this to film my progress going from Japan to uh, back home in Salina, Ohio. So I'm just gonna give you guys one last look at Japan before I leave for about a week and some change. So stay tuned for the next bit. Okay, so I'm leaving kind of early today, so that's why it's all dark and stuff. Plus it's winter time, so yeah, the sun doesn't get up for a while. Yes, even in Japan. I know. <laughs> so just give me one last very dark look of Japan before I head out uh, to the bus that'll take me to Narita Airport, and then from there to uh, O'Hare, and then from O'Hare to Dayton. So yeah, see you guys in the next little bit. Alrighty guys, so made it on the Narita Express. It's not quite as um, nice as it was the last time I went. The last time I went, I think it was, it was in the green cars. Um, and I didn't have time to reserve a green car seat. So, um, still pretty nice. So I'll show you guys around. See you in the next bit. Alright, so the seats are made of like cloth instead of leather. Alright guys, so I'm here in Narita Airport at Cafe Leo. <laughs> uh, just having uh, one last meal before I head out of my flight. Uh, it's going to be about an hour and some change, so I'm enjoying a, a nice cold brew. I know some people in the comments are like, don't drink and vlog, but they're just going to hate. So I'm going to wait for my um, beef curry to come out and uh, I'll show you guys the results. See you in the next bit. Alright guys, so my beef curry finally came up, took a nice Instagram picture of it, so if you guys are subscribed to my Instagram account, which is instagram.com slash theandysan, you'll have already seen this, like way before the video was made, so yeah, enjoy a nice brewski and some nice curry, and uh, head on the flight, so yeah, see you guys there. Okay guys, so I'm just uh, waiting for my flight here. And it's about half hour or so before we start boarding. So, um, if you guys didn't know, I'm leaving on New Year's Eve in 2014 at the time of this recording. So, I just wanted to show you guys just how crowded it is trying to fly out on New Year's Eve here in Japan. So, take a look. Oh my gosh, it's just so freaking crowded. Like, I, I can barely breathe. It's insane. I know, right? Oh, we got some interesting stuff on the tube, so. Yeah, so crowded. All right, guys, so I'll just wait for uh, boarding and uh, show you guys the side of the plane. See you there. All right, guys, so I'm finally on the plane, um, and we're about ready to take off to go to Chicago. So, about 15 hours, 15, 16 hours, I believe, for a touchdown, so yeah, see you in Chicago. Alright guys, so I finally made it to Chicago about 15 hours later and uh, I've had a lot of coffee so I'm up for now. <laughs> Might be crashing hard when I get home, but uh, yeah, uh, once again, in a super crowded airport, oh my god, so crowded on New Year's Eve. Man, check it out. Yep, so crowded. So crowded. All right, guys, so uh, the next stop will be uh, Dayton Airport, and then from there, home. So yeah, see you there. So yeah, once again, I skipped out in the Dayton Airport, and now I'm back home in Salina, Ohio, in my parents' new house. So um, yeah, it's good to be home again. Can't wait to see uh, more family, see friends, and all that kind of stuff. But for now, I've been flying a really long time, so I'm gonna go take a nap. So yeah. This is the Andy Sun. Sign up for now from lovely Salina, Ohio, or at least my little room here. <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in to this video and my other stuff. Also, gotta thank you guys for liking, the thumbs, comment, subscribing, to your friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you with my January 2015 update video for, you guessed it, January 2015. Woo! So yeah, this is my first update video for 2015. Really excited, so um, we got some 
things to cover here, not just for this month, but also just to kind of give you guys a big picture idea of what's going to be going on in 2015 for me. So as always with these updates, we're going to be going over uh, YouTube updates first, and then we're going to be going over personal life updates. So with that said, here we go. And as always, I got my notes over here. So yeah. So right now, I'm currently at my parents' house in Salina, Ohio. Uh, recording this on my GoPro, so if the audio is a little, mm, that's why, because it's strictly off the GoPro. So, anyway, moving on. So, first on the list, YouTube updates. Um, give you guys a little update on uh, the series and things like that. Uh, YouTube 101. Um, I've already got the whole script and what I want to say down. It's just a matter of recording it. And, uh, there are some. Uh, things I want to do um, as far as the production of the series. You know, maybe I want to just record it on my own. Maybe I want to record it with somebody. Um, it's just there's a lot of little things that I want to do with the series before I actually put it out there. And who knows, I might just end up saying fuck it and just recording it <laughs> anyway. So, um, yeah, there's that. And uh, for those of you guys who don't know what YouTube 101 is, uh, before I move on, uh, it's basically a little series that I made that uh, basically tells you how to uh, start on YouTube, how to uh, make a channel, how to get content, all that kind of stuff. So, for that. Uh, next, and uh, this is something that uh, I've really been wanting to do for a long time, uh, bringing back NFAX. Now, I know NFAX has been a very popular slash controversial series for me. Um, I felt it was one of the first big series of videos that I did. And uh, I stopped it for a while back in the day just because I thought, you know, I really wasn't feeling a lot of the questions that were given to me. I was getting a lot of the same questions, you know. Am I right for the Navy? What's boot camp like? And stuff like that. And, you know, I felt like I had, you know, succinctly answered those questions, you know, in my earlier videos. So I didn't want to keep on retreading stuff or maybe change like one little thing and then just basically rehashing everything else I said earlier. So I was like, eh, you know, I'll, I'll answer the questions, but I'm not going to like make a video about it. So, um,. As far as NFAX goes, I really do want to bring back the series and maybe um, not not only take fan questions, but also um, just kind of give my input on certain uh, aspects of the Navy and things that you might not think of, you know, when you're signing up to join or, you know, if you're picking orders or something like that. So I, I want to kind of give my uh, input on the whole thing. And of course, you know, I'll put the disclaimer, you know, it's strictly my opinions, not the U.S. Navy or the government or anything like that. So there's that. Um, but, you know, I am also uh, willing to take uh, fan questions and stuff like that, too. So, you know, don't be afraid to ask questions. You know, I'll definitely answer them, you know, as best I can. I don't know everything about the Navy, so um, don't expect me to know everything, but I'll do my best to answer your question as best I can. So, anywho, moving on. Um, I've been wanting to do this also for a long time, uh, get an intro-outro. Now, for a while there, the whole making an intro for your channel or an outro for your channel kind of fell out of vogue for a while just because it took up a lot of time in the video. So, um, they're actually starting to come back into fashion again, I guess. So, um, I'm thinking about... Uh, revisiting the, uh, the intro outro but it's not gonna be nearly as long as it was back in the day it's not gonna be like the big 15 second intro or anything like that so um yeah i'm gonna be working with some people to uh make a cool little jingle for me i guess so i'm um, definitely looking forward to that let's see next up is channel trailer um this is something that i've been working on for a long time now and it's it's really been a beast to work on. I, I really want to get it done, but there's just so much of my channel. I've been doing this for um, almost nine years at the time of this recording. It'll be nine years at the beginning of March of 2015, so almost, almost a decade of YouTube. So I really got a lot of stuff out there. So it's hard to condense that all into a, a tiny little trailer. Now, of course, I could do my more current stuff, just to give you guys an idea of what to expect, but also want to kind of uh, give you guys, you know, just 
more background on me rather than just, you know, hey, here's Japan stuff, you know, so uh, it's just been hard to work on, but I am hoping to get it done by the end of 2015 at least, I mean, come on, <laughs> so, and uh, for the trailer, I do want to make it uh, 90 seconds or less, preferably right at the 90 second mark, because I feel that that's like the perfect length. You know, just to give you guys a good idea of what my channel's about and stuff like that. So, there's that. Anywho, uh, next little bit of business. Not quite YouTube news per se, but it is something that kind of falls in line with YouTube. It's uh, my blog. And uh, those of you guys who don't know, before I started my whole YouTube channel and all that other stuff, I was a uh, really big on the blogging scene. Not big as in popular, just big as in I was really into it. Um, really liked writing articles, really liked writing, and I felt that it helped uh, improve my uh, just overall writing style, I guess you could say. You know, helped me in college and stuff like that, helped me get through a lot of hard times, and, you know, eventually led me to YouTube, and I started writing less and less and started focusing more on videos. But, you know, I still do like to write, and I really want to get my blog up to speed. It's just that... <laughs> Last time I updated anything was back in 2012, I believe, uh, with the occasional entry here or there. So I really want to get down to updating it, but I have to dedicate a huge chunk of time to doing so. And even if I do manage to update it, I still have to, uh, you know, get around to, you know, retooling the site and everything, because it's, it's very out of date as far as just the uh, aesthetics and things like that. So I really do want to revamp it. Uh, but in the meantime, I want to, uh, for certain videos that require a lot of uh, detail and things like that, where I explain like the how-tos and things like that, uh, I want to make uh, complimentary posts on my blog so that way you guys have something uh, written so you don't have to skim through the entire video just to see whatever the question was or something like that. So I, I think that that will be the main focus of my blog from now on, will just be more of an accompaniment to my videos. So, there's that, <laughs> moving on. Uh, collabs, um, as always, I'm always up for uh, collabs. Um, if you guys noticed, I started in uh, two collabs. Uh, at the end of 2014, I started in Molly's uh, Christmas collab. Um, I also starred in the uh, much anticipated, <laughs> highly delayed, um, happy collab that was originally started by TQ Sam, but uh, was eventually finished by Hiko Simon. So I, I was in that as well. But um, if you're a YouTuber out in the uh, Kanagawa area, you know, Yokohama, Tokyo, stuff like that, um, be more than willing to collab with you on whatever. So just let me know and set something up. So, yeah. <laughs> so, and uh, the last little bit of YouTube news that we'll get into before we move on to more personal stuff is uh, First Impact Anime. And uh, for those of you who don't know, and I probably explained this a lot in my update videos, but First Impact Anime is a series that I did with uh, my best friend, the Talking Dolphin, also known as Ariopolis where we basically uh, riff over uh, the first episode of an anime series. So, um, as of this recording, I have three episodes completely done. I know uh, last month I think it said four, but it was actually three. I goofed, my bad. <laughs> so, I have three completely done. Uh, there's still about nine or 10 left, I believe. We did like a 13 or so episode series uh, for this uh, season. So um, it's a lot of uh, work that goes into making these videos because I have to like do a bunch of extra stuff versus you know the videos that I put up on YouTube. So um, those take a lot more time, and also they're longer too. So it takes a lot more time to render as well. So those will be coming out slowly. But once I get um, all the videos completed, then uh, I'll let you guys know. Put up like a little trailer thing. Um, and then just release them weekly. So that's why I wanted to wait until they were all completed versus, okay, here's three, and then, you know, continue to work on them in the background. So, yeah, there's that. Moving on to personal updates. Um, 2015 is going to be my last year in Japan. 
2016, we're going to be going back stateside, and then from there, I'm going to be getting out of the Navy. So, I'm um, really going to be stepping up uh, my recording in Japan as best I can, uh, depending on ship schedule and all this other stuff. But I'm going to be trying my best to uh, make 2015 a good, good last year in Japan. That doesn't mean I'm, you know, never ever going to come back to Japan ever again. No. Um, I definitely want to uh, come back. Um, hopefully, I can get something going as like a exchange student or you know maybe come on like a holiday visa or you know something. You know, something. I definitely do want to come back to Japan, but um, I am content with being back in America for a little bit, just kind of uh, unwinding from my post Navy life and stuff like that. So. Uh, there's that, um, but as far as, you know, being back in Japan goes, um, I really want to step up my recording, like I said, so if you guys have something you want to see, you know, be sure to let me know in the comments below, in the booby boo. I keep forgetting on the GoPro, it's like, it used to be on my camera, it was like here, and I point down to the booby boo, but now it's like here, it's like, oh my, it's way down there. <laughs> So, um, yeah, just let me know in the comments if you want to see something specific. Uh, if there's like a particular event or like a, a food or something that comes up that you guys want to see me uh, cover, you know. If I find it interesting, I'll cover it. If it doesn't really apply to me, like if it's like some, you know, new girly store or something like that, I'm like, hmm. Nah, that's not really my scene, so <laughs> I don't know if I'll do something like that. But, uh, yeah, so just let me know. Um, anywho, I, I got into this a little bit before, but, you know, preparing for uh, post-Navy life. Um, as you guys know, I am getting out of the Navy in uh, June 2016. So I, I decided not to re-enlist, and uh, it's nothing against the Navy. It's just, you know, I feel like I've done what I want to do in the Navy. You know, I've set out and accomplished all the goals that I want to in the Navy, and that I want to move on to a new chapter in my life. You know, going back to college, um, you know, getting a post Navy job, uh, stuff like that. So um, I don't have a super long term plan. It's more of like a like a five or seven year plan. I guess that's kind of long, <laughs> depending on who you ask. But uh, my plan right now is to basically transition out of the Navy in June 2016. Um, go back to college in the fall semester of 2016. I'm planning on going to a college around the uh, Ohio tri-state area, so we're thinking like either Ohio or Michigan, uh, maybe Indiana, a little iffy on that one, but I'm thinking more like Ohio, Michigan, so that way I'm closer to my family, but you know, still far enough away to where I can still feel like I'm doing my own thing, but I can still come down on weekends or whatever, and it's not too big of a hassle. And I'm so close to my friends too, from here, back home. So, um, that was the one thing I really missed about being in the Navy. And granted, I've made a lot of friends, a lot of Navy friends, you know, during my time in. But, you know, there's always something about that original group of people that you hung out with, you know, back in, you know, middle school, high school, college, you know, there's always something, something special about that, you know. And yeah, we talk on Facebook and stuff like that, but it's not the same as, you know, hanging out in real life. So that's why I want to, you know, stay in America for a couple of years just to uh, reconnect with that and to, you know, just, you know, rest, recuperate, because, you know, the Navy life can be very stressful. So, and that's something that I might talk about in a future video. So stay tuned for that. Um, but anyway, getting back to personal plan, uh, once I get out in 2016, in June, I'll be uh, coming back here to Salina, um, getting myself all situated in uh, like an apartment or something uh, near the college that I decide to go to, whether it's in Michigan or Ohio, <laughs> who knows yet. Um, and then just attending college in the fall of 2016 and just uh, going from there, you know, graduating and I do want to do like a, maybe like a little bit of English teaching or something once I graduate in Japan. So um, that's also another possibility for me to, to come back. Um, whether I stay out there long term, um, I'm not sure yet. Um, it, it all depends on uh, what the job market's like and stuff like that. So um, I may stay out there a bit longer. I may just do my one year induce out 
who knows, it's, it's way too early for me to say something like that. Um, but uh, until then, I am looking into taking uh, a couple college courses while I'm still in, in the service, so that way I can knock out a lot of the, a lot of the basic stuff. Because keep in mind, I haven't been in college for almost 10 years now. So even if I still had credits that carried over, uh, a lot of them are very old, so I'm not 100% on uh, what credits will count and what will not. So I figure it'll just be, you know, safer for me to take some basic courses, you know, like basic English, basic math, crap like that, just to just to get it out of the way so I'm not bothered with it when I'm going back to college full time. So there's that. And the uh, last little bit of news in this video, it's like at the uh, 16 minute mark here or thereabouts, depending on how I edit this. Um, so my last little bit of this video is my New Year's resolutions. And I know, you know, everybody has the typical ones, you know, lose weight and yeah, I kind of need to do that too. So just saying, <laughs> um, but aside from stuff like that, um, I have three main uh, New Year's resolutions that I really want to uh, help and really want to uh, improve. Uh, in 2015, and that is uh, get back into learning Japanese, you know, I kind of uh, been a little in and out with uh, improving my Japanese lately, you know, just due to work schedule and stuff like that, you know, I haven't really like, sat down and, you know, sat with the flashcards and said, okay, this katakana is this, or this kanji is this, or, you know, just gone back and forth with that, um, really haven't been you know, working on that as much as I really wanted to in 2014. So I'm hoping this year, 2015, is going to be uh, better. I'm going to get more study material and things like that. And also, I feel like I'm, you know, I really want to get out and socialize a bit more too. So I think, you know, actually using it, you know, in a practical setting with actual people, <laughs> you know, would help uh, improve in Japanese as well. But there's also, you know, the aspect of you know, grinding it out, you know, learning kanji and things like that through flashcards. For some reason, that works for me. I mean, I work for everybody, but flashcards definitely work for me, so. Um, next one, number two, is uh, get back into playing guitar more. And again, this kind of falls into uh, the same thing that my Japanese fell into, which was just a lack of time, or perceived time, I should say. <laughs> um, and just poor time management. Which I think ultimately my New Year's resolution is better time management. So, because a lot of these goals and stuff fall under the umbrella of better time management. But, you know, playing guitar more, uh, learning more songs, uh, learning rhythms, staying in time, you know, just stuff like that. You know, just basic stuff. So, uh, but the third thing I want to do this year is to get into the Japanese dating scene. It's been kind of, uh, I don't know, I'm not one of those super gregarious people, you know, who can just talk to anybody, you know. I always feel like I'm bothering people, you know, if I don't have like a hook or something that's like, you know, oh hey, you're into this thing, you know, I'm into this thing too, so we can talk about that. I, I'm, I don't like uh, just going in cold and be like, you know, hey, what's up? You're a chick, you're hot, hey, let's uh, hang out. <laughs> That's just kind of lame to me. I don't really like it, but uh, yeah, I want to get into it, uh, this, the dating scene and stuff, because, you know, getting closer to 30. I'm actually going to be turning 30 at the end of this year, so it's crazy. <laughs> I know. So, anywho, that's all I got for this video. This is almost at the 20-minute mark. At least the raw video is. I don't know how I'm going to cut this up, but in any event, um, I'll stop blabbering and let you guys uh, go on with uh, whatever it is you're doing today. So yeah, this is the Andy song. Sign up for now. Thanking you guys for tuning into this video and my other stuff. Also, want to thank you guys for liking, the thumbs, and other peripheral devices, especially mice that I don't have. My fucking laptop's touchpad is too fucking touchy. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching this video. Like and you know, the thumbs and all that stuff. Commenting, subscribing, tell a few friends at the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you oh, <laughs> next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. Coming at you from uh, my parents' house here in Salina, Ohio. 
gonna document my uh, travel back to Japan because sadly my uh, leave time here is over so I have to get back to Yokosuka and uh, just gonna make this video here to show you my progress so yeah see you at the airport all right guys so we're in the Dayton airport and uh, my flight's about ready to take off and I thought I'd give you guys a little sneak peek since I didn't uh, last time because I was in such a hurry to get home so yeah they were yeah not really a whole lot to it it's actually a lot busier than uh except for the garbly noise but yeah it was a lot busier than the last time I was here so uh, yeah so yeah we're gonna be heading out to uh Chicago O'Hare my home away from home <laughs> and uh a little stop and then off to Tokyo so yeah be there all right guys so we're on the plane ride from um, Chicago to Tokyo in our airport so I'll just show you guys around because you guys have seen O'Hare airport it's like like I said it's my home away from home so still <laughs> so I'll show you guys around the plane so it's the next bit okay so this time around I'm on the back of the plane pretty much I mean there's the back right there but I wanted to show you guys this it's really cool so on the flight over you get these little things right it's like a remote you know you can do the normal things change channel apply them you can type you can play games all kinds of stuff and you can watch like all kinds of different movies on here too so like it makes the flight very quick and hey you can charge your thing too so that's awesome and cup holder yay so yeah the world's most interesting man will be uh taking off here shortly and uh we'll see you guys in tokyo see you there all right guys so finally made it after 15 hours of flying made it back to japan so um riding the uh, naruto express to yokohama station and then from there back home in yokosuka so i thought i'd let you guys uh have a look around at the good life in the green car of Naruto Express. Stay tuned. Okay, so um, leather seats, nice wood paneling, love the view. <laughs> Not really. Well, it gets better sometimes. Get little patches here and there. But, yeah. Nice and quiet, just the way I like it. So yeah, made it back home to Yokosuka. Uh, still got some stuff to unpack, but I'll save that for later. I'm just gonna chill out, watch some uh, Game Grumps, and uh, probably hit the pit. So yeah, this is Andy San. Sign up for now. Thanking you guys for tuning in this video and my other stuff. Also, want to thank you guys for liking, the thumbs, <laughs> commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, coming at you, book, with my February 2015 update video for, you guessed it, February 2015. Woo. So, yeah, as you can tell, I got a lot of shit on my mind, so, uh, stay tuned. <laughs> Yeah, um, I got this little hat from uh, Don Quixote. I thought it'd be kind of funny to show you guys in this video. And uh, now me and Ryosuke from Texan and Tokyo are poopy bros, poopy bros. So yeah, there's that. Um, so anyway, as usual with these uh, YouTube update videos, we're gonna be going over YouTube stuff as well as uh, some personal life stuff. So yeah, and uh, I did, I did want to address one more thing before we get into it. Um, uh, it's kind of embarrassing to say, uh, but uh, there's been some comments and stuff talking about how dirty my room is, and especially with the GoPro, it's a lot more noticeable. So, um, apologies for the mess. I'm kind of in the middle of cleaning, doing laundry and stuff like that, but I wanted to get this video out before I you know, do a, a big cleanup because it's going to take me a minute. So, yeah. Um, but I am working on it. You know, I got some plastic bins over here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I got some plastic bins. I'm hoping to reorganize and just clean stuff up so yeah <laughs> get my shit together right okay you're gonna hear a lot of poop puns in this video so get used to it anyway um getting back to uh, the YouTube updates uh, to be perfectly honest I'm not really gonna be making a whole lot of videos this month and that's mostly due to uh, the work schedule picking up so I'm hoping to put out a couple videos you know I've already got a couple in the queue not a whole lot but um, hoping to 
put out some videos this month, but you know, like I said, with the work schedule picking up, I uh, don't expect too much. So there is that. Um, so yeah, I had to put pretty much all my uh, YouTube projects on hold because of that, which includes YouTube 101, and facts, which I'm starting back up again. So yeah, um, and just a bunch of other projects, you know, first impact anime, things like that. So that's get put on hold yet again. So sorry, <laughs> just want to give you guys a heads up, you know, beforehand. So. Um, with that said, uh, let's get into some more, um, well, before we get into the personal stuff, let's talk about um, my other pages and stuff like that. I, I think, I don't think I uh, talked about my other pages, but I do remember a long time ago saying, you know, if I hit a thousand subscribers, and at the time of this recording, we just passed 1,400, yeah! <laughs> So, um, I said if we hit 1,000 subscribers, I would make a Facebook fan page, because I felt at the time, you know, if I had less than 1,000, then it was just kind of, you know, just jerking off, <laughs> stuff like that. So, um, I, I told you guys, you know, once we hit 1,000, then I'll make a proper Facebook fan page, and we did. So, um, finally did that, and it's just going to link to all my updates and stuff like that. So that way you can follow me on Facebook now so that's cool it's uh, I'll put links and stuff in the boopy boop down below but uh, if you guys want to check it out on my channel it's the little Facebook link on my uh, main channel page so it'll take you to facebook.com slash the Andy official so that's the link and uh, like I said boop -de boop so there's that and I also uh, started a patreon page recently and uh, I wanted to do a full like patreon uh, rollout promo video which you know might be coming soon you know once I figure it out but uh, I just released it quietly I didn't make any promos about it or anything like that um, at the time so um, yeah <laughs> there's that uh, I don't have a whole lot of rewards or anything like that set up I just got some uh, basic generic stuff but once I uh, get the hang of it I think I'll be able to clean it up and uh, organize it a bit better but uh, if you like what I do on the YouTubes and stuff like that and want to uh, help fund future projects and stuff like that you know feel free to click on uh, my patreon page and donate a little bit even if it's just a dollar that's cool and that doesn't mean that you know I'm never gonna do YouTube again it's just gonna be patreon you know it's just it's just a way to show support for uh, the show and stuff like that so yeah <laughs> Um, anyway, aside from that, you know, I got my other accounts, which you guys know of, you know, my Twitter account, my Instagram account, stuff like that, which are all the links I'll put in the boopy boop down below, or down below. <laughs> I keep forgetting about the GoPro thing, but anyway, um, and they're also on my main channel page as well, so you just put the links up there as well. So, anyway, moving on to some more personal stuff, and, uh... Lately, I've been playing a lot of uh, Nintendo 3DS. Uh, I've been getting back into gaming and stuff like that. Um, just the portable stuff, you know, I, I don't really play consoles or anything like that anymore or play a lot of computer games. It's just, you know, portable stuff. So, I've uh, really been enjoying uh, the Pokemon uh, Alpha Sapphire. Um, I think I have like six badges now or something like that. So I've noticed that it's a, it seems to be a lot easier now than it was back then, or just a lot more forgiving, I think. Um, it might just, you know, be, you know, nostalgia kicking in or something like that. But I think, you know, the remake is a lot easier than it was, or than the original was, I should say. So yeah, there's that. Um, but getting into more, uh, just not so nice news and just kind of you know, stuff like that um you guys recall that i mentioned that i wanted to uh eat healthier and stuff like that um so and in addition to you know the usual generic new year's resolution of ah lose weight and stuff like that um another thing that came up recently was um this was uh the whole impetus behind this was for a, uh, a certain qualification that I had to get and uh, they ran you know some medical testing and did some blood work and stuff like that and they found out that my cholesterol is a bit high for someone my age 
So, you know, the levels and stuff are also unbalanced as well. So it's not just that I have a lot of cholesterol. It's that my, uh, the bad cholesterol is higher than the good cholesterol and something about triglycerides. Uh, so, in any event, uh, it's a bit higher than what it should be for someone my age. Um, I'm not gonna die of a heart attack anytime soon, I hope. Um, but it does need to be remedied, so. Um, you know, I talked with Doc about it and he said like the basic uh, way to remedy it is, you know, just the usual diet and exercise. So, um, I've been cutting back a lot on eating out and even when I do eat out, um, I usually go for like the healthier options like uh, grilled chicken as opposed to like fried chicken or hamburgers or something like that. And, uh, you know, getting water instead of soda, uh, that's a big one. But, you know, I do have some little things that you know are a bit harder to break most notably like french fries you know i love me a good fried potato <laughs> so that's uh, that's gonna take some time to break but i'm hoping to uh slow it down a little bit so hopefully uh doc said you know with more exercise better diet uh, things like that, I should see uh, improvements within a couple months. So um, that's another thing I'll be keeping you guys updated about. Um, now, of course, uh, cholesterol levels are a bit hard to do without blood tests and stuff like that. So it's a bit harder for me to gauge it. So I'll probably gauge it based on like weight or something like that. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But uh, I just want to let you guys know that. So, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I guess it's just another reason to uh, eat healthier, right? So, there's that. And uh, that's pretty much it for this update video. Sorry I'm a little little rambly. I got a lot of, a lot of shit on my mind, <laughs> if you guys couldn't tell. Um, so sorry about the rambliness and stuff like that. And I hope to see you guys very soon. So yeah, this is the Andy San. Sign up for now. Thanking you guys for tuning in to this kind of rambly update video and my other stuff. Also want to thank you guys for the liking, the thumbs, and other peripheral device, devices, I should say. <laughs> Commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you poop, with my March 2015 update video for, you guessed it, March 2015. Woo! So yeah, it's uh, March, which is also my nine year anniversary on YouTube. Can you guys believe it? March 1st, 2006 is when I signed up for this account, so I'm really excited. And I'm actually thinking about doing a uh, something really special for my 10 year anniversary. Uh, maybe do like a kind of a documentary or like 10 years of YouTube, some kind of dealio. I'm not quite sure yet, but just a little idea. It's been bogged around the old nog nog. So yeah, I've um, got my updates and stuff on the side as usual. So uh, I'll read through the list, I'll go through some YouTube -y stuff as well as some personal life stuff. But first, too high. All right, so yeah, nine years, crazy. <laughs> uh, but unfortunately for this month, due to my work schedule, not a lot's gonna be uh, released. So I won't really start to be uh, releasing videos regularly until uh, April of 2015. So um, lots of stuff I've recorded so far. Um, two main things. Um, I've recorded my trip to Sasebo Steak Salon. Now I only recorded like a couple little like 30, 45 second clips of it. Uh, but I'm going to do some voiceover and kind of explain what it is. It's basically like a really awesome steakhouse in uh, Sasebo, Japan. So lots of good stuff there. Um, if you're ever in the area, definitely check it out for sure. It's expensive, but worth it. Anywho, uh, next on the list is uh, a real big one uh, that I get to check off the old bucket list. And that's my trip to uh, both Miyajima and Hiroshima. So I'm really, uh, really glad I took the trip out there. Uh, Miyajima is basically like a little island. Um, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, it's basically like, uh, if you look, Google like images of Japan, you'll oftentimes see like a, a red uh, Tori gate out in the middle of the ocean. That's Miyajima. <laughs> 
So that's the main thing they got out there, and they got like a little temple and stuff like that, and stuff like that. So I recorded a lot of stuff on my GoPro. Um, definitely looking forward to releasing that very soon. Um, might have to wait till next month. Not sure. So there's that. And uh, also, I was really excited for my trip to Hiroshima as well. It's definitely uh, bucket list material, especially considering you know it was one of the main uh, targets for uh, the atomic bomb, along with uh, Nagasaki as well. So, but that aside, you know, I went to the memorials, went to the Peace Park, um, really had a good time out there, even though it was very somber and I felt kind of awkward, especially being an American there. Little, little bouts of awkwardness aside, it was a very, very beautiful place and it was very, uh, very serene. So, I think you guys will like it too. So, um, definitely, I don't know, made me feel at peace. So, good place, good place. Um, next on the list, of course, is all my uh, my main side projects, uh, video series and stuff that I wanted to work on, which are currently in progress because work schedule. So these series include YouTube 101, and facts, uh, proper intro outro, channel trailer, first impact anime, stuff like that. So I had to put them on hold because of the work schedule. It is what it is. Uh, next up is my blog, which also has to get put on the back burner. Um, probably not going to work on that for another couple months, just because uh, timing and stuff like that, which I'll get to later. Um, but I do want to update it, want to make it current, and uh, just kind of spice up the looks of it. Because that it, it's in need of a good updating, if you if you know what I mean. So, um, but I think once I get everything up and going, uh, my plan for my blog is to basically have it be more of like a companion piece to my videos. So my videos are gonna be my main content. My blog is also gonna have the video plus like uh, extra text and stuff like that. So if you guys either don't want to watch the video, can't watch the video, whatever the case may be, you have uh, a lengthier description and stuff like that, so that. Uh, next up, collabs, you know, still down, but I probably won't be able to actually do anything until April 2015, so there's that. Um, but the new and exciting news, like five minutes in this video, <laughs> is uh, a new project I'm going to be starting up well, once I start getting uh, some free time is my new Let's Play series and I'm really excited about this and i um, been doing a lot of brainstorming, a lot of planning, a lot of you know looking for new gear to uh, kickstart this thing and get it going. So um, really excited about it. Um, but the thing I've been looking for is a name and you know <laughs> since YouTube has been around for over 10 years now there's not a lot of uh, interesting names uh, that are out there anymore, so I have to be a little more creative in coming up with a new name for my Let's Play series of videos, because I also want to make like a, a separate channel for it as well, just in case, you know, I really like what I do and want to continue on with it and stuff like that, so there's that. So um, if you guys have any name ideas, you know, you can feel free to put them in the comments below in the boopity boop, or uh, send, them, send them in a personal message if you like. Um, but as far as uh, games and stuff I'm going to be reviewing, I'm just going to start off with uh, a lot of games that I grew up playing. You know, stuff from like the NES, Super NES, uh, N64, that kind of era of games. Uh, I might get like PlayStation and stuff like that later, maybe some Steam games. But just to start off with, we'll just start off with games I grew up with, just to kind of get things going. So um, before we get into personal stuff, I do want to talk about my other uh, social media outlets. Um, if you guys go to, to uh, my main YouTube page uh, and you look at the little bar up above, uh, you'll notice that there's some links. And uh, the first link is to my Facebook page, which is YouTube, or not YouTube, but Facebook.com slash official, And that's just basically like a Facebook fan page so you guys can get in touch with me, get updates, things like that. And then there's also my Patreon page, which uh, if you guys like what I do, want to donate some money or whatever, you know, you can feel free. I'm not going to sit around and, you know, e-bag or, you know, e-panhandle or whatever you guys call it. Um, I'm not going to do any of that stuff. But 
you know, I have that up there just in case, you know, you guys want to show your appreciation for what I do and things like that. Um, I'll have to tweak it up a little bit so I can get uh, proper rewards and stuff like that. I just got some basic stuff up there right now. So there's that. Um, next up is my Instagram account, which is Instagram.com slash the Indie Song. Uh, probably my second most uh, used uh, social media. You know, Facebook is its own thing, and then there's YouTube, and then Instagram. So <laughs> yeah, uh, really love the Instagram and uh, stuff like that. And of course, I have Twitter. So um, yeah. So, you know, in case you're wondering, you know, what's up with the, you know, video up update schedules and things like that, uh, there's those things. <laughs> so, anyway, moving on to personal updates. Um, remember when I said that this was going to be my last year in Japan? Well. Oh, I'm sorry actually been expedited a little bit. This has actually been my last couple months in Japan. So the big news, then we'll lay down you this video like nine minutes in. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I got orders to uh, shore duty out in uh, Whidbey Island, Washington, the state. So I'm um, sorry if I sound a little stuffed up. Uh, still getting over or something. But uh, yeah. Um, Really excited to be going out to Washington. Um, the orders just kind of came out of nowhere. I wasn't really expecting to uh, get orders. I didn't really apply for orders. It just kind of happened. So I was like, okay. <laughs> um, so my original plan was to just kind of write out the rest of my enlistment on my current ship and then just go to college and go from there. But uh, with these new orders, uh, they're three-year orders out to shore duty. So instead of getting out in 2016, I'll be getting out in 2018. So, um, a lot of my college plans and stuff like that are just kind of getting, you know, pushed back just two years. So, I'll be doing the same stuff just two years further down the line. So, um, in the meantime, I'm going to be recording as much as I can while I'm here in Japan, as well as, you know, other ports and stuff that'll hit, you know, before then, and uh, stuff like that. So, uh, let me know what you guys want to see before I, before I go. Now, keep in mind... Uh, due the, to the uh, compressed uh, time scale or timeline or the amount of time I have left in Japan, I should say. Um, probably, I may or may not be able to accommodate, but if it's in the local, like, Kanagawa area or maybe Tokyo or something like that, I could do my best to uh, accommodate. So, um, speaking of which, uh, the YouTube Hanami for 2015 is going to be coming up next month, April. <laughs> Really excited about that one. It's good to, uh, it's always good to meet up with fellow YouTubers, see how everybody's doing, stuff like that. And uh, I know I've said this in an earlier video, but I didn't really meet, you know, YouTubers, you know, until I came over to Japan. You know, because when I was back in the States and stuff, I was pretty much the only YouTuber that I knew. You know, everybody kind of knew me as the YouTube guy. You know, if anybody else I knew did YouTube videos, it was basically like a little one-off kind of deal and you know they didn't do it on a frequent basis or anything like that so it was really nice to see um, other youtubers you know that do it on a more frequent basis and just kind of see how they do things and stuff like that and it's also fun to see youtubers that I frequently watch you know in real life get to know them as people and stuff like that so that's always cool um, so I'm really excited to uh, meet some old faces for uh, last time for a while and uh, meet some new faces as well. And yes, if you guys are wondering, I am gonna be bringing some Taco Bell. I know they're uh, starting up here in Japan, but uh, I'm gonna be bringing as much Taco Bell as I possibly can. I'm gonna try to get uh, transportation so I don't have to carry it all the way from you know the trains from Yokosuka out to y Yoyogi Park. So it'll be warmer and I'll have more of it. So really excited about that as well. So yeah. And uh, moving on to uh, post-Navy life stuff. Um, like I said earlier, you know, all that stuff's going to be pushed uh, two years down the line. So instead of getting out in 2016, I'm getting out in 2018. Go to college uh, that fall semester. But uh, the main difference is now that I'm going to shore duty, 
I'm going to be focusing a lot more on uh, getting as much college done there as I can so that way when I do get out I can uh, try to get my graduate degree as opposed to just my undergrad so there's that so I'm really excited about that you know taking a lot more college courses collecting courses things like that so um, next up on the list is a health update and <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell you know with the shirt on you know, I think I look pretty much the same with the shirt on but I do have to say my clothes do feel looser and I don't look or at least feel as bloated of course you know it's hard to tell in the shirt I probably look about the same but you know it is what it is so I am eating healthier you know despite the alcohol beverage you see here you know been for the most part eating healthier exercising you know stuff like that and I do feel better so there's that and uh, last little bit here before we go is uh, me getting back into video games. All thanks to these guys right here, the Game Grumps. We got Grump, Not So Grump, and the original Not So Grump. Cool stuff. Yeah, this just came in the mail, so I thought I'd show you guys. It says, keep calm and grump on. Good stuff. Um, but yeah, their playthrough of uh, Fire Red. You know, really got me interested in playing Pokemon again, which in turn got me interested in playing video games again. So I was really excited about that. And uh, got a Nintendo 3DS, which I did an unboxing for a couple weeks ago. And uh, I've been playing uh, Pokemon Alpha Sapphire and Pokemon X for the past couple weeks. Um, I'm almost at the Elite Four for uh, Pokemon X. I'm on Delta episode for Alpha Sapphire. That's where I'm at right now. So yeah, I've been doing pretty good. And it seems like the games are a bit easier now than they were back then. I'm not sure if it's just because I'm older and I kind of know better, or if they actually are easier. I don't know. But um, I do have a question for you guys. Uh, what else do you think I should play on the 3DS? Now I know you know there's a lot of people wanting me to play more console games or stuff on PC or Steam or whatever, but. My main squeeze right now is the 3DS, just because I can pretty much take it anywhere and stuff like that. So, I'm um, sure to leave, you know, your thoughts and stuff in the comments below, in the boopity boop. And who knows, it may even appear on an episode of my upcoming Let's Play channel, which is kind of my little attempt at getting me back into video games again, so I'm really excited about that. Um, but that's all for uh, this video. So yeah, this is the Andy song. Sign up for now. Thinking you guys boop, tuning into this video and my other stuff. Also gotta thank you guys for liking, the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you boop, next time. Catch you later guys. Bye. Alright, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. Coming at you boop, from lovely Guam. So I decided to make this uh, this video just raw, unedited, because I don't have my uh, computer or anything like that. So um, yeah, <laughs> just uh, just doing this on my GoPro. So uh, let's have a little look at Guam, shall we? So yeah, there's the ocean in all its lovely glory. <laughs> there's the main strip down there. Just did a video a couple days ago of it. Uh, there's like a little music park over there. Over there is another music park. I don't know if you guys can see that or not over the bushes. And there's a highway. Good stuff. So, uh, yeah, let's just move this inside because it's freaking hot out here and noisy. And I like air conditioning, so. Me. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I just wanted to make this, uh, this little update video here to let you guys know I'm live and well. Um, just uh, chilling in Guam for the time being, but I will be back in Japan very soon, so I'll be able to resume uh, uploading videos on a more regular basis. Can't wait, very excited. So I guess this this could be my almost April 2015 update video of sorts. So yeah, um, so anyway, I guess just to kind of lead into the updates a little bit. Um, I recorded a lot of stuff while I was out and about, you know, do, doing stuff in like South Korea and whatnot, but uh, I went to go uh, install the GoPro app on my tablet, and uh, when I went to go enter, because you have to enter in a PIN to link the GoPro up with uh, the GoPro app, 
and uh, even though it already has an existing pin, I tried entering the old pin into here and it was like it wasn't accepting it, it wasn't syncing up. Because basically I wanted to transfer some of those files onto my tablet because my uh, SD card was filling up. So I wanted to move a couple stuff over there for the time being. But uh, just simply taking out the SD card, plugging it in the tablet, for some reason it wasn't working. So I decided to install the GoPro app and uh, just do it that way. So um, long story short, um, entered in a new pin for my GoPro and uh, it synced up. But when I went to go move the video files, uh, the video files were not there. So I was like, the fuck? <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> Yeah, kind of pissed about that actually because I hyped it all up and was really excited about it and stuff. And uh, yeah, they're gone for now at least. Um, I'm looking into a bunch of like different uh, file recovery software and things like that. So hopefully I can get them back. Hopefully I can get them back. Fingers crossed. Um, but there's no guarantees. I don't know how, uh, how effective it's going to be or whatever the case may be. So, yeah, you know, hoping for the best, but expecting the worst. Worst being, you know, I can't get it back at all, period. So, it is what it is. So, anyway, um, I also recorded some stuff here in, in Guam. Uh, just a couple of videos at the beach and a main video uh, going downtown because my downtown Guam video did very well, actually. It got over 7,000 hits at at least I, that was the last time I checked. So um, I decided to give you guys a more uh, updated version with the GoPro. So, you know, hopefully you guys get a nice, better looking version of that video very soon. As soon as I get back home, I'll start editing and putting stuff together and scheduling and all that fun stuff. But uh, the main thing I want to talk to you guys about that I've been just planning and doing little notes for and just, you know, getting all giddy about is my upcoming Let's Play channel slash series of videos. I also want to make its own separate channel just because, you know, if it, if it gets really popular, then I have a separate channel for it. And if it doesn't, well, whatever. So anyway, um, I've been doing a lot of uh, just brainstorming different ideas, uh, different games I want to do, the name of the series, different things I want to do, just all kinds of, of ideas for this series are just kind of popping into my head. So, you know, I'm just writing them down on, on my phone, just like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. So I'm getting really pumped for it, and I can't wait to uh, start recording. So I came up with a name for my series. I can't tell you guys yet, because I still have to uh, reserve the account and stuff like that. So none of you guys take it, or somebody else, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> so it's, really, it's a really cool name. And I was having problems trying to find a good name for a while, just because, you know, it's, <laughs> YouTube's been around for uh, over a decade. So a lot of people have made accounts since then. Go figure. So, um, yeah, I also got a whole bunch of new uh, recording equipment off of Amazon because Amazon is crack. Just saying. Anyway, sorry about the crying baby in the background. You guys can probably hear that. Um, yeah, I got a whole bunch of new uh, recording equipment. I got a new microphone. Uh, I got this, like, sound uh, isolation uh, panel thing. It's, it's like that those panels you see in studios. It's, like, sound absorbing whatever you want to call it, noise isolation, whatever. It's like a little portable panel you just fold up, put in front of the microphone so that way your voice is clean, I guess. So anyway, <laughs> I got that. So uh, hopefully there won't be too much bleed through with the noise. And uh, I really can't wait to start doing uh, some demo videos because the mic I got is the, uh, the Zoom H2N. And I know I could get like the blue late blue Yeti or something like that. And I might get that in the future, but for now, I like the uh, the ability of the Zoom H2N just because it's its own standalone recorder. It's not just a microphone they have to plug in and do all that kind of stuff. It's just you set it, you press the button, boom, records. You know, so um, and also I just want to play around with a lot of the different features of it. 
things. So, you know, just I'm really excited. So, yeah. And of course, you know, the video games and stuff. Um, the, the, how I want to start off my uh, Let's Play channel is just doing a lot of the, uh, the, the older games first, because those are the games that I, uh, that I grew up with. So, I wanted to uh, start off with those just to get myself into to the, uh, the rhythm of it and stuff so you know I don't want to start doing steam games or any of that other newer stuff until maybe later I don't know we'll see <laughs> we'll see where it goes uh, but I want to primarily stick with retro games at least for the time being so um, yeah just finding all kinds of different games that I want to do because there's a lot of games that are very long and I'm like I want a nice quick game just to start off with and then you know we can have like a longer playing game later but you know I just want to do a couple quickies just to get myself into the rhythm of it and then we can do you know like the longer games you know like RPGs and things like that so there's that and uh, yeah I'm just really excited about it so can't wait to show you guys and uh, get going with the series but yeah that's pretty much it for now I'm gonna continue to relax and uh, I'll be back back in Japan very soon doing uh, videos and uh, doing the Hanami party thing which is going to be coming up very soon uh, next week I believe so that mark your calendars <laughs> um, but yeah so I wanted to talk about this uh, this video so yeah this is the Andy song sign up for now thanking you guys boop, for uh, tuning into this video and my other stuff also want to thank you guys for liking the thumbs comment subscribing Send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, coming at you boop, with a video response to the Mime channel. Uh, Mime recently did a video where she uh, watches uh, some of her very first uh, videos, and this is kind of a, uh, a popular thing that's going around YouTube because I saw her do it, I saw PewDiePie do it, and uh, a couple others, but those are the main ones that pop into my head at the moment. So I don't have a super uh, fancy setup. I don't have like video capture or any of that other stuff. So we're kind of doing this a little old school since this is essentially an old school video so um i got my gopro aimed up here and i'm just gonna have the uh the videos on full screen and i will put links to those videos down in the uh the boopy boop down below so you guys can check them out as well uh, be forewarned they're pretty bad <laughs> but you know it's it's good to see where you came from and you know how far you've gotten and keep in mind these videos are about seven to eight years old so they're almost a decade old so just keep that in mind so the first one we're gonna watch is Andy San's piano medley take one this is actually the very first video that I ever did and uh, just a little background to this before we start the video I'll just put up on full screen I'm not gonna play it just yet but uh, like I said a little background on this video um, this was back when I was still at Urbana University in Urbana, Ohio, still going to college, and in the in one of the rec rooms, I believe it was Hazard Center, if uh, memory serves. It was almost 10 years ago, so. Anyway, in one of the rec rooms, there, there was a, an electronic piano, and every once in a while, I'd go in there and just kind of plunk around just in my own free time, and uh, my best friend, uh, Talk Madalkin, also known as Ariopolis, happened to have his, uh, his little camera with him, and I told him, you know, I want to record something, put it up on YouTube. You know, what's YouTube? Well, it was this newfangled thing at the time, and I just wanted to record a video just to put something up, you know. So uh, we did this, and uh, <laughs> here we go. Andy San's Piano Medley, take one. Also, I was really drunk off of uh, some alcoholic energy drinks back when they sold those called Sparks. So let's watch. Four. Go. That's actually not too bad. I mean, a lot of people in the comments are like, oh my god, your playing technique is so horrible, and probably is. I'm, I'm not a professional piano pianist here, guys. I'm just some drunk college dude just plunking around on some keyboards doing some stuff that I learned, and holy shit, my hair is like really long. Like, I got really long sideburns and shit going. 
I kind of wish I could grow those out again, but anywho, um, yeah, I mean, it's not too bad, all things considered. You know, the sound quality is pretty good considering it's like eight years old. And then I go to this Castlevania-esque theme type thing. Ten seconds, oh my god. That, that's Eric talking. Da, da, da. And that's the video. I'll just cancel that before it starts auto-playing something else. So, overall, not too bad. Uh, let's see, this was released February 2nd, 2007. Holy shit, that was a long-ass time ago. Uh, let's look at some of the comments. You're not playing with proper technique. Your other fingers should never get past your thumb. Man, your hand covered the part I didn't know how to play. Good job anyways. You don't seem comfortable. Dude, you are the nerdiest human who has ever lived. Yeah. <laughs> Not much has changed in, se in like seven, eight years. So anyway, moving on. So uh, next video is called Test Vlog. Now, just a little background to this before we uh, look at this monstrosity is um, I was living over at uh, the house I grew up in and uh, my cousin owned it at the time and I was living with him because I got kicked out of uh, my mom and stepdad's place. So I was living with them and I kind of wanted to get in the whole YouTube thing because I just got kicked out of college and I you know, just kind of wanted to start the whole vlogging thing. But my setup was really terrible at the time. So keep in mind this was done on basically a $20 webcam from Walmart back in 2007. So I had that setup going, and the thing is the webcam didn't have built-in, it didn't have a built-in mic. So I had to substitute by using an old karaoke mic, and holy shit, this video is so bad. And I'm just talking about random stuff, and I have no, like, <laughs> I have no charisma in this video, so uh, we're gonna watch this monstrosity in its entirety. God help us. <sighs> Let's begin. Okay, uh, hey guys, it's the Andy here. <laughs> check, check, one, two, three, it's the Andy Son here. Check, it, check. Yeah. Which is, uh, good news. For me. And, oh, Jesus. Sort of. Wow, this is just, like, heavy breathing on the mic, like, <sighs> I'm so uncomfortable right now. This is my first vlog. <laughs> but anyway. And, uh... Well, yeah, since it doesn't have its own just, microphone, I'm just using this one right here. Yeah, that, that's what I just explained, this just microphone. and basic karaoke mic that I got from a Walmart. I like 10 bucks. It's not bad. Get all my stuff from the Walmart. You no, know, it's probably using Ohio represent. audio than standard, like, webcam mic. Or oh, holy uh, shit, that's so untrue. It all works out, I guess. <clears throat> I guess. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, it was really uh, brutal today. Oh man, that worked though. I worked at this uh, new restaurant. It's uh, oh, uh, <laughs> so a little backstory here. Um, oh Jesus, I just breathed it on the mic really bad. But anyway, a little backstory. I was working at uh, my best friend, Talking with Alkin. His uh, mom at the time opened up a restaurant, and so uh, I was uh, working for them at the time. And it was really busy when it first started. So I was basically like the guy in the back doing dishes and stuff so um it was a good time it's just my own imagination a lot of fun things the fuck was i doing with that i don't know uh, excuse me again i got a scratchy throat you got a scratchy uh, something i don't know what yeah i've just been working all week and uh holding down i've been up uh, i'm okay, sorry uh i God. been up uh, going on uh, long bike rides too because uh, where I live at there's a uh, you know I trail. think if I would have put like a, a wind like sock or something or if I wouldn't have like practically like deep throated the mic 
I think the audio quality and, uh, for its time uh, wouldn't have been so bad. The bike trail from where I live. You know, consi trail. considering it was made in like 2007, so. Uh, the next town's Walmart. Oh, uh, Jesus. Which is another five miles. So I'm explaining uh, and, my various bike riding journeys so and stuff like that. Trips about so. 20 some odd miles. Yeah, just me biking and losing weight. Stiff. Not like morbidly obese or anything. Just a couple pounds. Anyway. Yeah, just a couple pounds. Just a couple. I guess. Maybe. I don't know. But I keep on weighing myself every day. And Holy shit. Is this video almost over? Losing much weight. I think I'm going to kill myself. This is like really, really bad. Ooh, what the, that's what my oh my god. Is, like, I actually look a lot better than when I first started. I, I, I bet I do. But hey. I'm so sexy yeah, right on, now. On until it starts snowing. <laughs> it snows a lot in uh, really, really cold and big. in Ohio, by the way. Oh God! Why am I making? Uh. uh anyway, in my spare time, besides biking and working, I also and make YouTube videos video for God knows how many hours. I also play guitar. Oh yeah. Uh, well, it's all right. it's I totally forgot it. I did that. <laughs> I should probably get on that little side note. Um, oh, okay. Here it is. Yeah, it's oh, over. Jesus. There. Okay, so. Yeah. There -ish. If I remember right, I did this with the uh, yeah, the YouTube sorry, capture feature. It doesn't have much of a view. It's just kind of like a little, little boxed in view. So I like uh, I think I'm. A, I think yeah. I don't know where my hands are. They're just kind of. They're just kind of all over the place right now. I mean, holy shit. Over here, off screen, tipping you off. Yeah, um, probably. Anyway, I think I'm recording uh, this on like YouTube Capture or something. Like this vlog is becoming really retarded. I guess because <laughs> understatement of the year. Yeah, because I don't really. Uh, I don't really I with much words and the talking and the so, English. Yeah, I'm uh, yeah, I'm just probably gonna yeah, kill I'll this keep, and you know keep just the lol, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> lots of lols to be had yeah. with this guy. Okay, so we'll just stop that there. Oh boy, that was that was uh, that was pretty brutal. So that was with my really crappy webcam setup. So let's see uh, something with uh, with an actual camera setup. So next up is going to be my very first like vlog vlog, not a test vlog or you know an audio vlog or whatever. I tried to come up with the term slog, which is sound log, which slog turns out to be something else British because I don't know. Anywho, so um, this is my very first like vlog vlog. So it's called Where I'm At. And uh, I basically just talk about myself, give a little intro to myself at the time. This was back in September 2nd, 2008. So like almost eight years ago, holy shit. Um, at the time of this recording anyway. So I'm just basically explaining my, you know, explaining who I am, where I'm at, hence the name of the vlog. So uh, this was done on my old uh, Sanyo Zacti CG6, which was the very first camera that I owned, my very first like little video camera that I owned, because I got it because um, I was really inspired by a lot of the, uh, the very first uh, Japan vloggers or J vloggers, as they're also called. And so I was, you know, I was in the market for getting a cam, getting an actual camera rather than a, the shitty ass webcam that I had, which ended up dying anyway. Go figure. So I looked to uh, see what Tokyo Kuni was doing at the time, and he had uh, a Sanyo Zacti, but he was using a more more expensive one at the time so I was like well let's see if they have like a lower end one just something that's within my budget so I found a Sanyo Zacti CG6 on eBay for a little over a hundred and uh, it was very used the tripod mount was stripped and that was interesting trying to do videos with the tripod mount stripped I'd, I'd come up with all kinds of creative ways like putting it in cups and things like that so with that said Let's begin the video. Guess what, kids? Jamie Sun's got his own camera now. The thinly veiled Tokyo Kuni reference. Vlog. Oh, yeah. Good times. Good times indeed. 
So basically, with with this uh, with this video, this was actually done at uh, my old house out in Salina. Now I have, and uh, my parents don't live there anymore. But it's it's kind of nice to see uh, my my old house in the background be between my big giant fucking head. But I mean, it's it's just really great for the money. I mean, so great for the money. Step away from the camera. Holy fuck balls. I know that fish eyes weren't really a thing back then, but holy fuck. So I think you can see someone crawling in my nose. I always found it tedious to kind of, you know, go like Oh Jesus. Oh my god, why? just kind of see you know what's going on. Anyway, so, so I, to I, I do miss my uh, transition for glasses. Bucks. Normal retail a little bit. sells for about 200 and at Walmart they had it a clearance to like 133 So even with shipping and all that shit, which collectively added up to 120 I think it was 22 or 27 I'm Yeah, 122 dollars. You know, I saved like... Great for the money. So, I mean, bitchin'. Bitchin'. But uh, the big uh, drawback with this camera is that the uh, tripod mount is stripped. And we got about eight minutes left of this video. Right <laughs> now keep in mind, this was back when um, 10 minutes was the limit for YouTube, so I try to cut it a little bit before. So I start wrapping it up at around like 9.30. It's like, oh shit, 9.30, I gotta stop. And five, tw 512 megabytes, not gigabytes, megabytes. Which isn't so Keep that in mind. That's, you know, perfect size for vlogging. But uh, if I wanted to do something more, like maybe capture some footage and Get then the fuck out of here. On, edit it. Edit it. Kind of like did it. compile everything. Did it. Then we'd have a bit of a problem. Yeah, because 512 megabytes is only enough for like three minutes of HD video. To uh, purchase a uh, bigger memory card, obviously. This thing is SDHC compatible. So I SDHC, like holy shit. Maybe in like 16 gig. Uh, maybe? Oh man, 16 gig. So holy shit. I'm pretty confident about this camera and uh, the future that you know it will bring me because when I bought this camera, my uh, parents were obviously a little pissed because r right now I'm saving up for a car. Yeah, they, they were kind of mad about it, and but it was July. You know, I my blog be I just you know getting this camera is actually like the most just do it kind of thing. Anyway. The truck broke down. So, and I've been yeah. looking for a new vehicle ever since. This is also during my little existential oh, hippy dippy self improvement kind of saved up for right now. Uh, stint. And my parents are a little pissed because it's the beginning of September and I only have 250 bucks saved up. Now, granted, wow. I get paid this uh, coming Thursday, but still, they're really quite pissed that, you know, I'm splurging all my money, you know, buying cameras and shit. But they don't realize the potential that a camera can bring me. I mean, look, uh, you know, Tay Zonday is freaking Chocolate Rain, dude. Oh, man, Chocolate Rain. You guys remember that? Camera, a sheet, microphone, and piano. Yeah. And he recorded Chocolate Rain, which got you know, millions of views on YouTube. And got him, you know, gigs on, like, the Jimmy Kimmel show. I forgot and, Jimmy you know, Kimmel's been around like for that long. Wow. Now, I don't plan on recording, you know, anything like Chocolate Rain or anything like that. But I do plan on selling some of my items on eBay. Items. Oh, yeah. Just That's right. I forgot about that. So, faster than just um, work. I, I tried, I, I originally got the camera so I could uh, take pictures of stuff so I could sell them on eBay because I had a bunch of just crap I wanted to get rid of. And, and I just wanted to sell them for extra cash, so that was what I told my parents. It's like, hey, I got the camera so I can sell stuff. And then I just use it for vlogging just because. But it's just, it's the same thing day in, day out. You get. Oh, yeah, Walmart you know, sucks, by the way, to work at. The same things, talking about the same stuff. Especially working in a small town. Now, bigger town, probably not so much, just because you get a bigger amount of customers. But little small, small town, Podunk, Ohio. Applied at Boeing. Green State University. Oh, yeah. I plan on majoring in uh, Asian studies yeah. with an emphasis on Japanese. Now, this majoring in Asian studies that will program, even though it's that'll give me places, day, maybe like you know, for Japan. Program. But it's done within three years, which will save me a shit ton in the long run. Yeah. Now, I also plan on a dual minoring in a management information systems yeah. and creative writing. 
I went into a dual minor in a man. I was so like uh, writing because driven back then, but it's so like I can. Use I was driven, for but for a lot of the wrong reasons. And, uh, actually, do something with them because I don't know. I just, I just you know majored in Asian studies and that was it. Then all my old credits from IT Tech would just you know, go to waste. And besides, I have, I think, around 26 or 27 credit hours. I don't even know if those are any good so anymore. I mean, it's been almost 10 okay. years. They're actually, kind of sitting around take it back, it's been over 10 years you know, actually use them. since I've done yeah. that. So I don't know if those credits are still besides, good or not. Enough, so. you know, or we'll see when I get out and go back to college. So anyway, I may have to take like a class or two, but that's about it. Now, for creative writing, it's, it's a little bit more obvious why I'm picking that. It's yeah. because I, I want to uh, now keep in mind this expand is, yeah, I said and expand. Uh, have my blog grow. This is back when I, feel right now, uh, I was primarily a, a blogger versus no, a vlogger. To be. So I would do mostly, um, not quite you know, personal life stuff on my blog. So it was kind of like a diary of, old, of sorts. You know, my old posts and, uh, and uh, some of the writing. Pretty much after this video, that's when I started university. switching over mostly to video. Like, it was a slow process, but I eventually got there. So much better. Oh yeah, I've time done check. a lot of great things on six and a half. I mean, I about three so, minutes you know, or so left. Try to go back, even though yes, I owe Urbana University a ton of money. Yeah, which I'm but, paying off pretty well you know, right now. So did that, you know, I fly somewhere else and see what happens. I mean, worst case scenario, I'm just out forty bucks for the uh, application fee, yeah. and that's about it. So, I, I totally know, forgot that this uh, was let's go for it. this was during my uh, my dark period. They got my so from and, uh, when I got kicked out of college so in uh, nice May of 2007 they, uh, to uh, so June of 2010 when I joined the Navy it, was a really dark time for me. Borderline. I think and uh, minimum requirement GPA I is I didn't know what I was doing at all. But mine was like 2.3. Or like 2.0 or something like that. So oh, it was close, nice. but not quite up to their standards. Wow. So I was given the chance to appeal it. I obviously did. I sent in the appeal letter about a week or so ago, and uh, I haven't heard back from them yet. I wonder why. I called them, not today, but uh, the other day. Oh, jeez. And they said that normally, since I applied for the spring semester, this which is, is the this beginning is of, of a January, almost a July. <laughs> You know, it takes a little bit longer to process everything, which, I mean, I can understand, but also, in the same sense, I want to know if I'm going to college or not. So, I mean, I want to, uh, I don't want to go out and buy a bunch of things and then have them come back saying, buy a bunch of things like cameras and stuff, you know? I don't want to go out and do that. I bought a whole bunch of stuff for my dorm, and I can't use it. I can use it, it's so just not really going to be that sure practical. As soon as possible, and whether or not I'm accepted at Bowling Green, and if I am, then, you know, I won't immediately go out and buy things, but just kind of like one at a time, because I still have a lot of old things from Urbana that I can still use, like my uh, sheets and things like that, which, honestly, when I went to Urbana, that was the most expensive thing to buy. So Just because they were, uh, I think they were the extra long sheets, so those were harder to find than just your standard sheets. From, uh, my, one of my old roommates, he, uh, my first roommate at Urbana left, I think only like not even a month into it. Oh yeah. And uh, he Evan. left a lot of stuff, like some of his posters and uh, trash liners, which, you know, yeah, thank that God. That was Evan. He, uh, no he got in with a uh, some kind so of soccer I mean, major, say, or the uh, soccer scholarship, I should say. Were you someone I was in college, and uh, I mean, he was only there for like a month. And and he was really cool, really chill. You know, he used to and then uh, I mean, I was a second uh, like roommate, very Matt. Very he was I don't know, man. He was just so lazy, unmotivated. Too. I didn't really like him that much. I see that and plus, the uh, ten minute limit for YouTube. Oh, so okay. <laughs> Thank God, we're almost done. And. Uh, Let's just uh, sign off real quick. Let's just okay. sign off real quick. Hoping that you guys all have a good day, and I look forward to uh, seeing you all in the future. Bye now. Oh, good lord. 
yeah, this was before my we'll see you next time kind of thing. So that came from uh, one of the guys I watched a lot, uh, Roger Swan. So he would uh, end all his videos with, you know, we'll see you next time. So I, ever since his, uh, his passing in 2010, uh, just as a tribute to him, I would end all my videos with uh, we'll see you next time or some variant of that. So holy crap, dude, that's some crazy stuff. And, you know, some people would uh, get rid of those videos. They think they would be too embarrassing. They are, but, you know, I keep those videos up just to show how far I've come. You know, not only in video quality, where I was at in life, just how I am in front of the camera. I feel I'm a lot more uh, confident now in front of the camera and uh, just stuff like that. So, yeah, you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, how, how do you get into the whole YouTube thing? You know, I'm afraid I'm gonna look like a dork or something like that, or I don't know how to talk to a piece of glass. But, you know, it all comes with time, man. You just gotta, just gotta do it. You just gotta keep going and you'll eventually correct yourself and you'll start to notice that your videos get better and better and they start to sound better and better. And eventually you'll get to, to a point where, you know, your videos are pretty tolerable, at least in that time frame. But who knows, like maybe five years after a video you thought was really good you know ends up sounding like shit or something like that who knows but uh, at that moment it sounds pretty good so uh, moral of the story is you know you just got to keep getting better and better with time and uh, practice and you're not going to start off being super awesome it, like I said, it all comes with time and practice. So this video has gone on super duper fucking long, like 24 some odd minutes for the long uh, raw cut. Anyway, it's probably gonna be a lot less than that once I uh, cut it up. But anyway, so this concludes my uh, video here. And uh, like I said, I'll put uh, links to uh, these old gems in the, uh, the booby boob down below so you guys can watch them in their entirety. Although I don't know why you would, but it's whatever, so. Anyway, thanks for watching. This has been the Andy Song. Sign for now. Thanking you guys, Boop, for tuning in to this video and my other stuff, and even my old stuff. <laughs> also, want to thank you guys for liking, the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you Boop, next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. Coming at you, boop, with my May 2015 update video for, you guessed it, May 2015. Woo. So yeah, I'm trying something a little new with the GoPro, and yes, I am re still recording this on my GoPro. Um, I decided to kind of narrow the aspect a little bit so it looks a little less fisheye-y. And um, just trying out something new. So uh, yeah, if you guys like it, you know, let me know. If you don't, that's cool. <laughs> you can let me know in the comments too. So um, yeah, uh, I was watching one of Jake Knowlton's videos and he said that you know he doesn't really like the GoPro look. It's just, it's too weird looking and stuff like that. So I decided to try something a little different, you know, just kind of break out of the usual GoPro fisheye sort of thing. And plus it doesn't really work too well indoors anyway. So, you know, it is what it is. But anyway, uh, getting to the monthly updatey update stuff. So as always with my monthly update videos, I'm gonna be covering youtube -y stuff as well as personal life stuff. And man, <laughs> do I got a lot to talk about with my personal life. But first, YouTube. So um, right now I'm rendering the 100th episode of Annie Japandi, my series about my life here in Japan. And it's a little bit different from what I think you guys are expecting. And uh, I think you guys are gonna like it. Um, really uh, put a good amount of effort into it and just, you know, a lot of uh, thought and stuff went into it, even though I kind of ramble and um and ah a lot, but it was, it's a good uh, insight to, you know, what makes me me and stuff like that. So stay tuned for that. Uh, next little bit is my trip to Harajuku. Now, I normally don't go around Harajuku that much. It's usually extremely crowded. And it's not really my scene, you know, it's mostly for like girl shopping and stuff like that. So I don't normally go in that area. But uh, I decided to 
take you guys on a little tour down to Keshta Street, which is the uh, really popular area in Harajuku with a lot of shops and stuff like that. And I decided to strap this GoPro to my head and walk around. So uh, that video is going to be coming out very soon, and I hope you guys uh, tune in, and I hope you enjoy it. So yeah. Uh, but the main thing I want to talk to you guys about as far as uh, youtube -y stuff is first impact anime, second impact. So yeah, finally got around to editing those episodes and I know they've been on the hiatus for frickin' ever. But um, yeah, work schedule is what it is. <laughs> so um, as of this recording, I have five episodes already rendered. I think in my previous video I said I had six, but I miscounted, it's actually five. Uh, I'm gonna try to knock out uh, a couple more episodes here in a bit, but uh, we'll see what happens. So anyway, as of this recording, I have five episodes already rendered, ready to go and two of the episodes are already out, so hopefully you guys tuned in and enjoyed them. Um, really excited to finally be getting this project out so that way you guys can see it and enjoy it, hopefully, if it's good. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I expect more episodes to be coming out soon, and that's pretty much all I got for YouTube stuff. So, let me readjust myself here. So we can get into the nitty gritty, the personal life stuff. And like I said, I got a lot to talk about on that front. So, yeah. <laughs> this isn't really easy for me to say. It's, uh, it's a very difficult thing because I know a lot of people are going to have uh, opinions and feelings about it, uh, mostly negative. Well, from the uh, little peanut gallery stuff like that, but um, it's definitely something I want to address, man up to, I guess, so. Um, I found out earlier this week that I'm going to be um, separated from the Navy, gonna be discharged. So, um, basically this discharge came about due to my weight. Um, I failed my third PRT this past cycle, my third one. I thought that my first failure back in 2011 had dropped off, but we did the math and I was like 10 days away. So we did the PRT this cycle in April, but the one in 2011 was done in May. So I missed it by like 10 days. So, um, it is what it is, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, go on a tirade about, you know, negative things about the Navy or my command or anything like that. You know, it's it's my fault. It is what it is, you know, I'm a grass man. I'll admit it, I fucked up. <laughs> so, uh, I'm just paying the price for it. But, um, it's not all somber and gloomy and doomy and stuff. I do have plans for myself you know, post-Navy, as I've been talking to you guys about for like the past couple years now. Um, I plan on going back to college. Now, um, I am gonna be sticking around uh, with the ship until about September-ish, I've calculated. Cause I still have to go to like transition class and I gotta fly out and med do like the, my medical checkout and all this other stuff's gotta happen. So um, I'll be sticking around until September. So that's good. Gonna give me a couple extra paychecks and then, you know, head back to USS Couch in Ohio. Um, but not for long, cause I hope to uh, start college as soon as I can. Now I know most colleges, uh, their fall semester starts in around late August, early September. So I'm hoping to uh, be accepted into a university as soon as possible and um, stuff like that. So I'm gonna start filling out my college applications and all that jazz and uh, see where it goes from there. So uh, hopefully I can get in uh, this year, 2015, if you guys are watching in the future, greetings. <laughs> so hopefully I can get in this year. If not, then uh, I'll try again for uh, next semester. So it'll be winter 2016. So hopefully, I could get in then, you know, time constraints and everything permitting. So uh, the two universities that I'm looking into at the time of this recording is first uh, Western Michigan in lovely Kalamazoo, Michigan. Um, and second is OSU, Ohio State. 
So both schools are really pro-veteran and they have a lot of great programs to help uh, vets get back on their feet and get to college and help cover expenses that the GI Bill may not cover or may only partially cover. So um, really, uh, I'm really excited to be starting a new chapter in my life. And yeah, it's sad to, you know, not only leave Japan, but to leave the Navy, which is, you know, something I've been in for almost five years now. Next month will be my five year anniversary in the Navy. It's hard to believe I've been at this for five years, huh? So, um, yeah, it's gonna be very, very cool to be starting a new chapter in my life. And I remember, I don't know if you guys remember, this was a long, long time ago, so you might have to dig back into the archives <laughs> for this one. But I remember making a video, and it was the video I made right before, the day before I left for boot camp. And I was sitting uh, by, the, uh, by the spillway in my hometown, Salina, Ohio, represent. <laughs> Um, and I was just contemplating about, you know, the, the nervousness, but the excitement of starting over, starting a new life. And I knew that joining the Navy would be the beginning of something new and something great. And I'm happy to say five years later, it has been, and it is, you know. I've seen so much in my five years in. I've been to so many different places, met so many interesting people. And you know, this discharge can't take me away from that. You know, they can't discharge me from my experiences. But um, I'm just really, uh, really grateful for all the opportunities, you know, the Navy has given me. And I'm really excited to be starting a new chapter in my life. Going back to school, getting my learn on, and uh, just moving on from there. You know, maybe getting, you know, a job, internship somewhere, or something. I haven't quite figured out what my post-college life will be, but you know, hey, we have time, so we'll get to that. <laughs> but um, I really hope you guys join me on my uh, my new adventures uh, back in the states. Um, I, yes, I am going to be continuing to make videos. So you don't have to worry about me, you know, getting back to the States and stopping making videos. I've been at this for almost 10 years, guys, so I, th I think I have a pretty good track record. Because I know there's a lot of J-vloggers out there who, when they go back to their home country or go to another country or something like that, they just stop making videos. Not everybody, but a good percentage of people. So, um, I'm not gonna be one of those people. I'm gonna keep on keeping on. I really enjoy doing YouTube. And like I said, I've been at it for almost 10 years now. So I don't see myself stopping anytime soon. But if I do decide to quit, I will definitely be sure to let you guys know. I think it's, you know, the least I can do. But, you know, I have no plans of stopping anytime soon. So. <laughs> you guys don't have to worry about that. But, you know, uh, I just want to thank you guys for, uh, for being so supportive of me and uh, the different uh, things that I do. Because I know this channel can get kind of random at times. You know, it's not just, you know, me being the Navy guy, doing the Navy thing and only talking about the Navy. Or me being the Japan guy, doing the Japan thing in Japan, talking about Japan. You know, I like to, I like to mix it up, you know? I like to, you know, yeah, do the Japan thing, yeah, do the Navy thing, but also, you know, just talk about other random shit. <laughs> you know, I like, I like the freedom of my channel doing that. You know, maybe I talk about something about my life, or maybe there's a video out there that I think is pretty interesting, I, and you know, I kind of add my own opinion or my own take to it, or just whatever, you know? I like the openness and the sometimes randomness of my channel, so. I just want to thank you guys for uh, supporting that. So I think that'll do for uh, for this little update video. Uh, expect more stuff on the horizon, and uh, the way only uh, direction from here on out is forward. And that said, this is the Andy Son. Sad for now. Thinking you guys, boo, for tuning into my videos and watching my other stuff. Also, gotta thank you guys for liking the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party, and hey, as always, we'll see you.
next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you, Book, with a video response to Victor, also known as Give Me a Break Man, Give Me a Flake Man, Give Me a Bone Dog, Give Me a Channel Name, Man, Guy. <laughs> He's got a lot of channels, is what I'm saying. So, I'm making a response to uh, a recent video that he put out talking about why YouTubers leave YouTube. So, just to give you guys a little background on me, I've been on YouTube since 2006. YouTube started in late 2005, so I've been around the block for a while. And plus, I've been making my own videos since 2008, so I kind of see both sides of the coin, you know, from the subscriber point and also from the uh, content creator side of the house as well. So, um, yeah, like I said, I've been on YouTube for friggin' ever, and uh, I've seen a lot of YouTubers come, seen a lot of them go, and uh, it's really sad to see them go because, you know, over time you start to develop a relationship with them, you know, you start leaving comments in their videos, maybe making video responses, you know, sending out retweets and just stuff like that. And then all of a sudden one day they just stop making videos and they just disappear and they're off doing whatever else they're they're doing i don't know maybe living a life or something <laughs> who knows so um it can get very frustrating from the uh, subscriber side of the house because like i said you develop a relationship with them and then all of a sudden they're just up and gone and uh it's very frustrating when that stuff happens but uh, from the content creator side of the house, I can think of a couple reasons why that usually happens. So, um, one of the main reasons that that happens is uh, usually for personal reasons, like maybe something's going on in their personal life or their work life and they just can't seem to fit YouTube into their lives anymore. And if it's something like that, I totally understand. It sucks that it happens, but hey, it is what it is, and I totally understand. And uh, other reasons are, um, well, I can use the JVlog community for this example. It's kind of hard to explain, but if I just use the JVlog community as an example, I can kind of make it a bit better. So, um... Uh, like I said, I've been following the JVlog community for some time now, pretty much since its inception back in like 2006. So, um, yeah, I've seen a lot of JVloggers come, seen a lot of them go. And uh, like I said, it's sad to see them go because what usually happens is people uh, make a YouTube account, you know, they put out a couple videos when they're back in their home country saying, hey, I'm going to Japan, this is really cool, I got my passport, I got this, that, and the other, I'm all packed up, ready to go, and, you know, they got the little shots at the airport, and then flying over to Japan, it's like, oh my god, it's my first day in Japan, this is so cool, all the signs look weird. <laughs> and then, eventually, they start making videos regularly about their lives in Japan, you know, wherever they are, whatever circumstances, you know, they have. And over time, just like with any other YouTuber, you start to build a relationship with them, you know, start seeing their channel grow and seeing them make more videos and you leave them comments and maybe make video responses or shout their channel out or something like that. And then eventually, for whatever reason, they have to go back to their home country or they're moving to another country. And then, you know, they're all sad, it's like, oh, and I'm leaving Japan, sucks. And then they fly back to their home country or to another country or wherever. And maybe they make a couple videos after that, but, you know, pretty much after those, you know, post-Japan videos, they're pretty much done. And then they just stop. <laughs> so that can get pretty disheartening, you know, and some people stop just because they think they have, you know, there's really nothing else interesting for them to say or for them to do because, you know, doing the Japan thing was their thing. And they think, you know, not being Japan or not constantly talking about Japan or whatever is not going to get them the views. And, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe you're right. But, you know, after a while, we don't really tune in because they're going to all these cool places in Japan or doing stuff like that. We tune in for them to see, you know, what's going on in their lives. 
at least you know I do I don't know maybe <laughs> maybe I'm the only one I don't know but um, anyway uh, another reason that uh, some youtubers quit is um, because they get very serious about the quality of their content so much so that they end up just not putting anything out at all or they have really long delays you know in the production of their videos and and what have you because they want to make the absolute best quality video no ums or ahs or hisses in the audio or random kids walking by looking at them recording themselves or whatever they want it you know nice and you know studio quality pristine stuff like that and uh you know, it's cool if you want to do that every once in a while. But, you know, YouTube isn't really meant for stuff like that, I don't think. I mean, sure, there's, you know, the high-quality videos and stuff like that. But I think YouTube, for the most part, is meant for the casual video maker. You know, just somebody in the room like, like I am. It's got a camera, microphone, whatever. Just making videos, you know, talking about their lives or just talking about something, you know? So I think that there has to be a balance between putting out, you know, super quality, highly edited videos and just normal sit downs like this one right here. Um, I remember when I first started doing YouTube videos, I was, you know, very influenced by a lot of the big YouTubers of the time, you know, the the Shea Carls, the Philip DeFrancos, the Charles Trippies, you know, those guys. And uh, they were big proponents of the jump cut, where they would basically take out all the air, all the little spacings in whatever they were talking about. And I was really into that, so um, I, I wasn't really used to talking at the time. And I'm still kind of meh on it, but I would basically like cut out every little piece of silence so my videos would sound super jerky and stuff like that. I would sound very Will William Shatner-esque, if you will. I mean, just look at some of my older videos to get the idea. But eventually I, I stopped doing that. I just kind of gradually weaned myself away from that. Maybe I cut out, you know, extra long pauses or little bits where I'm just kind of meandering on. But for the most part, I try to keep my edits to a minimum just to preserve the natural flow of the, uh, of the dialogue, I guess you could say. So, yeah, it's got some ums and ahs and stuff like that. But, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a more natural flow is uh, what I'm looking for. So, in that regard, it's doing pretty well. So, yeah. Um, I've also noticed that the focus of YouTube changed dramatically when Google purchased it and, you know, the whole AdSense program kind of got filtered into YouTube. And so people were like, there's gold in them bar hills. And they realized they could start making money off of YouTube which you know was great for some content creators because then they could actually make a living off of doing what they already did and then there was other people who just saw the dollar signs and was like yeah i'll make youtube videos and get a bajillion dollars and never have to work at walmart or mcdonald's again yeah. <laughs> and i was i was one of those people back in the day and uh realized pretty quick that uh you know just because you make videos on youtube doesn't mean you're gonna get a lot of money from it or money at all so um yeah <laughs> let that be a lesson to up and coming youtubers don't just do it for the money think of the money as an additional perk so yeah <laughs> um but yeah i noticed that uh the quality the quality of the content went up because they started trying to compete with you know the mainstream YouTube channels and stuff like that which was good but I think the community also got super saturated because you know if everybody has a voice then nobody does because it's just a big cacophonous roar of stuff you know so 
Yeah. <laughs> I think I've meandered long enough on the, on the subject, and I uh, hope you guys found this informative and educational, or at least enjoyed me rambling nonsensically <laughs> to the camera here. So yeah, that's all I wanted to say in this video. So yeah, this is the Andy song. Time for now. Thanking you guys, boop, tuning into this video and my other stuff. Also, want to thank you guys for liking the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, now we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, coming at you, boop, with the small YouTuber tag. And I originally found out about the small YouTuber tag through uh, Jake Young. And uh, links of channels and stuff will be down below in the boopy boop for your viewing pleasure. <laughs> so, um, there's a listing of eight quote unquote questions that I'm gonna answer. I used the air quotes uh, for reasons that will be explained later. But uh, anyway, let's begin. Question one What inspired you to start making videos? And the long and short of it really is the original wave of J vloggers. Now, J vloggers, for those of you who don't know, is short for Japan vloggers. So, when I talk about the original wave, I'm talking about guys like Kevin Cooney, also known as Tokyo Cooney, and the late great Roger Swan, also known as Tokyo Swan, and later Iwate Swan. So, I just, I, I really loved their approach to making videos, whether it was the Anthony Bourdain no reservation style, like what Kevin Cooney had as Tokyo Cooney, or the more personal vlogging style of Roger Swan. Swan as he was on the internet as Tokyo Swan and later Iwate Swan. Question two. How long have you been on YouTube and have you had other channels? Nine years at the time of this recording. I'll be celebrating my first decade on YouTube in on March 1st, 2016. So if you're watching this in the future, greetings. <laughs> and uh, I do have a couple other channels, but most of them I don't really use all that often. So I have my second channel, which is youtube.com slash And it was originally supposed to be my backup channel in case something happened to my main channel so I just had it as a secondary channel just in case and it later become became like my uh channel that I'll upload concerts to so I could avoid the uh, copyright flags on my main channel. So it kind of became the opposite of what it was originally intended for. Eh, life's funny. And uh, my other channel includes my collab channel with my best friend Eric, also known as the Talking Vidalkin. Uh, it's youtube.com slash floppamation. And links to stuff boop and boop down below. Uh, it's basically a collab channel, like I said, where we riff over various uh, anime series, among other things. And my latest channel, which uh, I'll be starting up very soon, is my Let's Play channel known as Andy Cade. And uh, I really can't wait to get this guy off the ground, so stay tuned for more. Question three. <laughs> Where do you see yourself and your YouTube channel in five years? Honestly, this is a hard one. Because I'm constantly looking for new ways to improve my video making skills. Whether it's with new equipment like my GoPro, which I'm using to record, or my Zoom H2N, which I'm also using to record right now, or with uh, tweaking the audio, like compressing it, changing the EQ, stuff like that, so my videos sound good. I'm always in search of new and improved ways to do things. Of course, there has to be a balance between the time it takes to make a video and the overall quality of it. Because if I focus too much on trying to make the quote unquote perfect video, I lose out on a lot of the spontaneity of just making regular off the cuff videos. But if I just hit record too often, the results might be a little too amateurish. So it's all about finding balance, folks. Question Afoa What message are you trying to get across with your videos? Now, it does sound a bit highfalutin, but I want to inspire others to pursue their goals and their dreams. I've dreamed for years about coming out to Japan, and for the longest time, it seemed like just that, a dream. I was a broke college dropout with no real positive prospect on life. Then, in June 2010, with much trepidation, I decided to join the United States Navy. I didn't think I was really cut out for the military, but I didn't have much else going for me at the time, so I decided to give it a shot. Five years after joining, I've been all around the world and I've seen so many fa fantastic places. I've also fulfilled my dream of coming to Japan, and I've lived here, in my lovely apartment here in Yokosuka, uh, for about two years now. 
Now, I'm getting out of the Navy around August, September-ish, 2015. I don't have an exact date yet, so. Uh, but I plan on going back to college for the first time in almost 10 years. I'm really grateful for all that the Navy has given to me, and I look forward to starting a new chapter in my life and going back to college. Question five. Do people from school slash my ship find my channel? Now, keep in mind, I'm kind of old. <laughs> I'll be turning 30 this year. So, YouTube didn't exist back when I was in high school, which is, you know, circa 2000, 2004. And it was just starting up when I was in college the last time, so around 2004, 2007-ish. So no one really knew me from YouTube during that time because, well, nobody really knew about YouTube in general at the time. People from the ships I was stationed on, uh, the USS Curtis and USS Lassen, found out about my YouTube channel pretty quick, though as indicative of small boys. <laughs> Most people didn't get it and thought I was either boring or stupid, so they only stuck around to laugh at the fact I was on YouTube and pretty much just left it at that. Some frequently watch my videos and they give me lots of encouragement if they see me in the P-Ways or passageway for you civilian types. And I'm really thankful for them. Sometimes they keep me in check if I screw up or put something stupid out, so yeah. <laughs> Question six. Apparently this question doesn't exist. Remember what I said earlier about, you know, eight questions? Yeah, that's the reason for that. So, um, anyway, moving on. <laughs> question seven. What does your YouTube username mean? So, I got the name Andy-san from my friend Jake, who knew that I loved Japan and all that Japanesey stuff. So he would talk like an old, poorly dubbed kung fu master from the martial art movies of the 70s and would say random things like, Andy-san of the Natsu Eastern Wii. And that's where my online name came from. Of course, like most people out there, from time to time I'd Google myself and I found that my name, Andy-san, came up next to the porn star Andy Sandemus. So to differentiate between me and her, I renamed my online persona, persona as The Andy-san. Of course, Miss Sandemus still pops up on occasion in the search results, so what you gonna do? <laughs> and the last question, question eight. Who is your favorite small YouTuber? Now, uh, since this tag doesn't have a clear definition of what a small YouTuber is, small is just, you know, relative, I suppose, I decided to narrow it down to YouTubers with less than 10,000 subscribers. So, some of my favorite small, quote unquote, YouTubers are Molly from the Warmth Strat channel, Sandra from the Sandra no Sekai channel, Kevin from Jayland Kev, his main channel, Busan Kevin, has over 10,000 10, subscribers, though, uh, John from Little Red Guitars 2, Jake from from JMiz91 and Sam from Tikio Sam 2 and Tikio Plays. Although his main channel Tikio Sam has over 10,000 subscribers. And that's just to name a few. So if you're a small time YouTuber, AKA someone with less than 10,000 subscribers, uh, feel free to make a, a small YouTuber tag video. Or, you know, if you've already made one, be sure to put it in the boop de boop in the comments down below so we can watch it and, you know, like it, thumb it up, subscribe, and things like that, you know, as YouTubers do. <laughs> so anyway, that's my small YouTuber tag. So yeah, this is the Andy song. That's that for now. Thinking you guys, poop tuning in to this video and for watching my other stuff. Also gotta thank you guys for liking, the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later guys, bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you, Pook, with a video response of sorts to Charlie of the Charlie no Saikatsu channel. Or Saikatsu, I don't know. I'm not good at pronouncing stuff, so sorry if I butchered your name there, Charlie. My bad. But anyway, um, Charlie made a video recently talking about uh, one of the things that really annoys him being an American living out here in Japan. You know, being called Mr. Foreigner and stuff like that. So uh, I just thought I'd throw my own two cents into uh, the topic and just discuss one of the things that annoys me about living out here in Japan. Now keep in mind, I don't hate Japan. I don't hate the Japanese people. You know, I really love it out here. But, you know, <laughs> there are some things that do annoy me, especially, you know, living out here as a foreigner. So, um, I think the main thing that really annoys me 
is when Japanese people, you know, try to speak English to me. Now, let me put some context behind this because, you know, I think it's great that they're, you know, trying to speak English and stuff like that, but um, I kind of understand why they do it. It's just, it's just kind of annoying because, you know, for me, you know, I don't feel like a foreigner, you know, to me, hearing the word foreigner is like hearing about, you know, the foreign exchange student, you know, that weird kid from, you know, India or some other weird country with a lot of syllables that nobody's really heard about before, you know, it's, that's what I think of when I hear the word foreigner. I think of like Balky from uh, Perfect Strangers. Don't be ridiculous, Andy. Don't be ridiculous, cousin. <laughs> Watch the show, it's great stuff. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I see myself less as a foreigner here and more just as a guest, you know? And as a guest, I feel, you know, I should be polite and, you know, try not to, you know, shake things up, you know, just kind of, you know, when in Rome, do as the Romans do, or in my case, when in Japan, do as the Japanese do. That's just my philosophy with things. So my Japanese isn't really that good, but I really try my best. And I try to use phrases that I know, you know, a lot of, you know, frequently used phrases, you know, where is this place? You know, or just pointing out to far away things, close things, you know, hey, what's this? You know, Kore wa nandeska? Stuff like that. <laughs> you know, just very basic phrases. And, it, you know, when I use those phrases and asking Japanese people stuff, sometimes, you know, they get a little flustered, like, oh god, this foreigner's speaking me, uh. And then they try to remember, like, the four or five English phrases that they learned from English school or English class or whatever. And they're like, I sorry, no, no English. And I'm like, ah, but Nihongo no shabute desho. You know, I'm speaking Japanese, aren't I? Uh, so it's kind of frustrating when I'm, I'm trying to be, you know, the polite guest and, you know, they're trying to be almost over accommodating. But, you know, it's, you know, they're Japanese, they're super polite, they're trying to accommodate me as much as I'm trying to accommodate them. And I guess we kind of clash in that way. So. Uh, I, I was thinking of some of the reasons why Japanese would just, you know, all of a sudden not understand Japanese when talking to a foreigner and just switch to English mode. And one of the reasons is, you know, they might want to practice their English because Western foreigners, we're not talking like Koreans or Chinese or anything like that, that are kind of a rarity out here in Japan, relatively speaking. You know, compared to the rest of the population, we're pretty low in the totem pole and, you know, depending on where, where you go, we might be seen as like exotic unicorns or just like weird, some weird mythical beast that you don't really see all that often. Oh, look at that white foreigner with his blue eyes and his weird hair and stuff, you know, he's so majestic. The majestic foreigner. <laughs> or something like that. I know I'm kind of exaggerating a bit, just a bit. but um, you know what I'm saying. So basically we're kind of seen as a rarity for the most part, unless you go to like very foreign, foreigner centric places like, you know, certain parts of Tokyo, you know, Shibuya, uh, stuff like that, uh, Roppongi, or even out here in Yokosuka where it's a military town and you know, you got a lot of American military members running around doing their thing. So, you know, I don't really get the whole, you know, exotic foreigners th uh, thing out here just because there's so many of us. It just kind of seems like, eh, you know, it's, to me, it's like, oh, there's a lot of Japanese people around here. <laughs> More than anything, I guess, is just, it's kind of a melting pot of sorts in, in Yokosuka. So like I said, I don't really get the exotic foreigner vibe too much. I mostly get that when I go further out, you know. Not so much Tokyo, because again, foreigners out there, but you know, just further out, you know, maybe like Shizuoka or something like that. But just as an example. Um, so another reason they may want to, you know, turn off the Japanese and turn on the English when speaking to a foreigner is, you know, because they want to practice their English because, you know, they don't really have, aside from English school, you know, there's not a lot of opportunities for, you know, Japanese people to practice their English and, you know, what better 
what better uh, way to practice your English than in real life, you know, when you can talk to a real life foreigner right in front of your face and you don't have to pay him. <laughs> so now, keep in mind, I'm not an English teacher, so I'm sure English teachers have their own feelings on the subject, you know, they don't want to give out free lessons or do stuff like that, but you know, I'm not an English teacher, I'm not in the field, at least not at the time of this recording, maybe later, but right now I'm not, so I don't have any hang-ups about just talking to Japanese people in English just because, you know, <laughs> I don't really have a, I don't really mind, but um, if I'm trying to get someplace, you know, like if, like if I hop in a taxi or something like that and they try, you know, talking to me only in English, you know, depending on how well their English is, some 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 taxi drivers' English is pretty good, and I just kind of turn off the Japanese and turn on the English, and just kind of explain where I want to go. But other times, it's like I talk to them in Japanese, and it's like talking to another American in Japanese. For like, I don't understand those weird noises coming out of your mouth. What are you saying? Is that is that English? I don't I don't know. So I just end up looking at you funny. Now I know my Japanese isn't the best, but y you know you'd think that after a while they would kind of understand what I'm trying to say, or they might repeat something. You know, if yeah, I wasn't clear about something, then I m might catch on. Oh shit! I goofed up the pronunciation of that. Okay, I'll try it again. And you know they usually get it. That's just one of the things that kind of bothers me about living in Japan. Uh, at least for me, you know, maybe it doesn't bother anybody else, I don't know, but, uh, yeah, so keep in mind, still love Japan, love the Japanese, all that japanese stuff, love that shit, but, you know, once you come out here and live here for a while, you kinda, you know, get out of the honeymoon phase, and, you know, you start noticing these little, uh, eccentricities, these, uh, Japanisms, as I call them, and, you know, some are cool, some are kind of weird, and others are just kind of annoying. So, you know, you just roll with the punches, I guess. So, I think I've rambled on long enough for this video. So, with that said, this is the Andy Son. It's out for now. Thanking you guys boop, for tuning in to this rambly video response and for watching my other stuff. Also, I thank you guys for liking the thumbs, commenting, subscribing. Send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you boop, next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, coming at you boop, with a little ziggity vlog outside. <laughs> so, yeah, I decided to just take a walk and uh, talk to you guys about some things, give you guys an update on me, and uh, just kind of ramble on about YouTube gripes things like that. So, um, before I begin though, I do have to mention that I'm trying a new setup with my GoPro. I have a new little uh, clip-on mic here, the Audio-Technica AT9910, for those of you wondering. So, uh, trying it out, seeing how it sounds. And uh, as, as of this recording, I don't have a windscreen for it yet, so if there is wind noise, I do apologize, but uh, I'll be getting a windscreen for it soon, so stay tuned for that. But anyway, um, yeah, just to fill you guys in on what's been going on in my life lately, uh, I recently had an infection that I was getting over. Um, I'm on antibiotics and stuff like that. I'm still on antibiotics until the end of this week, and uh, you know, it's been kind of hampering my progress on just doing stuff, really, because, I don't know, for some reason, they're just making me really tired and kind of loopy, so. But I decided to, you know, get out of the house, get out of the apartment, make a little video, just walking around, getting some fresh air and stuff like that, and uh, just talk to you guys. So, like I said, I ha had an infection, and, you know, I'm not going to get into the nitty-gritty because it's kind of gross, but, you know, I had an infection somewhere <laughs> I'm not gonna mention and uh, the doctors drained out the abscess and I've had to go in for uh, daily suture changes dressing changes whatever you want to call it and uh, it's been a very painful experience and like I said I've been on antibiotics all week and I'm gonna be finishing them up at the end of this week so they just they just make me really tired and kind of loopy so I haven't really been able to work or do anything for the past week 
So, yeah, I just want to let you guys know that I'm on my way back to uh, full health. I'm not 100% yet, but I'm getting there. So, yeah. But anyway, another thing I wanted to talk to you guys about. So, I posted something on Facebook a while ago, just kind of airing out some grievances about YouTube. And it's not really about YouTube itself, it's just where I stand in YouTube. And every once in a while I get in these little moods, just cause, you know, I've been doing this whole YouTube thing for almost 10 years now at the time of this recording. And uh, I'm always, I always feel like I should be at a certain level or, you know, just kind of be at a certain spot, especially considering how long I've been doing it. And it just seems like, you know, no matter how awesome videos I make and stuff like that, and I feel awesome in making those videos, you know, it just seems like I'm talking to a brick wall a lot of the times, you know, and, uh, yeah, I just kind of look at my subscriber count, and I'm very thankful to you guys for subscribing, by the way. This is by no means a knock on you guys. This is just, you know, me kind of being frustrated with the lack of new subscribers. You know, every once in a while I get like a onesie twosie kind of thing, but it's not, you know, it's, it's constant, but it's not, you know, a large amount of subscribers. And so I get kind of bummed about that, you know, it's like, make all these new videos and I promote them and you know I make comments on other people's videos saying you know hey I did something similar check it out you know stuff like that and you know it, it, uh, there's a lot more to YouTube than just simply hitting record on a camera putting it up on the site and then bam video <laughs> there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that goes on and some people do that I've done it a couple times but uh, you know like I said there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that goes on you know just making sure the the, uh, the audio is right, maybe changing the lighting a little bit, cropping out a lot of the ums and ahs and things like that, and uh, <laughs> stuff like that. And also, you know, once the video's up, you gotta market it, you gotta, you know, get it out there, promote it, you know, let people know, because <laughs> if nobody knows, then they're not gonna watch it, so, you know, there's that side of the thing too. And uh, yeah, it's just a lot of a lot of time and effort and energy goes into you know making videos. And you know, I used to get satisfaction from the uh, video making process, and I still do. I still still do get you know some satisfaction in not only recording the video like I'm doing now, but also editing the video, tweaking it just right, you know, putting in music and making sure the, uh, the background music is just right. It's not too loud, but it's not too quiet. And it doesn't like clash with my vocals, my, the speaking portion. <laughs> it's not a song here. Uh, you guys know what I mean. But yeah, you know, I, I put in all this time and effort for making videos and I put it out there. And you know, like I said, I do get satisfaction from putting it out there and releasing it, you know, making the video public and be like, Ah, I did it. <laughs> but, you know, to me, YouTube is always, you know, YouTube is a social network. And one of the, uh, the definition of a social network is interaction. And, you know, lately I haven't really been getting too much interaction, not, not too much comments or personal messages or anything. So, you know, it feels like I'm talking to a brick wall a lot of the times, you know? And uh, I, I think that to me is the satisfying part is, you know, yeah, I, I get satisfaction from releasing the video and all that stuff, but it's also just the interaction between me and you guys, you know? <laughs> I want to hear what you guys have to say and, you know, maybe add on my little two cents to the conversation or something like that and just kind of see where it goes from there. And uh, I haven't been really getting that a lot lately. And, uh, yeah, it just kind of makes it frustrating, you know? And then, you know, once, once you don't get that, and you know, every once in a while I get like uh, the, uh, the good job, you know, the little YouTube equivalent of a golf clap, you know, clap, clap. You know, good job, Andy, great video, awesome. You know, but eh, I don't know. <laughs> I guess I'm just at a crossroads, you know? What, 
and I just want to like ask you guys like what should I do you know because I do have a lot of good ideas for YouTube and I've been doing a lot of you know different interesting things or at least I think they're interesting I don't know you know I've been doing the whole let's play thing on my Andy Cade channel which uh, links and stuff will be either in the boopity boop down below or in the sidebar wherever sidebar is <laughs> I always forget in this camera anyway um, yeah I just been doing, doing a lot of good stuff putting a lot of effort into making videos but I think the one thing just from looking at all the uh, the the how-to guides on being a YouTube superstar and other such things that you find online you know a lot of them talk about consistency and uh, you know, just marketing your channel as like a one-note thing. And I see where they're coming from, but I just, I don't know, I kind of hate that idea. Because it's like, you know, then you're just going to be known as the blank guy. You know, for me, when I joined the Navy, you know, I started making NFAX, which was Navy Frequently Asked Questions. And I would, I would take questions from guys who would send me personal messages, send me stuff in the comments. And it kind of ballooned into this thing, you know, I got a lot of hits from that. And that's where I got my initial boost of subscribers. Because before that, I was only like maybe 100, 200 or so subscribers. That's what I had at the time. And uh, once I joined the Navy and started doing NFAX, it just kind of grew. And, uh, you know, after a while, like I like doing this series, but after a while, it just kind of comes to a point where it's like, you're just kind of fishing the bottom of the barrel for questions. And there's only so many videos that you can do telling people what boot camp was like. And I've been out of boot camp for uh, so many years. And uh, it's just, you know, the info that I would put out just wouldn't have been all that helpful to people looking to join. You know, so it's just like I had to just kind of stop it, really. Every once in a while I put out an occasional video or so, but uh, for the most part I just stopped it. And plus I was getting tired of all the haters, you know. <laughs> they they tend to uh, creep up in those kinds of videos. You know, a lot of the, the old, you know, grumpy vets who are like, Back in my day we didn't do it like that, you fucking pussies. Brr. You know, stuff like that. I, I was getting kind of tired of that too, so. And I just kind of did my own thing, talked about, you know, did travel videos, did unboxings, um, did videos here in Japan, which, <laughs> I don't know, like, I kind of thought that, you know, I'd get more success from doing the J-Vlog videos, which is, you know, doing these, the J-Vlog stuff, I, you know, is, is what I dreamed of doing, you know, back when J-Vlogging first took off back in, you know, 2006, 2007. You know, I'd always dreamed of coming out here to Japan and just just talking about Japan, showing off different things. You know, oh, look at that. That's so cool, you know? And uh, stuff like that. And I just had my heart set on it. And that's, that's one of the reasons I started my uh, Life in Video series was just to do something along the lines of what J-Vlog videos were at the time, but uh, set in wherever I was, you know, back in Ohio, San Diego, Chicago, wherever, you know. So when I came out here, I kind of had a, uh, a system set up, you know, I had a, had a rhythm, I had a format, and uh, it was just really easy for me to do. So, you know, it, when I first got out here, it was just like every weekend, I would always kind of brainstorm, okay, what do I want to do this weekend? Where do I want to go? And, you know, there was a lot of stuff in a lot of older videos that I would get really excited about, you know. Oh, I'm gonna go here because, you know, Tokyo Kuni went here. Or I'm gonna go here because Roger Swan went here. And, you know, it'll be awesome. And it was awesome. But, you know, after a while, you kind of fall out of the honeymoon phase, as a lot of uh, long-term expats call it. Where, you know, Japan stops becoming this mystical, magical wonderland and starts becoming a real, actual place. And don't get me wrong, it's still it's still a great place to live. You know, I still I find a lot of uh, comfort and stuff in living here. 
but it just you kind of lose that that curiosity and just that wonder and that sense of motivation for doing the uh, the videos and stuff and uh, just kind of eh, <laughs> you know it just become everything just kind of becomes normal. It's basically stuff that I would have you know whipped out my camera and be like oh my god I'm gonna make a video about this. I'm just looking at it now like eh so what been there done that seen Victor do it a bajillion fucking times whatever <laughs> so I've been rambling on for quite some time about 13 minutes or so at least the rock cut of this is it'll probably be less than that but who knows but anyway I just want to end this video asking you guys you know what should I do should I you know just continue doing my thing or try something new or you know stick with being the Japan guy or the Navy guy or something like that and uh, I don't know just I, I look forward to you know hearing from you guys in the comments you know, I, I really miss miss that interaction with you guys so with that said this is the Andy San sign for now thanking you guys as always for uh, watching this video however rambly it may be and uh, watching my other stuff also want to thank you guys for liking the thumbs commenting and subscribing also sending a few friends to the party and hey as always we'll see you next time catch you later guys bye all right and we're recording Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you, Pook, with my June 2015 update video for, you guessed it, June 2015. Woo! So yeah, um, we got a lot of stuff to talk about in this video, so I got my notes off to the side here on my uh, Surface Pro 3. Um, so if you see me looking off to the side like this, that's why. So um, as always with these monthly update videos, I'm going to be going over some YouTube stuff as well as some personal life stuff. So, uh, stick with me. Uh, but before we get into the YouTube stuff though, I do have to apologize. My throat's a little sore right now, so if I kind of sound a little off, that's why. So, with that said, let's get on with the, uh, the update stuff. So, let's start off with uh, YouTube updates. I have uh, new episodes of Andy Cade coming out. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, Andy Cade is my new Let's Play channel. I'm doing, currently doing a playthrough of the game Honey Pop. Um, I'm on episode 7 at the time of this recording. I, I recorded 7 additional episodes and I'm going to be uh, editing and sending those out shortly for your viewing pleasure. And I'm also looking into uh, doing other games as well. Uh, I downloaded a couple games off of Steam the other day that I might be getting into. And uh, as far as retro games, which was the original idea of Andy Cade, I'm still planning on doing that. It's just uh, I'm going to wait until I get back to the States before I start uh, rebuilding my retro collection again, just because it's it's just generally easier to do it that way. You know, I don't have to worry about shipping or any of that other weird stuff. So, you know, it's that. And uh, if you guys have any suggestions for uh, future games, uh, be sure to leave them in the comments below, in the boopy de boop or uh, in a personal message. As I always say, I read all the comments and I read all the personal messages. And uh, next on the agenda, uh, new episodes of First Impact Anime, Second Impact. So um, as of this recording, I have, uh, I'm up to episode seven of the 13 episode season. Um, still working on more episodes, uh, rendering them and stuff like that. You know, uh, we recorded them uh, a while back. And uh, for those who don't know, uh, First Impact Anime, Second Impact is a, uh, a collaboration series that I do with my best friend Eric, also known as the Talking of Dawkin. And uh, we basically just like riff over the first episode in an anime series, and we do specials and stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. I've had these episodes for a while, and you know, they've just been on the back burner for so long just because, you know, it usually takes me a while to edit them. You know, it takes me a bit longer to do, to, uh, do those episodes versus, you know, my other videos. You know, I put them off for other reasons, you know, maybe, you know, do the ship schedule or want to work on other videos or work on other things or, you know, just for whatever reason. <laughs> um, I put them off for a while, but, you know, now I'm getting back into them and, you know, while I'm in the middle of editing them, and I really noticed this with episode seven, you know, I kind of sit back and as I'm checking the edits, I actually, you know, just sit back and watch the episode and it's a lot of fun, you know. It, you know, I think that 
you guys will really get a kick out of it. And, uh, you know, the other episodes are pretty good, too. But uh, I really enjoyed editing episode 7. So uh, when that comes out, stay tuned. <laughs> and uh, I'm still planning on releasing them uh, every Wednesday. So uh, be sure to check out our uh, collaborative YouTube channel, Floppimation. You should be watching. So, um, links and stuff will be down below in the boopity boop or off into the uh, suggested channels thing, which is either there, there, I forget. <laughs> either way, so um, there's that. And, uh, you know, if I don't finish it up by the time I get back to the States in a couple months, you know, then I'll just finish it when I come back. But, you know, we'll, we'll get into that stuff later. Next on the list is the uh, most obvious. Uh, I got a new camera recently, and that's what I'm recording this episode on. So, uh, this episode's being recorded on my new Sony Alpha 5100 camera. Now, um... I decided to go back to uh, the Sony line of cameras just because I really like the look of it. Really like the look of uh, how those videos turned out. Um, but my main problem with the uh, Sony Alpha 5000 was that it could only go up to, I believe it was either 24 or 30 frames per second. I think 24, if I remember right. And I wanted something that had uh, 60 frames per second just for the smoothness <laughs> and everything. So. Um, I looked up and found that Sony made a, uh, a successor to the uh, Alpha 5000 and uh, it corrected a lot of, of things that I had gripes with, you know, not only as a point and shoot camera, but also as a video recording camera as well. So um, I really like it, but uh, the thing is, um, I bought this camera in Japan, it's the Japan model. So um, now this is kind of like a little tip for you guys who are planning on coming out to Japan to either live here, work Work here or you know maybe just come for a couple weeks to visit um, if you get electronics in Japan uh, it's not like back in the States where you can adjust the language to just about anything or at least you know either English Spanish French something like that you know those are you know usually the main languages but you know in Japan it's just Japanese only <laughs> for the most part unless you get uh, what they call the overseas model or the foreign model or whatever the case may be so they don't have a built-in uh, English uh, set of things so if you're trying to to do stuff <clears throat> In the electronics, you know, like adjust settings or, you know, just, you know, navigate the menu or whatever, you know, it's, <laughs> it would behoove you to learn some Japanese or to, you know, just stick with buying the overseas models. Um, if you're going to a big city like Tokyo or, you know, Kyoto, Osaka, something like that, uh, there's a lot of duty free stations out there that have the overseas models. So if you absolutely need a camera or something like that, you know, or like your camera just dies for whatever reason and you want to replace without having to wait for a while you know definitely check out those places you know they have overseas models and things like that so um, what does this mean so this means um, <clears throat> You know, I originally thought that I could kind of get over the uh, the language on the camera. You know, think of it kind of as incentive to learn some Japanese, you know, learn some kanji and, you know, katakana, hiragana, stuff like that. And, uh, but, you know, truthfully, when I'm, you know, recording or shooting uh, or taking pictures or whatever, it, it's just, <laughs> I can't be uh, bothered with, uh, you know, messing around, you know, because I'm very much like a, you know, plug it in, one, two, three, four, go kind of guy. And I, I don't like to futz around too much with with uh, with stuff so um, I'm I already bought an uh, an American model American body you know Sony Alpha 5100 same it's the exact same camera except you know it's the American model so it, you know the menus and stuff are in English so it's easier for me to read on the fly versus you know me having to translate stuff in my head and then there's that little you know, blip in time where it's like, oh, I think that kanji means that, and you know, stuff like that. I, I just don't want to second guess myself. And uh, if you guys are wondering about the unboxing for this camera, I did record it, but uh, when I was futzing around with the settings on this camera, I accidentally formatted my memory card, which had the unboxing on there. So I lost the uh, footage for the unboxing for this particular camera. But uh, once the uh, Alpha 5100 body comes in. I'll be doing an unboxing of that and uh, stuff like that. So stay tuned for that. Ah, I do apologize. My voice is going out. Mm. Ah, pardon me.
pardon me. But I do have some nice uh, jasmine tea, which is my favorite out here in Japan and something I'm definitely gonna miss. You know, the unsweetened tea. Uh, you know, they have tea and stuff like that back in the States, but uh, it's usually like super sugary and all kinds of diabetes, you know, so. All right, <clears throat> I think we'll get one more swig. So my voice, you know, doesn't sound too crackly, I hope. All right, so now that we've covered uh, the youtube -y stuff, let's get into some personal stuff. As you guys know, I, I made like a little video about this before, but um, earlier in May, I had uh, what I originally thought was an ingroinal hernia, and uh, had to be taken off the ship for it, and I was sick for a couple weeks. So, um, just want to let you guys know what was going on with that. Um, basically, uh, one day, I woke up <clears throat> and I was in a lot of pain. And I figured, like, I just slept wrong or slept funny or something like that because, you know, the beds on the ship aren't exactly the most comfortable. So, I figured I might have just slept wrong and had, like, a crick in my, you know, my back or something like that. And uh, we were doing evolutions on the flight deck and, you know, doing you know, scene anchor and you know, stuff like that. Um, I could just, I could barely uh, move the line around, you know, I could just like barely pick it up. And I really felt like shit, so, you know, I just decided to kind of stick it out until, you know, after we were done. And then I went to go see Doc. And, you know, he kind of did a little feel around. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not gonna try not to uh, make this too gross, but, you know, still make it as detailed as I can without being too gross. So, um, for those of you with uh, queasy stomachs, um, looking out for you. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, uh, so Doc did his little feel around and found uh, something that shouldn't have been there and was like, yeah, I think you got an ingroinal hernia. Or ingroinal hernia, I, I forget what it was. I'm gonna call it ingroinal, even though it's horribly mispronounced. <laughs> um, so they decided to send me off ship to uh, get it looked at, at you know, at uh, the hospital. And I got to ride the rib for the very first time. Now the rib, for those who don't know, stands for rigid hull inflatable boat. It's just like a small little mini boat that's used for uh, various things. You know, it can be used for a bunch of different things. So um, I got to ride it from the ship back to uh, shore. And it was a lot of fun, actually. It was the first time I ever got to ride it. And uh, so from there, I went to, uh, to the hospital to uh, see somebody else about it and you know they did their little feel around found a little thing <laughs> and not that little thing I know what you guys are thinking I was like yeah I think you got an ingrown hernia so they sent me to see a specialist and he found that it was some kind of uh, like an infection or something like that some uh, I'm not sure he, it's called like an abscess it's it's as gross as it sounds <laughs> I'm not gonna lie I went through surgery and uh, got it drained out um, and then went in for a week for daily dressing changes so they basically like you know put in dressing to facilitate in the continued drainage of the infection uh, I think they call them like sutures something like that and uh, and they would change them out every day so that way it wouldn't get reinfected but would still be able to drain out and stuff like that so you know the first couple days were the worst just because it was so you know excruciating hating getting you know it pulled out and then put back in you know new stuff put back in and it was just a very painful process and I hope that uh, I would I'd never experience that again or anybody experiences that again you know too many pointy things in a place I don't like pointy things <laughs> just put it that way um, but yeah um, after a week uh, they drained out everything you know I got my last suture changed and they still kept me on antibiotics. And the thing is, like, the antibiotics and the painkillers and stuff they had me on uh, kind of disrupted my sleeping pattern a little bit. So, like, I would wake up in the morning about the same time, you know, around 7 or 8 in the morning, you know, just wide awake. You know, I wouldn't set my alarm or anything like that. And then, you know, I'd be up, make breakfast or whatever, go in for my, you know, suture change, come back, you know, either eat lunch on base or bring something home you know, eat and then just like go to sleep for a couple hours, you know, and then just wake up, puts around for a little bit and then feel kind of tired, go back to sleep. And it was just kind of on and off like that for the first week. 
and then it was like that for the second week as well when I was uh, still on the antibiotics and painkillers and all that stuff. So I was still kind of loopy from all that. But, you know, I'm glad to say after this long rant that uh, I'm 100% now feeling really good, you know, you know sore throat aside. <laughs> but that's, that has nothing to do with that, so it's something completely different. I think it's allergies or something like that. Um, a couple days ago, they, uh, a lot of the uh, Japanese people were mowing the, uh, the greenery in the neighborhood, so I think just them, you know, mowing down dry grass and stuff kind of sent a bunch of crap in the air and you know, I'm suffering from it, so um, there's that. As far as me going back to the ship, um, I'm not sure yet. I don't know all the details. I don't know if they're gonna, you know, just keep me here, you know, while I'm processing out or if they're gonna send me back and then when they come back, then I'm gonna finish processing out. You know, I'm not, I'm not quite sure yet, uh, but I'll definitely keep you guys posted, you know, as I learn more about it, so. Um, but while I'm here, I am working on, uh, you know, getting stuff taken care of for my separation, you know, stuff, you know, with medical, you know, getting my medical records squared away, but mostly working on uh, education stuff, you know, sending out applications, uh, putting in my application for GI Bill, um, getting in contact with my uh, VA coordinator out there, uh, seeing, you know, coming up with a degree plan, seeing if, you know, I can clep any courses, you know, if I even have time to clep courses stuff like that and just kind of setting myself up for success so that way you know when I am finally out then you know it, it'll be a, a as smooth of a transition as possible so um, and I think I mentioned this in an earlier video but you know my plan as far as going back to college is um, to go to Western Michigan University in Kalamazoo Michigan you know the state that looks like this <laughs> yeah my plans to go out there and uh, you know like the first semester basically just take online courses and I know that does affect your uh, BAH that you get out there you only get 50% of it but um, I did you know some calculations and stuff online because they have like BAH cal calculators and stuff like that and uh, the cost of living da da over there is relatively low so um, I think I could get by with half BAH for a while. And I have stuff in savings, so I, I should be fine in that regard. So um, the plan is to, uh, once I'm all done with the Navy, to come back home to Ohio, um, look for a place up in Kalamazoo. I'm gonna also continue to look while I'm still here, but you know, once I'm actually back in the States, I can actually, you know, do something about it, you know, go to the places, you know, hey, you know, I'm so-and-so, and, you know, actually look at the place and be like, you know, eh, this is kind of a shithole, or, eh, this is all right, <laughs> you know, whatever, and uh, actually finalize on it, and then, you know, go and move all my stuff from Ohio up to Michigan, and, you know, get myself all settled up there, get a car. That's going to be another big thing, especially in the wintertime up in Michigan. Like, I, I can't, I can't ride around on my bike, you know, all season, all seasons like I can out in Japan for the most part. Um, so I definitely, definitely have to get a car. It's, it, you know, it is essential out there. It's not just a nice thing to have. So um, that's going to be another big ticket item for when I get out there. And uh, stuff like that. So the first semester, like I said, you know, I plan on doing the online college thing. And then uh, once I get myself completely settled in, uh, the following semester, you know, it'll be the first, uh, what, the spring semester of 2016, I think? Yeah, something like that. Um, this is when I'm going to be going to campus and going to classes and stuff like that. So, um... You know, that's pretty much my plan for now, just to take care of, of, of as much um, transition, separation stuff as I can while I'm still here, and then uh, just move on with the next chapter in my life. So, uh, I think I've rambled on long enough, and my throat's getting pretty roached right now, so um, thanks for tuning in to this very rambly update video, and uh, you know, just being very supportive for um, all that I'm going through right now. It's, uh, 
I mean, I'm not gonna lie, it, it is pretty, uh, a pretty difficult, you know, the transition process and everything. And there's a lot of people I gotta talk to and a lot of things that have to happen before I come back to the States. So I just wanna say thank you guys for being, you know, very supportive of the, uh, <laughs> the erratic uh, video uploading schedules and things like that. I'm trying to make them as uh, consistent as I can, but with everything going on, it's, you know, it's very difficult to do that. So, you know, I apologize for not having a consistent schedule for a while, but uh, hopefully once everything settles down and, you know, I'm back in the States and moved in my own place up in Kalamazoo, then uh, the dust will clear <laughs> and a schedule will be set. Hopefully. <laughs> so, with that said, this is the Andy San. Sign for now. Thanking you guys, Poop, once again, for tuning in to this video and watching my other stuff. Also, gotta thank you guys for liking, the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, now we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, and I just wanted to give you guys a quick little update vlog about uh, what's going on in the state of the Andy San and stuff like that. And to also uh, thank you guys for uh, subscribing to my channel. Uh, recently I hit uh, 1,500 subscribers on my Andy San channel, and I just wanted to make a quick little video to thank you guys for uh, taking the time to uh, watch the stuff that I put out on YouTube and things like that. So um, I recently appeared in a, a day in life vlog for my friends Grace and Yosuke from the Texan and Tokyo channel. Uh, links below will be in the boop de boop for you to check out uh, the video that I was in and you know subsequently her channel as well. And uh, she's also going to be releasing her third book. So I'm really excited about that. Pre-order link and stuff like that will be in the boop de boop down below as well. So you can check that out. So I'm um, really excited to uh, hit 1,500 subscribers. I actually hit it uh, a couple days ago, but uh, I was just so busy with a bunch of other stuff like recording new videos and putting together new videos and stuff like that. I didn't really have the time to just do a little sit down video and be like, you know, hey, thanks guys. <laughs> So, um, <clears throat> this video is also going to be kind of an introductory video for my new subscribers that came over from uh, my little appearance on Texan in Tokyo. So, um, if you guys didn't catch it at the beginning, my name's Andy. Uh, I'm an American in the United States Navy currently, stationed in Yokosuka, Japan. And uh, I do, uh, my main channel is kind of a variety channel of sorts. So, I mainly do like my video life around Japan called Andy Japandy. Recently cracked uh, 100 episodes, so it's a lot of good stuff there. Um, I also do unboxing videos for all the gear and stuff like that that I get for video recording, among other things that tickle my fancy. So, you know, I have a, a real bad case of gas or gear acquisition syndrome, as we call it. So, I'm constantly making uh, new unboxing videos and stuff like that. And I'm just doing a bunch of other random stuff. So, um, aside from my main channel, Channel, I also have uh, two other channels, so um, I got to do a shout out for my recently started Let's Play channel called Andy Cade, and my collaboration channel with my best friend Eric, also known as the Talking Dolphin, called Floppimation. So uh, links to both those channels and everything else will be down below in the boopity boops. You just got to uh, click the little see more tab, and uh, links will be there. So. Um, yeah, I just want to thank you guys for uh, tuning in and taking the time to uh, subscribe to my humble little channel. I love you all. And uh, more videos are on the way. I'm definitely, uh, <laughs> definitely uh, hitting it hard and heavy with uh, making videos and stuff like that between uh, doing stuff for Andy Cade as well as Flopimation and doing stuff for my main channel. Like I got two videos already in the can and another one on the way for my main channel. So definitely check those out soon. And uh, yeah, just been really busy with that. So um, yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to say in this video before it gets too random. So yeah, that said, this is the Andy San. Sign up for now. Thinking you guys, poop, as always, for uh, tuning into this video and my other stuff. Also want to thank you guys for liking the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party, and hey, as always, we'll see you 
next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. And today is my five year anniversary of joining the United States Navy. So today I just wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, just the process that led to me joining the Navy as well as, you know, what the future holds for the old Andy son. So, um, on June 24th, 2010, uh, I joined the United States Navy officially. And, you know, I went off to boot camp and uh, did stuff like that. So, um, just give you guys a little background. Uh, for those of you who don't know what my life was like, you know, pre-Navy and stuff. I got kicked out of college back in 2007 and was just kind of drifting from job to job. Just trying to stay afloat and try to find some stable work so I could uh, live on my own and, you know, recoup and just try to, you know, get my shit together basically. And and you know, at the time, the United States was facing a, a huge economic downturn. So it was very difficult to find work during that time. And it just got to the point where I had to move back in with my folks. And I was constantly looking for jobs and I just couldn't find anything at all, just anywhere. It was terrible. During the winter of 2009, my mom, you know, presented me with the choice of, you know, either you join the military or you're getting out of my house. And at the time, I didn't have anywhere else to stay, so I'm like, yeah, why not? <laughs> you know, with, with, with a lot of hesitation of, you know, joining and stuff, because, you know, I didn't, you know, really want to join initially. But once I looked at all the benefits and, you know, the prospect of being able to go back to college again and stuff like that, and to be able to eventually come out to Japan, which, you know, happened sooner rather than later, <laughs> funny enough. Um, I decided to join, so I um, was really nervous about it. Um, the only people that I knew that were in the military were my cousins, but you know a lot of them joined the, the military a while ago, so like they don't really they didn't really know how you know the current military works versus how their military worked back then. So I mean I got a lot of good basic information out of them, but you know it's, <laughs> most of the stuff I just learned as I went along on. June 24th, 2010, officially joined, went to boot camp, all that stuff. Um, it was only really hard for like the first couple weeks just because it was, you know, a huge culture shock. But after a while, you know, I kind of got used to things and just blended in with everybody. So, you know, none of the RDCs decided to, you know, beat me or anything like that. So just blended in real nice. So after that, I went to uh, uh, Great Lakes on the other side of the house after I graduated boot camp. Uh, went to ATT, which is essentially like a basic electronics course. So I was in, in Great Lakes for about, you know, three months, I'd say, give or take. And uh, it was a lot of fun. It was still fairly close to home, so my uh, folks could come visit. And uh, so they'd come visit me and we'd go off to Chicago and stuff like that. And you know, it was a lot of fun. But then on um, Thanksgiving of 2010, I moved out to uh, San Diego to start my training for STGA school. I was out at the schoolhouse for a while because there was a lot of schooling that I went through, so I had to stay out there a bit longer than uh, most other people. So um, I eventually left in May of 2012. So I, I was out there for like a good minute. Um, so in May 2012, I uh, received orders to my very first ship, the USS Kurtz, FFG 38, 38 Special. <laughs> uh, so I only got orders long enough to pretty much go on her uh, twilight deployment, her last deployment, doing some drug ops, things like that down in Central America, and then headed back to San Diego after six months to decommission the ship. And then I went back to uh, school in San Diego, but it was only for uh, about two, three months-ish. Not very good dates. <laughs> so I was, I was only there for a couple months. And then from there, I uh, went out here to lovely Yokosuka, Japan, where I got stationed on board the USS Lassen. And from there, we went on several underways, you know, doing a lot of different stuff throughout Southeast Asia and things like that. And I've seen so many different uh, countries, seen so many different cultures. And not only did I get to visit those countries, but I get to live in a foreign country. <laughs> Got my own place and everything. So it was a pretty sweet deal. You know, a couple months ago, um, 
I got, you know, the word that I was getting ad sept because of my weight and decided, you know, I'm just going to put my be best foot forward in dealing with it and, you know, see this more as, as an opportunity rather than a downfall. So, um, it is what it is. And yes, when I do get out, I am going to be working on losing this shit, so... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, and I'm even working on it now, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm not eating out nearly as much as I used to, you know, I'm staying home, eating food, stuff like that. Hopefully, you know, when I get back to college, I'll be losing that freshman 15 rather than gaining it, right? So, like I said, I decided to take it on as a, as a new chapter in my life. Um, it's very stressful, I'm very nervous about the whole thing, but I'm also really excited because, you know, it's... It's what I've been working for since I joined, basically, you know, five years ago. <laughs> so it's the, kind of the culmination of all of that and just being able to go back to school. And then from it, from there, whatever else. I, I don't have anything, you know, concrete planned for when I'm done with school, you know, other than just get a job, I guess. <laughs> but there's a lot of job opportunities out there for veterans, so I, I shouldn't be too hard up for job opportunities, but um, as of this recording, I'm not pursuing anything at the moment, but, you know, I, I want to focus more on school, and then when, you know, the time comes, then I'll focus more on jobs and things like that. So that way, my focus isn't on finding a job, and it's more on school. So that's just kind of how my brain operates. In a couple months, I'm going to be uh, going back to uh, Ohio to stay with the folks for a little bit while I get my uh, new place uh, worked out up in Kalamazoo, Michigan, where I'm gonna be going to school. So I'm gonna be going to Western Michigan University out of Kalamazoo, Michigan. So if you're looking at the hand, it's about here-ish somewhere. <laughs> I didn't mean to flip you off there, but it's about here-ish. So I'll, I'll be going there. You know, getting my four-year degree in uh, comp uh, computer information systems. So it's basically like a uh, business meets computers degree. So it's like a half business degree, half computer science degree. It just, you know, I, I enjoyed it. You know, it's a lot less, you know, math intensive. You know, I like programming and stuff like that, but if I were to stick with like a computer science degree, it'd be a lot more math than I'm comfortable with. So I'd prefer to have a little less math and a little more programming stuff. So it'll be interesting getting back into it. You know, I haven't been in college in uh, almost 10 years now. So um, like I said, I'm really nervous, but I'm also really excited to be going back. And uh, yeah, it's it's just been a, a crazy wild ride so far. You know, my time in the Navy and my time's almost up. So <laughs> kind of funny how things work out, I guess. But, you know, I just wanted to make this video let you guys know I do have a plan post-Navy. And yes, I'm going to be continuing to make videos post-Navy, you know, about my college life and other things. You know, I'm also going to be, you know, focusing on my other channels as well, my Andy K channel, which is my Let's Play channel. And I'm also going to be getting on, uh, sorry, I'm also going to be getting on Twitch very soon. Um, I've done a couple test streams on it, but uh, as of this recording, I don't have a proper stream. Uh, streaming setup. My laptop isn't really cooperative with Twitch streams. So I'm going to get myself a proper desktop so I can uh, do the Twitch thing proper. So stay tuned for that. In closing of this video, um, before the camera explodes due to the high temperature, <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you guys a question. So this is my 199th vlog. And, and uh, my, for my 200th vlog, I wanted to uh, make it something very special. So I'm opening up the floor to you guys. I'm asking you guys for questions for a Q and A. So um, if you guys have any questions about, you know, whatever it is I do, you know, what's my video set setup, what's my camera, why'd you want to join the Navy, why'd you want to come out of Japan, whatever, you know, feel free to uh, leave some comments, questions in the boopity boops down below. And uh, before my camera explodes, I'll sign off. So yeah, this is Andy San. Sad for now, thinking you guys for uh, continuing to support me through my five years in the Navy, and here's to many more post Navy, and uh, for watching my other stuff as well. Also, want to thank you guys for liking, the thumbs, commenting, subscribing. 
Send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, coming at you with my July 2015 update video for, you guessed it, July 2015. Woo. So yeah, as I always do with my monthly update videos, I got a lot of stuff to talk about. I got some uh, youtube -y stuff as well as personal life stuff. And in addition to that, it's also my 200th vlog. So in my previous vlog, I opened the floor up to you guys for uh, any questions that you may have for me. And uh, I'll be answering those questions at the end of this vlog. So stay tuned for that. But first, we have youtube -y updates. And I got my notes off here to the side. I got my little clicker here because I'm so fancy. <laughs> So here we go. All right, starting off with the YouTube updates. Um, first off, I gotta apologize for the uh, delayed videos and whatnot for not only my Andy San channel, but for my side channels as well. My uh, Let's Play channel known as Andy Cade and my collab channel with my best friend Eric, also known as the Talking with Dogan, known as Flopimation. So uh, the reason behind the delays was mostly due to building my new desktop PC, which is off to the side over here, rendering a video, so that's probably why you're hearing all the whirling of the fans and whatnot. So um, anyway, yeah, um, I recently built my very first custom-made uh, PC from the ground up. It was uh, very daunting at first, but after I got some uh, some advice from friends and stuff like that helped me out. Uh, it was pretty much pretty uh, pretty easy to put together. So um, really glad that I got it up and running, and it is now officially up and running. So um, yeah, the reason behind behind the delays and stuff was just because I was so busy getting this thing together, and I wanted to start rendering videos on uh, my new desktop rather than on my laptop. So I just wanted to kind of get this thing up and running before I started making more videos. And uh, now that it's up and running, um, I'll be resuming schedule for uh, my uh, videos and stuff like that. So uh, First Impact Anime um, will resume its regular schedule uh, next week. So um, actually right now I'm rendering the 10th uh, episode of uh, this season of First Impact Anime. So it's kind of funny how that works. It'll uh, resume its normal schedule next week, not this week. So I have time to uh, catch up on episodes and things like that. But it's a really good one. I think you guys will like it. For uh, this 4th of July out here in Japan, um, a couple friends and I got together at uh, Yo Yogi Park. Did a little YouTube collaboration and stuff like that for uh, some jelly wrestling and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I, I wasn't personally je jelly wrestling, but um, a bunch of other YouTubers were. I mean, the it was just kind of a, uh, a last minute thing, the whole jelly wrestling thing. So uh, I didn't know about it. So I didn't I didn't bring an extra pair of shorts or anything like that. So, uh, but I got a lot of a lot of other YouTubers who were out there uh, wrestling in the jelly. So uh, that's going to be coming out the pipes very soon. But I have to be very careful about my editing to make sure there's no uh, slip ups, if you know what I mean. So <laughs> got to be careful about that. Yeah. So next on the list is book reviews. And this is something I've been really wanting to do with my channel for a long time. Um, for those of you who've tuned into my channel for a while, you'll know that I had a series a while back called War, which is Wednesday album review, where basically like every week I review a new album of music that comes out and stuff like that. And uh, it was going pretty well. But uh, when I joined the Navy, I kind of stopped doing it just because I really didn't have the time to sit down and, uh, you know, dedicate that much time to review an album and stuff like that. So um, with book reviews, I kind of want to bring it back in some fashion, you know, kind of bring back the, the spirit of uh, Wednesday album review but in more of a book form. So uh, that might be something that I'll make into a regular series. It may be like a semi-regular series. I'm not quite sure yet. It's very formulative at the moment. So, uh, but definitely I do want, I do want to do uh, two books 
uh, but my friends uh, Grace and Ryosuke, otherwise known as Texan in Tokyo. So as you guys know, I did a review of her first book, but I never got around to doing her second or her third book, and her third book just recently came out, by the way. So um, I've been meaning to get to it, but uh, I just kind of lost track of it with the uh, schedule and random things that come up. So it is what it is, but I am definitely working on it. So. You know, stay tuned for that. Um, I only got a limited amount of time left in Japan, which we'll get to later, but um, I am definitely looking forward to uh, collabing with more YouTubers in the future. And uh, we got some plans and stuff set up in the works for uh, some future collabs. So uh, I can't really talk about it right now just because it's still very, uh, very formulative and it's still in the planning stages. So I can't really promise anything just yet. But uh, there are plans in the works for collabs, so stay tuned for that. <laughs> and uh, I'm also looking forward to doing uh, collabs when I get back over to the States because um, basically when I first started off on YouTube, I was pretty much the only one that did it that, that I knew of, you know, my friends weren't really into the whole YouTube thing. I mean, I mean, they liked watching the videos, but they weren't into like making their own videos, you know? So I was basically like the YouTube guy among my friends. But uh, the game's changed since, uh, since I joined the Navy and it's been five years since I've, you know, lived back in Ohio, Michigan. So um, I'm hoping that there's more of a YouTube scene out there and, you know, maybe we'll start some collabs and stuff, but you know, that's just just, you know, future talk. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. So um, as I said, uh, with the building of my desktop, I kind of had to put a lot of things on hold, Andy K being one of them, um, just because I was dedicating a lot of my time to building this guy. So, um, and one of the main reasons I wanted to, to, uh, to make a desktop as opposed to get like a new laptop with upgraded stuff is just because um, I wanted something with a little more power, a little more uh, power for uh, making videos and stuff like that, as well as uh, streaming. So that's definitely something I want to do in future Andy Kate episodes. And uh, currently I only have like a couple, uh, couple stream videos up at the time of this recording, but uh, I definitely want to stream more on Twitch and you know export it over to YouTube as well for archival purposes and things like that. But also I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing from uh, from you guys, seeing what you guys have to say about it. Cause I don't know, like there's a lot of uh, different directions I can take Andy Kate. You know, I can continue to do the whole uh, let's play thing that I've been kind of doing. Uh, but I also want to incorporate uh, live streams as well. Uh, maybe I can find some uh, some you know happy medium or like some good middle ground involved. I'm I'm not quite sure yet, but uh, I'm definitely looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say in the comments below in the booby boops. So <laughs> I'm all ears. In Japan during the summertime, there's a massive rainy season that happens between like June and July. So thankfully, um, that's starting to come to a close. So it should start wrapping up either this week or next. So um, it's kind of put a damper on my outside video making. So I apologize if there's been a lot of, you know, inside videos, <laughs> but you know, the weather hasn't been too, uh, too kind for outside video making, so yeah. <laughs> but that should be changing very soon, so I hope to resume uh, more uh, outside videos as well. I know a lot of uh, people, you know, when they hear about people making money online or, you know, when they make videos, you know, getting YouTube money and stuff like that, it's considered kind of taboo to talk about that kind of stuff because it makes you seem like a sellout or, oh, he only does the videos for money. No, 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 you should do it because you love it, not just for money. But the reality of the situation is, um, I've been doing the YouTube thing for almost 10 years now. I love doing YouTube, don't get me wrong, I love doing YouTube, I love interacting with you guys. And the reason that I want to, um, you know, start uh, making an income from my videos is, you know, not to be super rich or to get some kind of level of e-celebrityism or anything like that. I mean, that's okay, but that's that's not the goal here. So the goal is to basically uh, create a, uh, 
I guess, to make a living off of making videos and stuff like that. So that's that's the ultimate goal. I mean, obviously, I'm a little uh, far off the mark at, at the moment, but um, that's something I'm definitely going to be working on in the future. And, and uh future videos and stuff like that and that's kind of just been my goal for a while so that way you know if I can make a living off of doing YouTube videos then that will free up time that I would normally dedicate to like a, a nine to five job or something like that which would help support myself and I could dedicate that time into making more videos which is why I want to make video why I want to make money online so I can you know, reasonably dedicate more time to making videos because I love making videos. <laughs> so, I mean, to me that makes sense. Whenever I say that to anybody else, it's like, Andy, you shouldn't do it for the money. You should do it because you love it. You fucking sell out. <laughs> but whatever. I, I just wanted to let you guys uh, know where I stand on that. So at least, you know. <laughs> so it's not just about the money. It's just, you know, it's complicated. And I'm probably gonna get some shit in the comments for it. <laughs> so, um, kind of going off that though, uh, the last little thing I'll talk about here, uh, YouTube wise, is uh, changing the direction of uh, my Andy San channel to reflect my future move back to the States. So, as you guys know, um, I'm gonna be moving back to the States. I'm gonna be getting out of the Navy here in a couple months. And uh, what this means is. Well, you know, I'm not gonna be doing Navy videos anymore. I'm not gonna be doing Japan videos anymore. So what are you gonna talk about? <laughs> so I guess like, you know, for more long-term stuff, um, I want to, you know, just have my Andy San channels like my personal channel, and then just kind of branch out into other channels which are considered uh, a bit more commercially viable, I guess. So there's a lot to do involved with that. So. Um, there's going to be uh, some major changes, you know, not just in life, but uh, on YouTube as well. So, um, I know I'm going to lose a lot of you guys for it. I know some of you, I know a lot of you guys are just watching me because, you know, I'm in the Navy and, you know, you like to watch the, the Navy and the military stuff and that's cool. You know, I, I'm okay with that. I accept it. And then there's some of you who only watch me for my Japan stuff. And I know, you know, some of you might leave because, oh, hey, he's not in Japan anymore. <laughs> and, you know, as much as I don't like that, it's simply a reality I have to accept. So, you know, it is what it is. And uh, I hope that you guys do continue to uh, tune in to my future adventures back in the States and going back to college. So, um, and speaking of personal stuff, <laughs> Let's get into the personal stuff. Yeah, there's not much to talk about personal-wise. Um, I am feeling a, a lot better uh, emotionally, you know, mentally, physically, stuff like that. Um, there are room, there is some room for improvement, but for the most part, you know, I am feeling, you know, pretty calm and pretty accepting of the fact that, you know, hey, you know, there's there's a future ahead of, of you know of me for uh, for the old Andy Son here. So um, I'm just basically you know focusing on uh, getting all my ducks in a row and everything like that, and getting myself ready for uh, for college life and for life back in the states and you know post Navy life, you know all that stuff. <laughs> so I'm just doing uh, doing the best I can, you know while I'm still out here. And uh, I don't have any exact dates at the time of this recording, but uh, just generally from talking to my ship and stuff like that, uh, the plan is for me to leave Japan either in August or very early September at the latest. So uh, once I get a more uh, exact date, which will probably be next month, then uh, I'll definitely let you guys know in like an update video or or something of the like. So, uh, before my camera explodes, uh, let's get to the Q&A, huh? So, um, as promised, uh, I'm gonna be answering some questions that you guys uh, gave to me. So, let's start off with Cecilia Gooden. And sorry if I butchered your name, I'm not that good with names, <laughs> so. Uh, Cecilia writes, hello Andy, you know I have a question. 
uh, what will you miss about the Navy? And I wrote back, there's a lot of things I'll miss about the Navy, but I think the number one thing is the people. That's true. Uh, I've met so many interesting people from all walks of life. A close second to that, though, would be uh, traveling to foreign countries. Can't beat that. <laughs> Next up is Nice Sneak Sat Satsuki. I don't know who that is. I don't know. Um, I've been thinking of joining as an officer after college. What are your opinions on supply officer, surface warfare officer, or any other recommendation? Your opinions will be greatly appreciated. Thanks for your service. So, um, as an enlisted guy, I don't know all the ins and outs, so just kind of keep that in mind. But I did write back and I said, officers have a much higher quality of life than us blue shirt enlisted folks. <laughs> SWO, which is Surface Warfare Officer, isn't a job per se, but rather a field that encompasses a wide array of jobs. Pretty much if you're on a ship, you're a SWO. And to make things even more confusing, uh, SWO is also a warfare pin that officers strive to get. The enlisted equivalent is ESWAS. Let's see, next up, SUPO, or Supply Officer, is a department head level position, so you won't be on that at least until your second or third tour to be eligible for it. And as far as getting commission goes, I'd say go for it. Uh, it might be harder to go officer than enlisted, but don't let that discourage you. Next up is Astro Boy 3507 my all-time favorite fans. <laughs> Do you ever think you would like to make your future living in Japan? And uh, I wrote back and said, it's still too early for me to say, but I'd love to visit when I can and maybe do like a one to two year stint out here teaching the English to the kiddies. <laughs> if I would come back for more than a vacation, I want to live somewhere other than the Tokyo, Yokohama area. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love it out here, but I want to experience a different part of Japan if I do decide to come back. So I'm thinking of either like Fukuoka, Osaka, Kobe, Kyoto, or even Sapporo, you know, just as a change of pace. Next up, and this is the last question by Dominique Henderson. How does getting your own place work while you're stationed? Do you have to be a certain rank before you can get your own place? And do you live by yourself or with a roommate? So um, I do want to cover this in more detail in a future episode of NFAX. And yes, I am going to be doing a couple more episodes of NFAX. Just saying. <laughs> I don't have a, a timeline for that yet, but it is something I want to do in the future. Anyway, like I said, I want to cover this more in detail on a future episode of NFAX, but I'll give you the Reader's Digest version here. So it varies from place to place, but here in Japan, or more specifically Yokosuka, uh, if you're an E5 or higher, an E4 for four years or more, or if you're married, then you qualify for housing. In Japan, the on-base housing is limited and reserved for families with non-Japanese spouses, typically, which is why it's encouraged for single sailors or sailors with Japanese spouses to live off base. There's an application process, but I'll get more into uh, detail with that in a future video. As for me, I used to live with up to uh, three roommates, but uh, the two of them moved out, uh, leaving me with uh, just one roommate. So, um... Yeah, <laughs> I try not to feature him in my video just for like, you know, privacy reasons and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, he's a real good guy though. So, uh, I guess that's, uh, that's pretty much it for, the, for this video. So I'm gonna wrap things up before my camera explodes. So yeah, this is the Andy San. Sign up for now. Thinking you guys for tuning in to my update video and watch my other stuff. Also gotta thank you guys for liking the thumbs, comment, subscribing, send a few friends to the party, and hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, now we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, coming at you from my lovely balcony here in Yokosuka, Japan. That's uh, Sarashima in the background there on the reflection. So um, today I wanted to have a little change of locale, just to change things up and stuff. But uh, I also wanted to talk to you guys and make a major announcement. So um, for those of you who follow me on my other social media outlets, you'll already know what I'm going to talk about. But for those who don't, I just wanted to make the announcement on YouTube and let you guys know that I've officially, as of today, been accepted into Western Michigan University for uh, the Computer Information Systems program. And I'm really excited and uh, just um, relieved, I guess, because this, is, this has been a long time coming for me. 
and uh, getting a second chance at uh, college again. So um, in addition to making this announcement, I also wanted to talk to you guys about my uh, previous college experience. Now, um, <clears throat> keep in mind, um, I'm a little older, a little wiser now, so uh, I definitely have full confidence I'm going to graduate this time. But uh, last time, I wasn't so... Uh, wasn't really so lucky, I guess you could say. So, um, I graduated high school back in 2004. I know I'm old. Mm. <laughs> anyway, graduated back in 2004. Um, got accepted into ITT Technical Institute in Dayton, Ohio uh, the previous year. So I got like a bad case of senioritis uh, that last semester because they were like, eh, just come in with your diploma, you'll be good to go. So I didn't really have to worry about grades as long as I passed. So I passed, obviously. So I got accepted. I accepted ITT Tech, graduated in 2004, uh, graduate high school rather, in 2004. I didn't really have that much of a break in between high school and tech school. So like I graduated in June, I started in like mid-June, so I only had like a two week break really. And then uh, the first week of July, right before uh, Independence Day for America, um, my dad uh, sadly passed away of cirrhosis, which is um, just... He basically drank himself to death, essentially. So it was a, uh, a really rough time for me and everything. So like I took a week off from school, from work, and just, you know, tried to get myself together again. And it still kind of bothers me a little bit, even today, but you know, I've got a better handle on it now than I did back then. So I was going to tech school, which was about 120 miles round trip, you know, twice, a, twice sometimes three times a week. And it eventually took a toll on my car because I was also working essentially full time at McDonald's as well just to pay the bills and stuff. So, um, you know, they wouldn't make me work, you know, legit full time. I had to obviously take extra long lunch breaks, or if it was kind of slow, they'd let me go just to shave off a couple extra hours so that way they wouldn't have to pay me, you know, full time benefits and stuff like that. It's kind of, kind of a shitty way of doing things, but, you know, it's. 10 years after the fact, so I'm not going to blame it. Anywho, um, so I did that, um, and eventually my car broke down. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> so I uh, decided to uh, lease a car, which is a bad idea. I don't recommend doing that. Um, so now, instead of owning my own vehicle and having much lower insurance because I own the vehicle, I now have to you know, make a car payment and then make a higher insurance payment because the car is leased and uh, had to you know, account for all these extra expenses in addition to the expenses I already had, you know, it's like cell phone and other things, gas being one of them, um, stuff like that. And uh, it just kind of wore on me after a while. And I keep in mind I was like 18, 19 years old at the time. So, you know, I was, you know, very new to this whole thing and just the, the scale of it rather. Cause you know, I had, a, I had a car in high school and a job and stuff like that, but it, it definitely ramped up when uh, I became a for realsies adult <laughs> and uh, stuff like that. So, um, I decided to transfer schools because my best friend Eric, also known as the Talk of the Dolkin, was uh, going to college at the time as well. And uh, he was going to like a, a, an actual like four-year university in Urbana, Ohio. You know, Urbana University, not to be confused with the one in Illinois. So anyway, um, during a uh, quarter where I'd have to, to take like a night class, because the way they did things is, um, just to make a long story short, ITT Tech was also dabbling into the online courses as well, but keep in mind this was like 2004, 2005, so um, online courses aren't nearly where they are today as they were back then, so if you had any kind of questions or stuff like that, you'd basically have to go to like an online forum and eventually wait for your teacher to get back to you. And, you know, they may be in like a different time zone or sometimes even a different country. So um, that was kind of discouraging. You know, they didn't have like an instant messenger set up or anything like that. So, and also being that I was a working adult, you know, I didn't really have the time to, you know, futz around waiting for the question to be answered on the message board. It's just like, you know, it's either, it's usually like a quick little yes or no question that I had, you know, nothing too mind blowing. But um, 
yeah, they just weren't really around to help. The communication was poor, and uh, I was starting to get a little discouraged. But um, IHD Tech uh, kind of got wind about it, not just from me, but from other students as well. So they decided to incorporate what's known as a hybrid class. So basically, you would still do all the work online like you would normally do, but in addition to that, you'd also have to go to class, go to like a night class, where you know they'd have like an actual instructor there. You know, you could work on homework there. If you had any questions, you could ask them, which was a great idea in theory. Uh, the teachers that I had, though, you know, were kind of inattentive and kind of iffy and busy helping other students or whatever the case. You know, always something. <laughs> so um, I got a little bit better with the online classes, but not by much. But anyway, getting back to the Urbana thing, um, I would often go, I, most of my classes would be in the morning. So I, you know, go down to Dayton in the morning and then, you know, usually come back home after class. But on days where I had a night class, I also had a morning class as well. So to me, it didn't really make much sense, you know, going to Dayton, back home to Salina, Ohio, where I'm from, and then back to Dayton for the night class and then back to Salina. So um, in between the, uh, the you know, when I got off from the day class, when I got from the night or before the night class, um, I go over to uh, to Eric's college and just you know hang out with them and you know kind of just relax a little bit, just as something to do in between classes and stuff. And uh, you know, Urbana was a, a lot more of a relaxed pace than uh, IT Tech was. You know, and, um, I was just kind of. You know, kind of jealous actually of uh, the slower pace that you know, which these guys were dealing with stuff. You know, they they didn't really have you know like full time jobs. You know, they might have worked like a couple hours here and there, and even then it was just for something to do and maybe a little pocket change, nothing too major. But um, I would just sit there for a couple hours and you know hang out with them, chill, watch TV, play video games, play Magic the Gathering, whatever. <laughs> You know, just did whatever, and you know, I, I met his college friends, which later became my own friends, you know, and uh, we just had a lot of fun. And, you know, I was just kind of sitting thinking, like, why don't I just come here? Because, like, I already know you guys, you know, I already know people. It's not going to be a completely fresh start for me. It's really nice, laid back, you know, you guys still get stu stuff done, but it's not like a breakneck pace at what I'm doing. So I'm just like, you know, I was kind of getting burnt out with IT Tech at the time anyway. So I decided to, uh, to transfer from IT Tech to Urbana University in, in the fall of 2006. And uh, yeah, it was just a huge relief for me. And uh, you know, I got rid of the car, which was another bad idea financially, because I eventually had to pay for it. And it's all paid for now, but uh, you know, that was after the fact. But um, yeah, I eventually just dropped a lot of my expenses. You know, I got rid of my cell phone, and got rid of the car, which was another big expense, you know, this, that, and the other, and just decided, you know what? The whole IT Tech thing didn't work out because I was too focused on, you know, my job, and my car was a big liability. So that's another reason why I wanted to go to uh, Urbana, so I could, you know, just get rid of all that and just focus on study and just focus on college. And then, you know, maybe after I get used to it, you know, I can get a car and get all this other stuff back. But, you know, at least college, is, you know, my education is number one. So um, I went over there and the first semester, now keep in mind, this was uh, the first time I was actually um, on my own because with IT Tech I was still staying in my parents' house, you know, commuting to college and stuff like that. So this was my first real taste of freedom because, you know, I lived in the dorms and stuff. So um, I didn't really know how to uh, how to handle myself at the time. You know, I just you know I would kind of dish class and go hang out with my friends and just kind of dink around and do whatever. You know, and uh, eventually my grades kind of suffered because of it. <laughs> so I got put on academic probation and. 
and uh, I was really scared about the whole thing because I thought I was going to get kicked out of college and stuff. So I wrote this, you know, appeal, you know, this appeal letter to, you know, please let me come back. You know, I'll try harder next time. You know, blah blah blah, stuff like that. And so Urbana eventually was like, okay, cool, you get another shot. And then they, you know, started going through all these things of, you know, hey, if you get, you know, good enough grades, you may be eligible for like a scholarship program where, you know, you can get like a half ride scholarship or like a full ride scholarship. And I'm like, all right, cool, this is good stuff. So for the second semester, I tried extremely hard and uh, just went full force at it, you know, and didn't hang out with my friends that much. You know, just was like, I'm gonna get my life back together. This is gonna be good. And uh, I got word from my financial advisor that um, while the grants would be good for the semester I'm currently serving, they wouldn't be able to backdate that stuff. So even if I were to get the uh, the voucher or the grant or whatever for this semester, it's not going to count for last semester. So I would have to find some way of paying them back for the previous semester, even if I did get the, uh, the scholarship. So I was really disheartened about the whole thing. And also, um, when I went to Urbana University, that's when my mom remarried. So while I was going to IT Tech, I only had to list her as, you know, as like an income source, quote unquote. You know, I only had to list her income instead of her and my stepdads. So I was able to qualify for a lot of grants based on that. So at IT Tech, I didn't have to worry about money so much. But at Urbana, I did because that's when she remarried and then I had to add his income into it. And uh, it basically disqualified me from a lot of the grants that I was getting at IT Tech and uh, <laughs> ended up, you know, not really having uh, the means to, you know, continue going to Urbana. And, you know, hearing that even if I were to do good this semester and get the grant, it wouldn't matter because I wouldn't be able to continue next semester because they would have to, I would have to find means to pay the Mac, basically. So I was constantly in the financial aid office, you know, talking to the staff, seeing if there's anything I can qualify for, anything I can do, any paperwork I gotta sign, you know, give me something, you know, it's your job, right? You're the financial department, you know, it's your job to make sure that, you know, I can be able to afford going to college and to help me find grants and stuff so that way, you know, I can continue going and stuff. And, um, I don't know, it was just a bad deal, so I ended up going to like a really, a really dark depression during that time, and, uh, you know, it was just like, I wouldn't go to class, I wouldn't see my friends, you know, I would only leave my room to, you know, eat, shower, pee, whatever the case may be, and that would be it, pretty much. So, um... Yeah, I was just, <laughs> you know. So, um, obviously my grades suffered because of that. And uh, at the end of the uh, spring 2006 semester, or the 2007 semester rather, excuse me, um, I got kicked out of Urbana because of A, low grades, and B, I couldn't afford continuing to go there. So, um, the following three years after that, um, were kind of a transitional period for me because I was focusing on trying to get back into college and I didn't really know how and I was so caught up I was so behind on bills and it was just it was just a really dark time for me and uh, in 2010 I decided to join the US Navy um, five years five years later you know I've gotten my life back together got my life back on track you know I'm a lot more disciplined now than I was then I've learned so much you know, since then, and uh, I just, I honestly can't wait to, uh, you know, just, you know, start, start over again, going back to college, and uh, I really look forward to it, and uh, I'm definitely going to be making a lot of new videos uh, while I'm out there in Kalamazoo, there's a lot to see, and i um, just looking up all these little landmarks and stuff like that just for video ideas, and it's really exciting, you know, I'm getting pumped up about it. So, um, yeah, this is, um, that's pretty much all I wanted to say, so hopefully my camera doesn't overheat <laughs> soon. But, um, yeah, man, like, like I said, I'm really excited to be going to Western Michigan, and I'm definitely gonna do better this time, get my degree this time, and life will be sweet. So, 
With that said, this is the Andy Sun. Sign up for now. Thinking you guys tuning in as always and watching my other stuff. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Subscribe. Shit. <laughs> it's the little button. It's like here, here. I don't know where things are in the video, but it says subscribe. It's somewhere. Click the button. Whatever. Uh, but anyway, uh, for those of you who are already subscribed, I want to thank you guys for liking, thumbs, commenting, subscribing, like I said. And uh, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, coming at you from my lovely balcony here in Yokosuka, Japan. And today I want to make a major announcement, and that is uh, my official uh, separation date from the United States Navy, and thus my flyout date, you know, my leave date of Japan. So I found out earlier this morning uh, my official. You know, for realsies day that I'm going to be flying out of Japan and back to the States and, you know, getting out of the Navy and all that. And that is August 7th, 2015. So, um, the next couple weeks to, you know, a month or two are going to be pretty busy for the old Andy son. So I'm just going to give you, you know, the down and dirty as far as, uh, you know, what's going to be happening. So, um, August 7th, I'm going to be flying out from Japan. I'm going to have my bags all packed, ready to go. Be heading back to the states um, to an out processing facility, uh, most likely in uh, Washington State or San Diego. Not sure which one just yet. And I'm going to be there for about a week to ten days doing the whole out processing thing. And uh, at the end of that, I'm going to fly back home to lovely Salina, Ohio. <laughs> and you know, uh, from there, uh, I'm not going to stay very long, actually. You know, it's going to be just a temporary stay until I can get my place lined up up in uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan, where I'm going to uh, be attending school at Western Michigan University for uh, computer information systems, which is like a business meets computers degree. So, fun stuff. So, like I said, it's going to be pretty busy for the next couple weeks and slash, you know, month or two. It's going to be a definite uh, culture change for the old Andy-san. You know, I've been out in Japan for... Uh, <clears throat> Two years, two plus years actually. I came out here uh, Memorial Day, which is like late May of 2013. So June, July, August will be like two years and three months ish. Uh, I also wanted to um, talk to you guys about uh, something that's been coming up in the comments for both YouTube and uh, Facebook, and that is. You know, something to the effect of, are you going to miss Japan? You know, are you going to come back to Japan? Are you going to come back to live in Japan? You know, something of the like. And to that, you know, at the time of this recording, I don't have any uh, definite plans to come back to Japan as of yet. I don't have anything lined up. But I definitely do want to come back to Japan. And of course I'm going to miss Japan. You know, I've, you know, living out here is been a dream come true for me, you know, visiting this this country and living in this country as well, um, and getting to meet so many wonderful people, you know, that I originally knew on YouTube and get to meet them in person, in real life, and, uh, you know, people ranging from up-and-coming YouTubers to YouTubers that I've watched for years back when I was still living in the States and you know, getting to hang out with them and stuff and it's just been, like I said, a dream come true, nothing less. And you know, of course I'm going to miss all that, but you know, with the power of the internet, we're not really too far away, I guess. You know, there's always Facebook, there's always YouTube, of course, unless they die off eventually, but who knows. But you guys know what I mean. We're always connected, even if we're thousands of miles away. Like, and I told my mom the news this morning. You know, I was t I was calling her on the phone. We have this, you know, on, on Skype, and uh, you know, she's thousands of miles away. So you know, we're always connected by the great circle of the internet. <laughs> so you know, I'm not gonna be too far away. And, uh, yeah, so obviously I'm going to miss Japan, and I do want to come back, 
I don't have any plans to come back as of yet. But if I do decide to come back, you know, more than just like a holiday visit or something like that, I want to live in either the Kansai area, you know, that's Kobe, Kyoto, Osaka, that general facility, uh, vicinity, <laughs> or um, the Kyushu area, which is like Fukuoka and stuff like that. So um, both areas look great. Um, personally, I'm kind of favoring uh, Fukuoka in the Kyushu area as a place to live because it's a lot like Kanagawa which is the prefecture that Yokosuka is. You know, it's very much like a beach town, very, you know, ocean-centric. And what can I say? I love the water. So I joined the Navy instead of the Army. Well. <laughs> so, um, yeah, those would be the places that I want to um, live at if I were to come back to Japan on a uh, working basis. So, yeah, you know, it's uh, it's gonna be gonna be pr pretty busy for the old Andy San. Um, I'll keep you guys posted with further updates as I, you know, hear about them and things like that. But as far as videos go, I definitely want to uh, start recording as much as I can during the short time that I have left and uh, get them up if I can. But. You know, considering the compressed time timeline, you know, that I have left in Japan, you know, the videos may not be released until after I'm back in the States. You know, it's just, it is what it is, but that's okay. Um, so, <laughs> in closing, I'm pretty nervous about the whole thing, especially considering it's 10 days away, holy crap. <laughs> Uh, but I'm also really excited, you know, like obviously I'll miss Japan coming out to Japan has been a dream of mine since I was like five years old And my cousins were out here And you know my cousins and I were really close At that time and for them to you know leave the country to go to the other side of the world back in the early 90s Where we didn't have the internet really Not the internet that we know of today it was like they pretty much, you know, went to the other side of the planet, basically. And they did, you know, literally. <laughs> but, you know, it was like they were on a whole different world. And, you know, I would always get, you know, messages and stuff from them. You know, like actual, you know, letter mail back when that was a thing. And they would send me stuff. And it was just, it piqued my interest so much. And to 20 some odd years later be able to get a chance to live in, in the same area even as they did so many years ago has been nothing short of a dream come true. And you know, I'm gonna miss the area, I'm gonna miss the, the people, you know, the locals, the people on my ship, people I've met, not only during my time in the Navy here in Yokosuka, but also, you know, even, elsewhere you know just people I met in the Navy in general um, all my YouTube friends that I got to meet in real life out here and I miss them as well and uh, it's gonna be hard I'm not gonna lie I'm not really a, you know one of those mushy touchy-feely types I'm very you know kind of stoic I guess but you know this is it's gonna be hard for me and uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, before I get even more rambly than I already have, better sign off. So yeah, this is the Andy Sun signing off for now. Thanking you guys for tuning into this video and watching my other stuff. And if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe. Shit. And uh, don't forget to like the videos, the thumbs, comment, and uh, send a few friends to the party more than welcome and uh, as always we'll see you next time catch you later guys bye all right and we're recording hey gang andy here coming at you book with my august 2015 update video for you guessed it august 2015 woo so this is an especially um momentous uh, month for me i guess you could say a lot of stuff going on in both the uh, youtube land as well as my own personal life so um as usual with these uh monthly updates like i said i go through the youtube stuff as well as 
most personal life stuff. And I got all my notes off to the side, as per usual. So uh, here we go. And if I'm a bit louder than normal, it's because I'm a trifle deaf in this ear from last night's concert. So anyway, let's begin. And we'll start off with the youtube -y stuff. And speaking of concert, um, I saw We The Kings live at uh, Yokosuka yesterday. Uh, they came on base to do a, uh, just kind of like an MWR sort of event. And uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I got to meet Charles. Charles Trippy. <laughs> so I've been following Charles since pretty much the beginning of YouTube, really. Um, I remember him from a uh, little internet series called Who Wants to Be the Next Internet Millionaire, hosted by Joel Com. This was back in, shoot, like 2005, 2006-ish. So I'm not quite up to like, you know, following him on MySpace hipster territory, but it's pretty close. And, you know, I've just been a fan of his for the longest time. And, you know, to get to meet him in person was a really good experience. And I thought, you know, the guy's a literal rock star. So, you know, I figured he was gonna be all either super, super excited to see me or just be like, yeah, whatever kid, get lost. <laughs> but he was a real, you know, down to earth guy. And I really appreciate that. And I wish I would've got some video or a picture with them in hindsight but uh, <clears throat> I, I forgot about the, those things especially when he's surrounded by a bunch of you know prepubescent girls and stuff so it was kind of awkward I was just like yeah I just want to say hi you know been watching your stuff for a while really like what you do and that was pretty much it oh he signed my bus pass too so I'll let you guys have a look at that real quick see he signed my bus pass it was literally the only thing I had on me at the time. <laughs> I was totally not prepared for like him signing anything, so yeah. So anyway, yeah, the concert went great. Met Charles, good stuff. Um, as far as the release times for the concert and stuff, um, what I'm planning on doing, because I'm actually mixing it at the time of this recording, is um, I'm gonna release it in its entirety as like a whole concert, and then uh, I'm also going to release it by song. So if you just wanna listen to a particular song or whatever that's fine and uh, I'll upload it by song but that'll be after I release the entire concert so if you just want to watch the concert in its entirety you can do that and you can also watch it song by song that'll come later uh, let's see next on the list is the Yokosuka Friendship Day fireworks so um, <clears throat> this is a bit unplanned um, so literally as soon as I walked in the door um, after the We the Kings concert um, just sat my bag down, you know, I took off my shoes, sat my bag down, I heard these loud booms, and I'm like, oh shit, the fireworks! And I totally, like, it slipped my mind, the whole thing with the fireworks festival, because uh, yesterday was also Friendship Day, which is uh, one of the few times out of the year that the uh, Yokosuka Naval Base opens up to the public. So everybody can come in and get a little taste of Americana and whatnot, and, um, yeah, it was a real fun event. It gets really crowded in there though, but uh, this year was a little less crowded, or at least it was better managed uh, than previous events. So I, I had a good time. Nice, hot, sweaty, good old fun. So anyway, um, as soon as I got home, I heard the fireworks. I had to like quickly set up everything and I didn't get my camera time enough to charge. So I'm like, oh God, this thing's gonna die. So I get it all set up on the tripod, uh, recording fireworks and stuff. And I took a couple pictures on my camera, but I'm really not that good at taking pictures of fireworks. So there might only be like two or three, you know, usable shots. But you know, I was also busy taking pictures of the moon, which uh, was a nice blood red that particular night. So a lot of those pictures are gonna be up on Instagram. And uh, for those of you who aren't following my in on Instagram, it's uh, instagram.com slash So sure to follow for cool pictures and whatnot. So uh, next on the list is my Yokosuka beer review. Uh, at the time of this recording, it's all finished up, ready to go, and it should be uploaded this week. So in the beer review, it was just kind of like a one-off. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep on doing it, you know, especially since I'm gonna be moving back to the States, but there is a big uh, burgeoning craft beer scene out there. So it may be a recurring thing. I don't know quite yet, but uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. You know, give me some tips because this is a fairly new uh, territory for me, the whole, you know, let's eat, let's drink kind of thing. So if you guys have any tips or, you know, you want to see a particular 
uh, food or beer or something like that when I'm back in the States, you know, be sure to uh, let me know in the comments below down in the boopity boop or send me a personal message. As I always say, I read all the comments and I read all the personal messages. So anyway, like I said, the Yokosuka beer review um, episode will be out uh, sometime this week, uh, probably early this week actually. And uh, so look forward to that. Next up is uh, Yokosuka Port Market. So it's a it's a, uh, a really good video. Uh, it's still currently in the editing process. I got some B-roll and stuff I want to incorporate. And uh, for those of you who've been following me for a long time, you know that I'm not really <laughs> all that familiar with using B-roll footage. So I may or may not use it, but I do have it. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, this is going to be a slightly newer uh, editing style than what I'm usually used to, which is you know clip, 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 that sort of thing. But uh, look forward to it. It'll be out either this week or next. And uh, next up on the list is Sarashima, also known as Monkey Island. So once again, for those of you who follow me on Instagram, instagram.com slash theandysan, gotta plug that. <laughs> You'll know that uh, a lot of my pictures are of Sarashima, which is an island uh, about a kilometer or so away from uh, mainland uh, Yokosuka. So um, I take a lot of pictures of it just because I think it's really cool looking and stuff. And uh, this video was the first time I actually went to the island. Um, for one reason or another, I just never really got around to visiting the island. And uh, it was a lot of fun. It was actually an old um, military battery. Military forces would be stationed out there, you know, during you know World War II and even much earlier than that. And uh, they would basically, it would basically be like a frontline defense for, you know, incoming ships before they get to the mainland. So um, it was really cool to see all the old uh, military uh, relics and stuff from days past. So definitely look forward to that video. And it'll be kind of an homage to uh, one of my YouTube inspirations, Kurt Bell, also known as Softy Papa. So, you know, stay tuned for that. <laughs> Uh, let's see, next up is my Yokosuka daytime tour. So, um, when I first got my GoPro, I did uh, a Yokosuka nighttime tour, more accurately described as a like an afternoon to night tour, just because the sun set pretty quickly. So, um, I'm going to be doing a, uh, a slightly different variation of that tour, but it is kind of a long video, so it most likely won't be released until you know later in the month, depending on free time and whatnot, which we'll get to here in a sec. And also, um, I'm going to be, when I get back to the States, I'm going to be releasing some old lost footage of uh, my time here in Japan. So I've recorded a couple um, basic rough layouts for episodes and stuff like that. And it's basically just stuff I never got around to editing or just episodes that I thought were just kind of so-so or whatever. So um, that'll be coming out once I get back to the States, among other things and uh, stuff like that. So next on the list is First Impact Anime. So um, First Impact Anime, as well as my Let's Play channel, Andy Cade, uh, will be on hiatus until I move back to the States and get myself all settled up in uh, Michigan. So um, apologies for the delays and whatnot for that, but there's been a lot of uh, stuff going on in my personal life, so I haven't really had the time to get around to editing those episodes and whatnot. So, um, once again, sorry about that, and look forward to uh, future episodes. So, with that said, um, now that we've finished up all the youtube -y stuff, let's get into uh, some personal life stuff. So, um, lots to talk about here, actually, like almost over almost 11 minutes in at the time of uh, uh, this uh, raw capture here. So, um, as of today, uh, August 2nd, 2015, I have five days left in the United States Navy and uh, Japan as well. So I'm gonna be uh, exiting the United States Navy on August 7th, 2015, which is also the day that I'm gonna be moving back to the States. So um, I'm really nervous about the whole thing because it's gonna be a major, uh, major culture shift for me because I've been in the, the uh, US Navy for over five years now. And uh, it's going to be a bit of a shift for me to not just, you know, go back to the States to visit, but to live there again. And not as a member of the Navy, as a civilian again. 
so uh, it's gonna be a major major shift for me I'm not gonna be getting that sweet Navy paycheck um, so I'll have to uh, budget accordingly so I'll go back to being a poor college student um, so that's gonna be a, a major culture shift for me but um, really nervous about it but I'm also really excited and really looking forward to uh, the new chapter in my life and uh, stuff like that so um, now I know that there's a lot of uh, people out there who watch me for my Japan videos and you know that's fine but what happens to a lot of uh, youtubers when they come out to Japan is you know they tend to you know make a YouTube channel and be like oh my god I'm going to Japan it's great yeah <laughs> And then they get out here and they, you know, make a lot of videos and do a lot of good things. And then the, the problem is when they get back to their home country is that, you know, they often do like the post Japan video, which is maybe like one or two videos. They're like, oh, I'm sad. I'm back in my home country. I'm not in Japan anymore. Life sucks. And then they just stop making videos. And it's kind of sad that that happens, but it does happen for one reason or another. But, you know, you guys don't have to worry about me. I'm not going anywhere. I'm really looking forward to making more videos back in the States, you know, of my area in not only my hometown of Salina, Ohio, but also up in Kalamazoo, Michigan, where I'm going to be going to college at for uh, computer information systems will be my major up at Western Michigan University. So um, it's going to be a lot of fun. There's definitely a lot to see out in Kalamazoo. And I hope you guys uh, tune in to my future adventures out there and stuff like that. And I'm also kind of planning on some other surprises further down the line. So uh, <laughs> look forward to that as well. So um, before I get too rambly and stuff, um, this will probably be, actually it probably won't, <laughs> this will be uh, my last uh, update video here in uh, Japan, my last monthly update video anyway. Um, I'll keep you guys posted, you know, as I'm moving and stuff like that, and there will be the, the big goodbye Japan video and stuff like that. But uh, as far as like my regular monthly update videos, this will be my last one in Japan. So. Kind of an end of an era, as it were. And also be my last one as a member of the United States Navy. So again, end of an era. But um, it's also the beginning of a new era, the beginning of a new chapter in my life. So um, once again, I look forward to you guys uh, sticking with me as I continue on my adventure in life. And before I get too rambly and too uh, sentimental and uh, all that stuff, better sign off. So yeah, this is the Andy Sign. Signing for now. Thanking you guys, boo, once again for uh, watching this video and watching my other stuff. And uh, I also want to thank you guys for liking, for the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. I'm making food. And I'm drunk. Mm, not really. Kind of. Sort of. Go cart? Yeah. Sturridge. Yeah, cart, buddy. I'm stirring. Let's get to the spot and my voice is almost completely gone. Wow. Wow. Boobies. Oh, my God. 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 O
this off real quick. I can't stir the cheese. I can't stir the cheese. Oh, my hair's a mess. Holy shit. Hey, mine too. It's okay. You have shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> I need more of this. Cheers, Phoenicians. Or Indians. Indians. What do you call yourself? Lovelies? Lovelies. Oh, ah. God. Oh, God. It's bubbling. Oh, God. It's bubbling. It's bubbling. Oh, snibble snaps. <laughs> what the hell? I don't know. What? <laughs> 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 Sorry, my husband needs a hug right now. I'm sorry. Uh, right. You'll make okay. someone a beautiful waifu someday. Oh, <laughs> I am a professional waifu. Um, I actually get paid for it. Are you actually stirring? Yeah, okay. Stir it, baby. Stir it. Yeah. Seriously. I Last. 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 You are cut off from the hunt punch. Ah, <laughs> okay, here. Okay. Okay, okay. It's okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, just relax, I breathe. Just breathe, honey, just breathe. All right. Just breathe in, just breathe in. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Breathe in. Breathe in. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yes. I have to sit down. <laughs> yeah. He uh, you guys. Okay. Uh, no, I actually used to work in a kitchen, so. Oh. Oh, I, can do, I can do this wrong. He's a professional. I am a professional. <laughs> um, genuinely, I don't know what was so funny about what was going on earlier. I don't know. Bro. Okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna... Oh my god. Oh my god. Tears. Namida. <laughs> There's no video of that. I'm going to be disappointed. Oh, of course it's gonna be video. Okay. What kind of two-bit operation do you think I'm running here? Japan Man 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 Man. I don't know where this name is coming from. Nobody else says Man 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 Man. So, is that just something you came up with? No, man. Have you, have you, you remember, uh, all that? Oh, God. No. Oh, wait, no. you're Canadian. So there's an American show. I was just like to say, okay, no, fuck you. Uh, we get all the American shows, but you know. But did you get all that? It's possible, but I might not have watched it. I'm okay. busy watching Saved by the Bell. Oh, okay. That's okay. a good show, so I forgive you. What is this? The size of oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I'm troubling your foot. Oh, this my God. Cool. No, I you, don't know what the hell this is. I'm you're, you're, you're you're good. Good. This is cheese grits. This is like super oh. cheese grits. I stirred okay, I'm just, the cheese. I've, I've had grits, but I've never had them. It's, it's good. Dude, it's so southern, you yes. have to sell your soul to eat it. Yes. Southerners. <laughs> Don't add all the spice I do. Okay. That's true. I've never had cheese. spice before. I mean, you can eat it. I feel like I've already been so much. What the fuck am I doing? Why did I hit the button? I don't know, dude. I fucking hit the button. Are you trying to get the goddamn X button already? It's okay. This thing's got friggin' professional, uh, like, stabilization. So I'm good. I'm G to G. I'm D to C. Good to go. Down to clown. With all the yutubbers. You're gonna have to edit this a lot. Because here's a here's an annotation for my channel. Yeah, and her here's channel. Here's an annotation for her channel. Here's an annotation for her channel. Yes. Hey guys. Have fun editing. What's up? Get out of my kitchen. <laughs> okay. Back to the living room. You heard the lady. We gotta get out of the kitchen. Yeah, she's only released the subtitles. She's released the drugs. I've released the drugs. Jesus. Because I made this. Yes, yes, okay. Oh, got, Second batch. I'm also slightly a little bit slithered in it. I'm holding this in my hand. Big move on that. Yeah, yeah. That jungle log. Oh, 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 oh. oh, God. 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 Oh, that's a shit set. That means I came when I did my job. Zach can't even handle right now. Zach can't even handle right now. 
Okay. Um, on that side, can I just say you have the most adorable ringlets on the back of your head? <laughs> What's your deal? Oh, you mean my hair? Yeah. There's a little like. You're, you're, same hair What is <laughs> You're like Shirley Temple. Yeah. Wow. Who's vlogging at me? Vlogging at you. Vlog sex. I know. <laughs> Oh yeah, my, my hands are all sticky right now. Right? Oh, yeah. That's what he said. I think I did a good job with stuff that's slimy and everything. Sure uh, did. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, and here, coming at you with part two of my August 2015 update. Ooh. So yeah, um, this is just going to be a short little video uh, letting you guys know basically what's been going on with me lately and all that kind of stuff. So as you can see, I'm still, still here in Yokosuka, Japan, but I thought you were getting out on August 7th. Why are you still here, Andy? Good question, audience. <laughs> so um, basically, what had happened was, um, I originally thought that August 7th was my uh, flyout date, and uh, turns out when uh, I got to talking to admin, that was just my like due date for giving my paperwork and everything. So I was like, <laughs> they got me all rushed around for pretty much nothing, <laughs> really, because I already had my paperwork already done. So I was just like, <sighs> the crap because I was like worried about um, you know getting a pack out date and all this other stuff taken care of before I head back home so um, yeah <laughs> so um, as of this recording um, I've already submitted all my paperwork um, it's, my separation package has been routed up through the chain of command um, just need two more signatures from you know two big powers that be and uh, once that's done, I'll get my page 13 uh, properly corrected and everything, sign it, send it off to PSD, which is the uh, processing uh, facility for you know, processing me out of the Navy. And then once they give their little blessing and stuff, then uh, send it back to me with uh, orders to out process at either San Diego or Washington State. Most likely Washington State, that's where they've been sending uh, people lately. So that's just what I've noticed. So um, I'll be there uh, for about seven to 10 days doing the out processing thing, things like that. So yeah, and then from there back home and then from home to college, hopefully. But uh, it is getting, you know, kind of late in the month, so um, there is a strong possibility that I might have to uh, push a semester uh, before I can start college. So I might actually end up starting uh, my college time at Western Michigan up in Kalamazoo um, uh, for spring semester. So it would be January of 2016 as opposed to, you know, September 2015. So. Um, I'm not officially calling it yet because, uh, you know, I'm still holding out hope that, you know, I might be able to make it in time, but, uh, right now it's, uh, it's looking very unlikely I'll be able to start, uh, in the fall as originally planned, but we'll see, we'll see. I'm continuing to look for houses and cars and things like that, so, um, hopefully I can get something arranged, and, you know, even if, uh, even if I don't end up going this semester, you know, waiting till next semester may not be so bad. You know, I'll have more time to, you know, not only get reacclimated to civilian life, but I'll also have, you know, more time to find a place, find a car, so I'm not scrambling around, you know, oh, I gotta get a car because, you know, you know, school's coming up and I gotta get a place because school's coming up and then, you know, I gotta hurry, you know? <laughs> so I, I don't wanna get too desperate involved involving stuff like that so um it may be best to wait who knows but uh, we'll see what happens but that's basically where i'm at right now um i'll keep you guys uh posted with further updates you know once i get you know more word um please you know if you haven't already follow me on twitter at the andy uh for more frequent updates i tend to update there a lot you know not only for Instagram stuff, but you know, for when my videos come out and just other random life updates and things like that. So, be the first to know. And uh, as far as YouTube -y stuff goes, um, I got one video already waiting to be sent out, and it's actually going to be up um, the day after this video comes out. 
So um, it's my visit to the Yokosuka Port Market, which is kind of like a basic Japanese market, but it's more like uh, like a sea market, like a fish market basically. But it has some other things in it too. It's kind of a, a mixture between like a regular supermarket and a fish market. It's, it's pretty interesting. I think you guys will like it. So um, can't wait to get that out. And uh, as far as making more videos, um, I definitely want to do you know some more videos before I end up you know eventually leaving here. You know I definitely want to go back up to Tokyo and uh, record some stuff, do some things. You know, record videos that I've wanted to record, you know, since I got here. But, you know, for one reason or another, just never got around to doing it, you know. So, uh, just look forward to more stuff like that before I finally do end up, you know, heading on out. And, um... Also, you know, I am going to be continuing to record and you know, want to get back to the States as well. Just because, you know, I'm not in Japan doesn't mean there's nothing interesting to be had out in Michigan or anywhere else in America, you know. Um, one of the best uh, lessons that I got from YouTube is from uh, my friend Kurt Bell, also known as Softy Papa online, is that um, when I was stuck doing YouTube videos a long, long time ago, many years back, before I came out to Japan, way before I, I came out to Japan, I was stuck and I put out a little video asking, you know, hey, what should I do? I don't know. <laughs> I don't really have anything else to talk about. My life isn't really all that interesting. The, the area that I live at is, you know, bumfuck Egypt. There's really nothing to talk about here. And, um... Kurt sent a message to me privately on YouTube, and he may have commented, it's it's been a couple years, I don't remember offhand, but he, he mentioned that, uh, you know, just because you've been living in this area, you're used to all these things, so they're not very interesting to you. So, um, for somebody who hasn't, you know, lived where you've lived, and stuff like that, it may be very interesting to them to see how, you know, American life is, how Ohio life is, you know, some of the landmarks in your hometown may be interesting to them and stuff like that. So I'm, I was kind of skeptical about the idea at first, but then I started, you know, doing a couple videos around my hometown showing some landmarks, you know, like the lighthouse and the lake and, you know, stuff like that. And uh, it kind of caught on with me because, you know, it was kind of, you know, in the style of J vlogs at the time, which is basically showing off, you know, landmarks in Japan. You know, it's like, hey guys, I'm at this temple, or hey guys, I'm at this place, and stuff like that, except you were doing it in your hometown. So, um, there's that. So, um, for those of you who, you know, have come out to Japan doing the J vlog thing and stuff like that, and then if you're eventually faced with the, you know, reality of going back to your home country, wherever it may be, you know, and you're thinking, well, you know, my home country isn't really all that interesting. There's really not a whole lot to talk about. It's just kind of ho-hum, whatever. You know, it may be ho-hum to you because you're used to it and you grew up there. But for somebody like me or other people who've never seen the country or never seen your town or your state or wherever you live, you know, it may be very interesting and, you know, <laughs> just my two cents on the matter. So, you know, just keep on making videos. Keep on making fun, interesting videos. Don't quit. And with that said, this is the Andy Son. Sign up for now. Thanking you guys for tuning into this video and watching my other stuff. And I also want to thank you guys for liking, the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, coming at you boop, with my August 2015 update video, part three, or part three. <laughs> Pardon my French. Ooh. <laughs> anyway, um, I just want to make this this quick little update video to let you guys know what's been going on with me for the past uh, couple weeks or so, and to give you guys an update, you know, before uh, <clears throat> before the month of September rolls around and I have more things to update you guys with. So, um, just today I came back from my last ever underway as a member of the United States Navy. So it's kind of a kind of a bittersweet moment, you know, being that's my last underway and stuff. So. Um, that was a pretty short one, it was only a couple days, nothing too major, but um, <clears throat> kind of a bittersweet moment in that, you know, I was 
you know, standing sonar watch for the last time ever. So, eh, you know, it is what it is. A little more sweet than bitter, but you know, it's whatever. And uh, also underway, I don't know if you guys noticed, but uh, I'm a little under the weather right now. So, um, apologies for all the sniffing and the coughing you're probably gonna hear on this update, you know, my apologies. But I still wanted to get this video out to let you guys know what's been going on. And yes, you know, I am taking, I am drinking my fluids and getting plenty of rest and, you know, taking vitamin C and all that stuff. So you don't have to worry. I just gotta, just gotta hang in there for the next couple days. I should be uh, good to go. So anyway, <coughs> excuse me. Like I said, I just want to give you guys a little update on what's going on before September rolls around. And I'll have more to say uh, come September, but you know, put a little update video out there to close up the month. So anyway, rambling on. <laughs> uh, give you guys an update on my separation package. Um, Cap approved it a couple days ago, and it's been sent off ship to Big Navy out in Millington, Tennessee, where I'll get my uh, flyout orders fly out time to out process in, uh, in Washington or San Diego but I've heard most likely Washington is the main out processing station so <clears throat> from there so I'll be flying basically from Japan to Washington for out processing for about a week or so and then from there back home to Ohio now um, considering that uh, I'm, I'll be getting out of the Navy a bit you know after my uh, first planned uh, semester at Western Michigan is um, I'm gonna have to get with my uh, with the college the VA coordinator and uh, try to reschedule me for um, <clears throat> for uh, the next semester the spring semester of 2016 so because like I said I'll be getting back to the States a little past you know when people are going back to school so uh, I won't be able to to attend in the uh, fall like I originally planned. So I'm a little bummed about it, but at the same time, <clears throat> you know, I think it'll be good for me to get a little bit of a break in between, you know, leaving the Navy and starting school. It'll allow me to kind of, you know, get back into the civilian mindset and just, you know, rest, relax, recuperate. It's been a long five years, you know. <laughs> gotta, gotta rest the old body, take care of myself get myself back into working order, you know. Um, my folks recently joined a, a gym, it's called, uh, what's it called, like Snap Fitness or something like that. <clears throat> it's basically like a 24 hour uh, gym where you, they basically just give you a key and then you can, you know, go into the gym anytime you want, day or night, whatever. So it's pretty cool. And you know, they've been kind of getting back on the whole health kick again, so I'm really proud of them. And uh, I'm definitely going to be joining up with them, you know, going to workouts and stuff like that when I get back. So I can hopefully lose some, some damn chubbage, you know what I'm saying? So, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, kind of a terrible update video, I apologize, but it's whatever. So, anyway, what this means is I uh, won't be starting school for another three, four months after I get back. So I'll have a lot of free time on my hands. So, um... Hoping to work on a lot of stuff that was in the, that's in the archives, just kind of sitting there, you know. Whether it's um, old First Impact anime stuff, which uh, you know I can't wait to start working on again. I kind of kind of took a little sneak peek at uh, some of the old stuff just to kind of get myself in the mood for it. And I'm just like, man, I <laughs> I can't wait. You know, it's it's good stuff. Then uh, as well as some stuff that I filmed out in Japan and things like that that. I just never got around to uh, to making videos for and just little stuff that I forgot about and kind of sat in the archives for a while so little odds and ends and things like that that you know I can't wait to show you guys so stay tuned for that and uh, yeah as far as uh, my separation and stuff goes um, I should be in theory I should be back in Ohio around like maybe mid-September, around 15th, 16th-ish, you know, ish. <laughs> Very much TBD, but um, we'll see what happens. Um, 
I'm a lot more uh, positive about the situation now that I've gone through the whole chain of command. You know, the, the separation package is out there. Just gotta wait on Big Navy to come back. So I'm a little, a little more hopeful for it now. So um, I should get word back uh, later on this week. And then once I do, I'll start scheduling my pack out so I can get all this stuff all packed up and ready to go and uh, just take it from there, you know? So, <coughs> we'll see what happens. And uh, I'll keep you guys posted as uh, as I learn more. But, as, as you guys can tell, I'm a little sick as fuck right now. So, uh, I'm just gonna go, uh, go chillax now, drink some more water and whatnot. And with that said, this is the Amazon. Signing up for now, thinking you guys, Pook, for joining me on this sickly, rambly, incoherent update video, and for uh, for watching my other stuff. Also, want to thank you guys for liking, the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Take it easy, guys. Bye. <coughs> Bye. What's up, Andy Sands? My name is Phoenix Today 7. But y'all know me as Zach, the drunk ass motherfucker with titties. Yeah. With his titties. Yeah. Today I'm drinking a big wave called a nail. Thank you. Kampai. Kampai indeed. And also, I'm doing dishes. Yeah. Okay, I'll fix my gate later. There is no cheese for me to stir today, unfortunately. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Alright. That's Jess. Jess made hunch punch. Hunch punch. I have so many good drinks. Holy titties, Jess. I don't want to drink. I've got my legs exposed. Oh, oh, oh. Look, they're cute. Ishii, Ishii. Look. Look. Lovely. Yeah. Okay. I, I had to get that this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my daughter loves that, that game. That, that angle really? is so weird, Zach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this dog. Me That's too. That's where her zombie addiction. My good tits. My good tits. It sounds like just giant tits. Like my good tits. My good tits. I was supposed to say something. Um, All right, okay. is everybody in that's playing? I'll so go ahead, go ahead, say the thing. Say the thing. How do you actually play this? Just feel It'll like explain. Jess. It's not gonna work. It's not listening. Oh, yeah, yeah. You have to. Actually. It's just a wasted. Noodles. I need an internet. You gotta hide it. Noodles. You did. It didn't work. No noodles. I don't want. It's a it's a euphemism for penis. Hand it to me. I'll yeah. Only wet noodles. Nice game. What what am I doing? Bakudo. You uh Jess. No. No. We don't mention that name. I know. Oh, I'm supposed to be saying something too. Yes. Jess, I'm so like happy that you stuffed me with your meat Price. today. Was it spicy? Yeah. Yes, quite. Is it like this? Don't get hot, buddy, dear. I'm a yeah. little bit flustered, but I'll be all right. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> cute, cute. Enjoyed? Tell you. Rather. Yeah, actually, Jolly, 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 jolly good. 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 Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you book, with my September 2015 update video for, you guessed it, September 2015. Woo. So yeah, um, as always with my monthly update videos, we're going to be going over some YouTube stuff as well as some personal life stuff. But before we begin, i got to mention some things. So, um, the chair that I'm sitting on right now is, has a bit of a squeaking problem, so apologies beforehand. Um, I kind of got it locked in a nice little position to where a little back and forth movement and stuff like that doesn't really make it squeak as much but uh, it may come out in the uh, in the audio so I'm just giving you guys a heads up beforehand so apologies and uh, another thing is um, I'm I typically f uh, record these uh, update videos on my Sony Alpha 5100 camera but the uh, the difference between this video and my other stuff is uh, I'm using the uh, big lens that I normally use for photography so that's the uh, SEL 18-200 lens so and I also have a, uh, a lens filter on it as well so um, the thing about the lens filter is it's a uh, it's what's called a polarized uh, lens filter so it's a lot like uh, polarized sunglasses to where you don't see like glare on the water or anything like that and uh, as a bespeckled youtuber 
um, I've noticed that it reduces a lot of glare in my glasses and that's why in a lot of my videos especially like these little updated videos you don't see me with my glasses on just because I take them off because you know you get a lot of glare and stuff but with the, uh, the polarized lens filter it reduces it you can still see a little bit of glare depending on how I'm looking at the camera but uh, it's greatly reduced and it's not nearly as distracting as it used to be so if you're a, a bespeckled youtuber like myself it's definitely an, a worthy investment so check them out but enough talking shop let's uh, get ahead with these uh, these YouTube updates shall we so I'm gonna talk to the side here so we'll just kind of look through and uh, go through the, uh, the bullet points here so first up is my trip to uh, Enoshima so I took the, uh, the, the Shonan Enoshima monorail out to visit my friend Zach and uh, a bunch of other YouTubers as well. And uh, I just recorded a uh, kind of a long clip of my travels through uh, the Shonan Enoshima monorail. So uh, that's going to be coming out uh, in about a couple weeks, probably when I get back home, but more on that later. And uh, it's just going to be a nice, quiet little video. Just kind of kind of reminiscent of my uh, San Diego train ride videos. If you guys have seen them, check them out. So it's gonna be uh, that. And uh, next up on the list is my Yokosuka neighborhood tour. So um, I've done neighborhood tours before out here in uh, Yokosuka, Japan, but this will be my last one before I head out. So um, gonna make it count, you know. Just kind of kind of one for the road, as they say. So there's that. And next up is archives. So um, over the years, I've been out in Japan for like almost two and a half years now. And I've recorded a lot of different stuff. And most of it has made it on YouTube already. But there's a couple things that just didn't quite make the cut for whatever reason. Maybe, you know, it was just stuff that didn't really initially work out. And I figure, you know, since I'm going to be leaving soon, you know, try to put it together in some manner to uh, make it fit and uh, maybe make like a lost vlog episode or something like that. So, uh, different things that I got up here. Um, my visit to Namcha Town out in Ikebukuro and more specifically Ice Cream City. So, um, for those of you who've been watching uh, the J-Vlog scene for some time, you'll know that um, a lot of the early J-Vloggers, like Tokyo Kuni and the late great Roger Swan, visited this place called Ice Cream City. And it was basically like a, an ice cream emporium, but uh, it also has a lot of different uh, exotic flavors. And by exotic, I mean like weird or strange. So, like, uh, it has like your normal ice cream flavors, but also has like snacks. Uh, Snake, cow tongue, squid, octopus, curry flavored, just all kinds of weird like flavors you wouldn't normally associate with uh, with ice cream. So um, I decided to check it out and just kind of give like a uh, an updated version of uh, Ice Cream City compared to how it was with the uh, the old school J vloggers. So um, I recorded it on my cell phone about two years ago, so the quality is a little, mm, but. Uh, It'll still be kind of interesting to see just uh, how much has changed from, you know, then to now-ish. <laughs> so, there's that. And next on the list is my tour of Akihabara. So, um, I've done uh, tour videos of Akiba before, but uh, they were on my cell phone and the quality was, you know, again, kind of so-so. But uh, this time it was with my then new uh, Sony CX430V camcorder, which has the, you know, built-in stabilization and stuff like that. So it reduces a lot of the shakes and it makes for a, uh, a much smoother video. So uh, that's gonna be coming out fairly soon as well as uh, some extra bits from my real life Shenmue video that I recorded a couple years back. So for those of you who don't know, um, I recorded a tribute video to the late great Roger Swan and it was basically like a five year anniversary video to one of his uh, earlier Tokyo Swan videos where he visited uh, Yokosuka and did stuff like that. So I tried to, as best I could at the time, recreate, recreate a uh, shot for shot part for uh, his video, just kind of compare and contrast the different uh, 
places that he visited and just how it stands up, you know, five years later. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be coming out very soon. Um, but basically, like when I recorded it, um, there was a lot of extra stuff that just didn't quite make the cut. You know, just a lot of, a lot of little bits and pieces here on bass and stuff like that. So I'm hoping to uh, put them together and uh, make like a lost video or something like that. Just, just to see, you know, some extra bits. So, um, and the last one from the archives is an acoustic demo. So, um, I bought some parts for my acoustic guitar and I wanted to do like a uh, compare and contrast or like a before and after kind of video just to see how these parts affect the tone and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I bought all these different parts, but only I could only use like two of them. So I was a little disappointed, so I ended up shelving it for a bit. But I decided to kind of, you know, cobble it together and make some sense of a video. And it'll be a nice little lost vlog for you guys to enjoy, if anything. So definitely check it out. So um, next up on the list are my last videos out here in Japan. So I went to the summer YouTube J Vlog J Vlogger Meetup. And uh, it was out in uh, Tokyo Sport Club or Tokyo Sport Cafe or Club or something like that. But anyway, it was out in uh, Roppongi in Tokyo, and I uh, met up with a lot of different YouTubers. You know, a lot of up-and-coming guys. You know, people I've met before and hung out with, as well as you know the the more famous YouTubers. You know, <laughs> the ones with all the subscribers and you know stuff like that. So, um, I did some bits with them and stuff like that. So that's going to be coming out very soon depending on my moving schedule and whatnot. I'm gonna to try to get it out as fast as I can but you know how things go so um, definitely definitely check that one out because you know it's, it was a lot of fun going there and uh, it was uh, a good way to send me off in style you know going back to the States and uh, Next video up is uh, my move from Japan back to Ohio, which uh, at the time of this recording hasn't been uh, recorded yet because I'm obviously still here in, uh, in Yokosuka, Japan. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to be uh, recording, you know, my last little moments in Japan, you know, me clearing out my apartment and stuff like that, which I'm going to start doing once, uh, once I'm done with this video. And uh, yeah, it's going to be like my... You know, my chronicling of, you know, packing my apartment, like I said, as well as, you know, the flight back to the States and getting out of the military and stuff like that. So um, I'll talk about that more in the personal section, but uh, it's definitely going to be an uh, interesting, uh, very emotional experience for sure. And, uh, you know, on... <clears throat> Going off of that, um, there's going to be a new focus for my channel because, you know, a lot of you guys know me as, you know, the guy that talks about the Navy stuff, you know, the Navy guy, or, you know, talk stuff, the guy that talks about uh, Japan stuff, you know, the Japan guy. So, um, I'm not really going to be doing so much of that anymore. I'm, I'll still talk about the Navy and Japan and stuff like that from time to time, but that's not going to be the main focus of my channel. So, uh, what I plan on doing, at least for the time being, is going back to more of the uh, A Life in Video series, which is basically what Andy, Japan Andy Japandi is, but it's more Japan-centric rather than just, you know, whatever. So I'll be showing off a lot of things, not only in my hometown of Slyne, Ohio, but also in Kalamazoo, Michigan, where I'm going to be going to college at, at Western Michigan. Waster. <laughs> So um, definitely look forward to that, and I also want to do like some road trips and things like that, just to show you guys uh, different parts of Michigan, different parts of Ohio. You know, go up to Chicago or something for the weekend, just you know, have fun and uh, kind of see the differences in Chicago between you know when I first went out there back in 2010, when I was uh, just getting out of boot camp and stuff, versus now. You know, over five years later, actually. So it'll be a real trip, and also be a nice little uh, fun trip through memory lane, you know, getting some Chicago deep, sh deep dish style pizza, good stuff, and stuff like that. And maybe I'll do uh, road trips where I go a bit further out, but uh, I'll have to wait for the summer for stuff like that, if it's even possible, you know, depending on money situations and stuff like that. So uh, we'll see what happens. And uh, uh, like I said, um, I'm going to be shifting my focus from 
you know, the Japan stuff and the Navy stuff to, you know, more travel style videos and things like that. But um, just because I'm going to be shifting my focus to that doesn't mean I won't talk about Japan or the Navy at all. Um, and I'm also, you know, really seriously uh, thinking about bringing back NFAX and just kind of doing a, like a life after the Navy kind of series. Because I was, I was really inspired by this guy named JT Suits on YouTube. I'll put, put a link in his channel down below in the boobie boops and, and stuff like that. And I was really inspired by his videos of, you know, his life after the military. So I'm thinking about, you know, kind of rebranding NFAX in that fashion as well. And just kind of talking about, you know, life life after the military as well as maybe talk about some stuff that I really couldn't necessarily talk about while I was in the military just because, you know, it may clash with uh, the Navy's viewpoint and stuff like that. So, you know, definitely, definitely look forward to that kind of stuff coming out uh, when I get back home. So, and last up on the uh, on the YouTube list, although technically not really YouTube-y per se, but it'll be the last thing we talk about before we move on to the personal section. And it's my Sleepy Cast Editor Manhunt audition. So, um, a while back I posted my submission to be the new Sleepy Cast Editor. It's my little audition uh, audio clip thingamadoobop. Um, I put it up on uh, my YouTube as well, so you can check it out. Just search like sleepy cast or something like that it's it's up there so check it out and uh stuff like that so um i'm really really uh excited for the uh for the audition and i hope it goes well um the deadline for the round one submissions because basically what they're doing is um they're doing it in like two rounds at least at the time of this recording so round one submission has already been sent out um, and if they make the cut for round two, you know, which I hope to make, um, then they'll send a longer audio clip and then I'll have to edit that down and then they'll kind of make the decision from there, hopefully. So, um, nervous, but, uh, really excited and hope to, uh, hope to become the new editor of Sleepy Cabin. But, you know, I don't want to, don't want to get my hopes up, but, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just hoping. <laughs> That was kind of redundant, but anyway. So, moving on to personal stuff. First up on the personal stuff is uh, is this week. So, um, this week of uh, you know September 6th through the 11th is gonna be my last week out here in Japan. So, um, it's, uh, it's kind of been a long time coming for me, you know, I've was kind of hoping I'd be back in the States a bit a bit sooner just so I could start college this semester, but uh, because of the delays in paperwork and stuff, not on my end, but on admin's end, you know how it goes, um, it got delayed for like almost a month now, actually. In fact, tomorrow will be a month <laughs> since I submitted my paperwork and everything, so yay. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah, so I officially got my... Uh, my fly out date and everything. So on the on September 10th, 2015, I'll be flying out of Japan, going to Washington State to begin the out process, processing, out processing from the military, and then from there back home to Salina, Ohio. So um, basically, the out processing uh, process, for lack of a better term, is uh, going to take about seven to ten days. So I'm hoping, you know, in the meantime between you know appointments and stuff like that that I'll be able to go out in Washington and get you know some cool video and stuff like that just to just to show you guys the area so you know hopefully we'll get something out of it but I'm not sure yet I've never been out that way so who knows but stay tuned so um and like I said um, not only is this my last week in Japan it's also my last week in the Navy well the last two weeks if you count out processing, but I digress. Anyway, so because of the uh, <clears throat> delays in paperwork, I start uh, at Western Michigan University on January 2016, rather than September 2015, this month. So I had to push it back a, a semester just because of the delay in paperwork and stuff like that. And uh, I was kind of mad about it at first, but then again, it does give me more time to find a place, get myself situated, uh, kind of, you know, rest a little bit, kind of get used to civilian life again, 
and to better prepare myself for the upcoming semester. So it's not a bad thing. It's just you know, a slight delay and who knows, maybe good for me. So um, yeah, that's pretty much all I got for, uh, for this month's update and hopefully before my camera explodes from the overheating, I'm gonna sign off. So yeah, this is Nandy san Sign up for now. Thanking you guys, Pook, for tuning in to this very rambly, roundabout sort of uh, update video and watching my other stuff. Also, want to thank you guys for liking, thumbs, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you with my September 2015 update video, part two. So yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a quick little update on my status for uh, flying back to the States. And uh, as of today, September 11th, 2015, uh, the movers came in and uh, they took all my stuff and it will be uh, scheduled to be shipped back to me in Ohio in uh, November. So for the next couple months, I'm pretty much gonna be living out of uh, a sea bag, a book bag, then another sea bag full of random bedding and stuff like that. So it's gonna be a little rough, but uh, it's only for a couple months and then I'll have all my stuff back, so yeah. So, um, I also got my uh, flight itinerary and everything like that for my flight to Washington to out process. I haven't gotten my uh, fly, fly out ticket yet to uh, back to Ohio, but uh, that's pretty much where I stand right now. So basically, um, still in my apartment here in lovely Yokosuka, it's nighttime, so <laughs> it's quite dark. But uh, anyway, I'm just basically gonna, get, gonna be uh, spending this weekend cleaning out the apartment. I'm in the spare bedroom right now, so if it looks a little different than my normal room, that's, that's why. So I'm just in here, so that way um, I have plenty of room to clean in my, uh, my main bedroom and all the other stuff. And then uh, this room is already pretty much clean so I'll just clean this one last and uh, so basically on the 14th I'm gonna be uh, doing my last little bits of checkout and stuff like that turning over the keys to the apartment and uh, on the 15th I'm gonna be getting on a plane out to uh, Washington State where I'm gonna begin the out process out processing process and uh, it's scheduled for about seven to ten days ten days max so I should be back in Ohio um, no later than September 25th 2015 <laughs> so uh, that's pretty much where I'm where I stand right now um, as things change I'll give you guys uh, more updates and stuff like that and uh, yes I am also chronicling the moving process which uh, once I'm back home in Ohio then uh, I'll uh, put together the video and put it out there for you guys. So, with that said, I'm going to go get some food. So, yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, with that said, this is the Andy San. Sign up for now. Thanking you guys for tuning into this uh, short ish little update video and watching my other stuff. Also, want to thank you guys for liking, the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Oh, yeah, let's get this out of the glare here. Okay. <clears throat> All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, coming at you with my September 2015 update video, part two. So yeah, uh, I just wanted to give you guys a quick little update to let you uh, know what I've been doing lately and what's going to be happening in the next, you know, week, maybe less, couple days. So right now I'm in lovely Seattle, Washington in the uh, Best Western Hotel. So I'm just kind of chilling for the night. I'm going to actually be going to bed soon after this, but I just, I just wanted to get a quick little video out before I lay down for the night. And uh, so I just want to tell you guys the news. So I, I kind of already said it actually. So um, yeah, I'm actually back in America now. So America, land of cheeseburgers and guns. Pew pew. So yeah, um, I've been out here in Washington going to TPU to uh, you know finish up the out processing process. And if you notice, my hair is a little bit longer than it normally is. I'm just kind of growing it out in anticipation of you know eventually 
getting out of the Navy. So, you know, at this point, I'm just kind of like, fuck it, you know, because, you know, I'm going to be leaving pretty soon anyway. So we'll get to that here in a sec. So, um, in the meantime, I spent the weekend out here in lovely Seattle, Washington. Um, recorded a lot of great videos and stuff like that that I hope to be getting out to you guys soon. Probably won't be out until I'm back home in Ohio, but uh, they are on the uh, the queue here. And I'm recording them on the, the same thing that I'm recording this on, my LG G4 phone. So it's my new American phone, and uh, I wanted to test out the uh, the camera on it because it has a built-in like balanced optical steady shot similar to my Sony, but just a lot more small scale. So I just wanted to see how that fares, you know, in video versus my main camera. So that would be interesting, and I'll also give you guys an idea of what it's uh, what it's capable of and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, like I said, back in America, so doing the out processing process. So um, if all things go to plan, you know, <laughs> fingers crossed. Hopefully nothing bad happens. But uh, judging from the uh, paperwork and everything that I've completed, you know, before I came back to the states, um, I should be coming back home to Ohio sometime this coming week. So I'm just finishing up my out-processing here, and uh, from there, I'm going to get uh, all my stuff and uh, hop on the next plane home. So um, pretty soon, I'll also put up an update video from when I'm actually back home, so there's that. And also, my Japan moving video will also be done, which will be the closeout for my Andy Japandi series. So there's going to be that. And it'll also give me some time to kind of kind of think of like a proper uh, like a proper closeout for the series I guess because you know it's it's been a series that I've wanted to do pretty much ever since I started YouTube really because a lot of the original J vloggers were my initial inspiration for for doing YouTube in the first place so to be able to go out to Japan and see what they've seen and then see new things and other things and you know get to meet with so many great fellow YouTubers and stuff like that was just it was just well as corny as it sounds a dream come true so you know I, I really am going to miss interacting with uh, with you guys in person but you know hey there's always YouTube, there's always Facebook, so it's a lot easier to catch up with people nowadays. So, there's that. And uh, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, so, in essence, um, I'm back in America. I'm gonna be, uh, I'm still making videos, still gonna continue to make videos. I have no plans on stopping anytime soon. So, there's that. And definitely look forward to more videos in the uh, the coming weeks and that's pretty much it really and with that said this is the Andy-san signing for now thinking you guys where's the camera Boop. <laughs> camera's over on this side now I, I'm used to pointing like straight because I'm pointing straight at the monitor now but it's actually like Boop. Boop. there you go <laughs> okay uh, anyway you gotta thank you guys for uh, watching this video and uh, my other stuff also want to thank you guys for liking with the thumbs commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party, and hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Okay. Arch. Cuatro. There you are. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, coming at you with my September 2015 update video, part cuatro. <laughs> so I know this is kind of a, a large amount of update videos, but a lot's been going on this month, so what you gonna do? So anyway, I just wanted to make this video to let you guys know that I'm back home in lovely Salina, Ohio, just chilling over at my parents' place for the next couple months until um, I get an apartment squared away up in Kalamazoo, and then... Uh, <clears throat> Come January, I'll be starting school, so I can't wait. <laughs> and uh, it's just been a crazy, uh, crazy couple days. So, um, as you guys know, I'm officially out of the U.S. Navy. I'm officially a veteran now. So, uh, got my DD-214 on Friday, flew out, and uh, yeah, I've just been kind of recovering ever since, really, because uh, of the jet lag and all that. So, uh, it's, it's been a little rough here and there, but uh, I'm getting through it, so... 
Um, as far as like YouTube videos and stuff like that goes, I'm actually rendering one right now. It's uh, it's an old uh, idea that I had for uh, for an Andy Japandi episode, like back when I first got out to Japan. So it's basically like a collection of um, extended scenes from the real life Shenmue five year anniversary video that I did a long, long time ago. And uh, it was basically, uh, the intention, I guess, was to make it like a sequel video, where I did like a Yokosuka base tour. But it didn't really have much connection to the Real Life Shenmue episode, so I was just going to make it, it like its own standalone episode, but I just never really got around to, uh, to doing it until now. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's going to be coming out uh, probably early uh, this coming week. Probably like Monday, Tuesday, something like that. And... Uh, I also got a bunch of other uh, archive videos that I got to get out, and uh, still working on my moving video and my, uh, you know, final the final video for Andy Japandi. So uh, once I get all these archive videos and stuff like that out, and then the moving video, and then the final video, then that's gonna be it for uh, for the Andy Japandi series for now. Um, as of this recording, I don't really have any uh, set in stone plans to uh, come back to Japan. But uh, the desire is definitely there, and um, it's something I might do either as a part of a study abroad program. I know uh, Western Michigan has some pretty great study abroad programs that I can take advantage of, or I may just end up, you know, waiting until after university to uh, to go out there and teach the English to the kids. So um, we'll see what happens. You know, I'm I'm keeping myself open to uh, to possibilities this time around because I know that you know being you know, obsessively goal oriented, you know, sometimes has its disadvantages, you know, when, when things don't work out as planned. So I'm just kind of going with the flow this time around, you know, going to kill it in school, you know, do good things and, uh, hope we make you guys proud. So, um, yeah, <laughs> like I said, it's just been a crazy couple days, you know, lots changed. And, you know, if you're wondering like how I feel, you know, finally getting out of the Navy, uh, to be perfectly honest with you, you know, I've only been out for like two days at the time of this recording. So to me, right now, it just feels like I'm on leave. And, you know, it's just been like a weekend. So it's just like I just got, you know, just came back home on leave. You know, it hasn't really, really sunk in yet that, you know, I don't, you know, I'm not going back to Japan. and I'm not going back to San Diego um, for now. <laughs> like I said, but, you know, it's just like I, I'm not home on leave. You know, I'm home on a more permanent basis, you know, well, next three, four months-ish, you know, if you call that permanent, so, but, you know, the point is, you know, I'm, I'm going to be here a lot longer than your standard leave period, so, uh, for me, it hasn't really, really sunk in yet that I'm officially out, so, um, anyway, but now that I am out, and, you know, STG2 Smelser is no more, I'm just Andy now, so, um, I do have some goals, you know, aside from doing good in college and stuff like that. So, um, one of the things I want to really work on is uh, growing out my hair. And uh, as you can see, I kind of got a head start. You know, I after uh, you know after a while, I just kind of stopped going to the barber. So I just kind of let it grow out. And you know, a lot of a lot of Navy people are kind of looking at me funny, like, "Shit, man, you gotta get that haircut." And I'm like, shit, man, I'm getting the fuck out. I don't give a shit. <laughs> so, call it what you will, but, you know, I just wanted to get a head start. So, uh, yeah, because I figure, you know, I'm going to be 30 at the end of the year, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep my hair the rest of my life. I don't know if it's going to start falling off. You know, I hope it doesn't, but in the event that it does, I still want, you know, to see what I look like with long hair, with, like, actual, like, my hair, not just, like, putting on a wig, you know? <laughs> You know, and I, I've never, never had long hair before, so I just figured, you know, now is a good time to just do it because you know, I'm going back to college, and you know, I don't really need to look, you know, super clean cut while I'm in college, if you know what I'm saying. So, uh, you know, once I start going job hunting and stuff like that, you know, near the end of my college time, of course, you know, I'm going to cut it off and you know, clean it up and stuff like that. But you know, for now, it's a, it's a fun little experiment. You know, take some photos and kind of, you know, look back. Remember when you had long hair? <laughs> you know, stuff like that. So, you know, we'll see what happens. And uh, knowing my hairstyle, it's probably going to grow more out than down. But it is what it is. And uh, another thing I'm going to be working on is losing this goddamn gut. 
for fuck's sake. <laughs> so, um, yeah, contrary to popular belief, just eating Japanese food isn't going to make you lose weight. Who knew? <laughs> so, um, even though a lot of Japanese food is healthy, you know, just don't think that, oh, it's Japanese, so it must be all good for you, right? Yeah. Don't fall in that trap, so, yeah. Anyway, yeah, so, uh, once, you know, my body gets reacclimated to, uh, to the time zone and I kind of start getting used to how things are around here and stuff like that, then I'm going to get back into, you know, like a, an exercise routine because, you know, my folks are, you know, getting into it pretty good. So, you know, they've been losing a lot of weight and, you know, I'm real proud of them for doing that. So, you know, I'm just going to probably tag along and, you know, just kind of do the, do my own thing, you know? So, um, I'm not expecting to lose like a ton of weight or anything like that, but it's just good to, you know, exercise, you know, just get healthy. I guess you could say, you know, lay off the cheeseburgers as much as I can. So, you know how it is. So, yeah, there's that. And that's pretty much it for this update video. Um, got more videos coming up this week as well as subsequent weeks to finish out the Andy Japandi series. I'm still um, trying to think of what to say for the uh, for the epilogue, the uh, the official closeout of the Andy Japandi series. You know, it's it's been a long time coming. You know, making that series. You know, it's the series I've wanted to do. You know, ever since I started doing YouTube, because I was inspired by a lot of you know very early original J vloggers, and uh, I just wanted to go out to Japan and you know meet with them and you know just kind of see what they saw during their time in Japan and. I'm proud to say that I did that. Of course, you know, there's still some places that I want to see, you know, as as it always is, you know, Japan has got a lot to see and it's, you know, hard to see everything. But, you know, all things considered, I uh, saw a great deal, met a lot of great, interesting people through the YouTube community. And, you know, I'm, I'm real satisfied with that. So, you know, I feel good about it. But, you know... All, all things considered, it is a lot to walk away from. So, you know, to put everything in the right words to close out the series, at least for now, um, it's, it's going to take some time. So, uh, in the meantime, I'm going to be working on some archival stuff that didn't quite make the cut, you know, earlier when I originally recorded them. But, uh, yeah, the finale will come. It's just, uh, just a matter of time. You know, just thinking about how I want to end it. So anyway, <laughs> I'm rambling on. So with that said, this is the Andy San. Sign up for now. Thinking you guys, Pook, for tuning in to this uh, rambly update video, part quattro. <laughs> and uh, for watching my other stuff. Also want to thank you guys for liking the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang. Andy here. Coming at you, book, with a video response to Andrew Higgins of Higgins in Japan. And the video I'm responding to is his one of his recent ones called Living in Japan, No Regrets. So, uh, in the video, uh, Andrew talks about um, what basically motivated him to come out to Japan and, you know, just kind of giving you guys motivation to, you know, follow your dreams, follow your goals, passions, all that kind of stuff. So, um, I thought I'd kind of throw my own two cents into the, uh, the subject here. So, yeah, I know I released the video just, like, earlier, so, you know, whatever. Don't judge me. <laughs> anyway, yeah, um... So as you guys know, I lived in uh, Yokosuka, Japan for about two, two and a half years. And I uh, just recently got out at the time of this recording. So um, yeah, so I'm back home in Salina, Ohio. But I do want to kind of tell you guys uh, what my life was like uh, before. So um, 
back in the early 90s, here, I'll move away from that, the glare, but anyway, back in the early 90s, uh, my cousins were stationed out in Yokosuka, Japan, and um, I was really close to them back then, and uh, they would always uh, send me different gifts and trinkets and things like that of, you know, from Japan, and uh, keep in mind this was you know, before the uh, the advent of the internet and things like that, so um, you really didn't have a uh, a flow of information about uh, foreign countries at the time. So you know, <clears throat> the only thing I really had that I could uh, relate to as far as like Japan stuff was the stuff that they would send me, and then like stuff in books and dictionaries, encyclopedias, things like that. You know, that's really all I had at the time. So, uh, but in any event, I was really interested because um, all the stuff they would send me was just so uh, different from what I'd see on TV and stuff like that at the time. And then, you know, shortly after, that's when a lot of, you know, Japanese shows, I didn't know they were Japanese at the time, but that's when they started, you know, gaining popularity. You know, you had your Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, you had Samurai Pizza Cats. I think, you know, Voltron was on earlier. And, you know, Speed Racer and stuff like that. But, you know, at the time, I didn't really know that those were Japanese-based. It was just cartoons. <laughs> I didn't know any better. So, but, you know, eventually, I started, it started to build the, uh, the desire to go out to Japan and to, you know, see a lot of what they saw and to just experience it, you know. And then that uh, desire was rekindled, really when a lot of uh, the early J vloggers started cropping up on this little thing called YouTube, you know, almost 10 years ago, actually over 10 years ago at the time it's recording. So um, <clears throat> that kind of stoked the flames for me, you know, going back, going to Japan rather. So um, at the time I was pretty much a broke in debt college student. So, um, or a college dropout rather. And I uh, didn't really have any good job prospects because that's when the uh, the economy had collapsed in America and the Midwest was hit pretty hard by it. So um, it was really hard for me to find jobs. You know, even working McDonald's, I couldn't even get that. So, you know, push came to shove. And in uh, early 2010, I joined the U.S. Navy, I served five years and uh, just recently got out. So... Um, yeah, I live in that uh, veteran lifestyle now. So, um, but <clears throat> two of those five years were spent uh, being stationed out in Yokosuka, Japan. So um, that was a real, uh, real dream come true for me. And uh, you know, it was a long time coming. And it just uh, kind of goes to show, you know, yeah, dreams do come true. And this is all corny and stuff like that. But you know, the moral of the story is, if you have a goal or a passion or a dream or something like that, you know, and you want it hard enough, you want it enough, then you'll find a way to make it happen. It may not be the easiest way, but, you know, every little thing that you do can lead up to that. Like, say, you know, it doesn't have to be about going out to Japan. That's just, you know, my example and, you know, Andrew Higgins' example as well. So... It could be something like, you know, going to Italy or, you know, getting that really nice car or something, you know. So, um, like say, you know, going to Italy, for example, but you work a full-time job and you got a wife or a husband, you got kids and it's just, you know, it seems impossible. So, um, there's ways to make it happen. You could just set aside a little bit of money every check that you get. And just kind of build up on that and then, you know, also do some research about Italy, you know, look at some of the famous places there, you know, Leaning Tower Pisa, going to Rome and stuff like that. Learn a bit, bit about the Italian language, you know, just kind of research Italy more and more. And the more you do that, the more passionate you get about it and the more, you know, drive you have to continue saving up for that trip to Italy because not only has it just, you know... It started off as just a simple, well, I want to go to Italy, period. You know, that's it. But now it's like, you know, I want to go to this city, and I want to try out this food, and I want to, 
you know, see this landmark and I want to talk to the locals about this and, you know, as you get more and more specific, you kind of get more motivated to save up for it and it's just, you know, your goals become more and more real over, over time. So, you know, I, I see a lot of stuff online about this thing called the law of attraction and stuff like that where it's like, if you want it hard enough, it will come to you. You know, you just got to put out the intention, you know, I want this, I want that, you know, whatever. But to me, that's only part of the equation, really. You know, you have to have the want and you also have to have the execution to make it happen. It's like, OK, I want to go to Italy. What do I need to do? This, this, this. OK, then you do it. So that's the part that's missing from all these, you know, you know, dream big kind of uh, seminars and stuff like that you see on YouTube and elsewhere on the Internet. So, you know, there's, you know, desire and then there's execution, which is, you know, part of the equation to make stuff happen. So um, <laughs> long story short, you know, if you want something, go for it. And, you know, don't be afraid to put in a little extra work to make it happen. You know, it just all depends on how bad you want it. So, anyway, with that said, this is Andy san Sign up for now. Thanking you guys book, for tuning in to this video and watching my other stuff. And I also recommend you watch uh, Andrew Higgins' video as well. I'll put a link to his video down below in the boopity boops. So, give it a look and uh, feel free to su subscribe to his channel as well. And, uh... I also want to thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Looks good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
I thought it would be kind of interesting and, you know, try to get my friends in on some of the deals. So, uh, cause you know, I, <laughs> I really love it when, you know, my friends come in and collab with me cause you know, that then I can kind of get them in on the fun and stuff like that. So it's, uh, it's all in good fun. So, uh, let's move on to uh, some more personal stuff. So as you guys know, I got out of the U S military on September 25th, 2015. So ever since then, I've been back here at my parents' house. So um, it's been about a week since I got discharged officially. So um, as you know, just haven't really been doing too much, you know. But the one thing I have been focusing on is uh, getting my site up and running again. My old www.theandysign.com back up and running and trying to get all the uh, the videos up to date and stuff like that because for the longest time I, I kind of neglected it just because it, it got too too cumbersome to you know edit a video put it up there and then also put it up on my website because I had to get the formatting just right and you know it was just it was just another step and it you know it was it took too much time from a uh, schedule that was very you know, lacking in time, or at least I thought. Now, in retrospect, I probably could have kept it updated, you know, had I put in a little extra effort, but, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. so. But in any event, I do want to bring it back. I'm in the process of bringing it back. I uh, redid the website, added a new theme and everything like that, and I really like it. Um, so definitely tell me what you guys think. You know, I put the link down below in the boopity boop for my main website, as, and, uh, like I said, it's www.theandysan.com, so check it out. <laughs> so I'm going to be focusing on, you know, getting that website up to speed mostly. So uh, the video output isn't going to be as much as it used to be. But, you know, if you check out the site, then, you know, you're going to be seeing a lot of, you know, older videos and stuff like that pop up as well. So if you follow me on Twitter, you know, I'm sorry for the uh, the constant barrage of updates, but uh, it is what it is. So again, apologies for that. But um, it should be all updated and, you know, up to current very soon. I'm just, you know, working as much as I can trying to get as many update videos or as many videos on the site as I can. So, you know, <laughs> most done 2012 just to show how backlogged I was on the website. So, ooh. <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of going to be my main focus as well. Cause, uh, also I want to get back into uh, blogging, you know, the type of type, <laughs> not so much the vloggy blog, <laughs> but, um, cause I kind of want to get back into it. Cause I've been out of the blogging game for a while and it was what really, brought me into the internet basically and you know gave me the incentive to make my own site and then eventually led me to vlogging and you know here we are 2015 so um, I really want to get back into writing as well just so that way I have a more varied uh, way of doing stuff online because you know I got videos that's you know my main gig and I also have other social media outlets you know I got you know Instagram being a close number two as far as you know main social media outlets you know I got my Facebook page and Twitter and stuff like that as well so um, I also want to make blogging kind of part of my repertoire again so um, I don't really have a set schedule for posts or anything like that but um, I just want to let you guys know that you know I do intend on blogging a bit more and if you guys have any uh, you know topic ideas I'd love to hear them you know be fr you know feel free to put them down below in the comments down the booby boop or uh, leave me a personal message and I read all the comments and I read all the personal messages so I mean I respond to all of them but I do read them so keep that in mind so uh, I'm just kind of rambling on walking along in my not so banana shoes <laughs> but uh, yeah that's uh, Pretty much what I wanted to say to you guys in this update video, and uh, expect more stuff coming out soon. So with that said, this is the Andy San. Sign up for now. Thanking you guys boop, for tuning into this rambly update video and watch my other stuff. Also, want to thank you guys for liking, the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party, and hey, as always, we'll see you.
<laughs> next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you book, with my October 2015 update video. Part two. So yeah, um, in this video I want to talk about some upcoming stuff, as well as uh, just kind of wax a little bit of nostalgia here and talk about some personal life stuff as well. So, as far as uh, different site updates and things like that, um, I do have a, uh, a couple YouTube videos that are going to be coming out. Um, on Monday, there's going to be my collaboration video with uh, one of my friends, Zach from the Phoenix 7 787 channel. Um, we went out to Skyline Chili, and uh, I had the uh, <laughs> like a Skyline Chili burrito, so it's not really Skyline Chili, but whatever. And uh, he had an actual, you know, Skyline three-way. So there's that. And yeah, visited him down in uh, Cincinnati while he was in town. You know, caught up with each other and uh, went around the whole Cincinnati, Newport, Kentucky area. It was, you know, I've never really been down that way before, so it was kind of new and interesting for me to get all that stuff. And of course, you know, I took a lot of pictures, so if you follow me on Instagram, instagram.com slash theandysan, then you'll have uh, probably seen that already, so yeah. <laughs> So there's that, and I'm also uh, basically taking all this, you know, extra time to wrap up some loose ends and stuff like that as far as, you know, video projects that I had to put on the back burner due to work and whatever. So um, I'm finishing up this uh, most recent season of First Impact Anime. It's been a long time coming, long time in the works, and, you know, I do apologize for all the delays, but, you know, work. <laughs> It is what it is. So uh, right now I'm working on the season finale for it, and uh, once that's done, I'm hoping to uh, set up a time with uh, the Talking Vidalkin, also known as Ariopolis, to uh, work on a new series or a new season, whatever the case may be. Who knows? Surprise! <laughs> so uh, hopefully that'll be coming out very soon. And uh, I guess the plan with with that season, if it does come to pass, is that I'll work on the entire season and then once the entire season is done then I'll release it so um, there's that and also um, I'm planning on kind of redoing the uh, the classic first impact anime episodes and stuff like that and just kind of like remastering them as it were because we started the series shoot it was like over five years ago actually you know this was uh, before I went out to boot camp, so yeah, this was like 2009, 2010, somewhere around there, so back in the day of YouTube. <laughs> so, and I'm going dark, sorry about that. Just had to walk around, so. Um, yeah, I'm planning on remastering them, you know, basically just improving the audio and uh, putting up a background so that way I can show the anime in question without without it getting flagged and whatnot, so there's that. As far as a schedule for those, uh, particular episodes and stuff like that. I don't have one as of yet because I still have to uh, finish up the season finale and then once that's done then I'm going to start remastering and when the remastering process isn't going to take nearly as long as making an episode from scratch because the episode's pretty much done really. It's just you know fixing up the audio and then putting on the background that's about it so you know. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, definitely look forward to uh, that, as well as, you know, a new upcoming season. So, yeah. <laughs> so, um, aside from all that stuff, I'm planning on, uh, I, I got a couple uh, video ideas and stuff like that, as well as uh, some new ideas for my blog. That's www.dandysan.com, if you don't know. So, uh, a couple ideas for my blog. Um, one of them I want to do is like a, uh, Kind of like what uh, Danny Chu does with like his uh, photo roundups and you know a week in Tokyo series and that you know just kind of go over like a different subject or a different area or something like that and just do like a uh, like a day in the life but in uh, photographs I think that's what it's called I don't know <laughs> the word escapes me but uh, basically you know something like that and I got some you know, photographs from Cincinnati when I was down there visiting my friend Zach, so um, I just kind of want to start off the series with that and then maybe, you know, go back in the archives, kind of see uh, if I can, you know, rustle up a little something, something, and then, you know, do some new stuff as well, so, yeah. <laughs> 
So I think that's going to be an interesting new series, and it's kind of going to kind of put some uh, some zest in my old blog because you know, as you guys know, I've been in the middle of, uh, in addition to wrapping up a lot of loose ends with videos and stuff like that, I've also been in the middle of uh, basically just revamping my old blog because you know I think now is a good time to start working on it because before I was too busy with uh, work and all that to really you know keep keep it up you know so um, I kind of lost interest after a while but you know I think now I got I got it set up to where you know that's not really gonna happen anymore so uh, yeah and plus you know it's nice to have in uh, an alternate means of uh, submitting content and whatnot, you know, so it's not just videos or just pictures, you know, you got your written blog posts as well, and, you know, you can kind of uh, compile everything a bit nicer on the website and stuff like that. Plus, it's also, I guess, like, my overall plan for it is to be, like, a hub for all my content and whatnot, so, um, you know, I'm also looking into, you know, maybe getting into podcasting as well, so that'll be another, uh, you know, way to, you know, gather everything up and stuff like that so you guys can see all that, so, um, yeah. Now, as far as my podcast idea goes, I got a couple ideas that are kind of milling around in the old nog-nog, so, um, oh, hey, check this out. Random ADD moment. There's the, uh, the windmill that you guys often see in my Instagram posts as of late. So there it is, just a chucking away. And uh, speaking of windmill, sorry about the uh, random uh, uh, wind noise. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, so that's basically what's going on with uh, the content making and you know the videos and the pictures and whatnot. So you know, on to more uh, personal life stuff. So as you guys know, almost uh, almost a month ago, I got you know, honorably discharged from the uh, U.S. Navy, so I'm officially a veteran. <laughs> so I've been, I've been experimenting with, uh, with growing my hair out and stuff like that. So um, one of the things that I heard, as far as like if you're growing your hair out from something short to long, is uh, to basically like keep the sides fairly trim and then like have the top of it just kind of grow over. So I had my mom kind of trim the sides, but I think she went a little little too short with the sides but you know it's I kind of like it and it's, it's growing on me <laughs> but uh, you know maybe once the top starts coming down a bit more it'll it'll start filling in I'm not really sure you know I never grew up my hair before and I figure since I'm gonna be going back to college and whatnot you know it's kind of a good time to do it because you know I'm kind of at that age where I may or may not lose my hair I don't know but, you know, I have it now, so I figure, do it while at least I have it, right? <laughs> so, it'll just be a fun little experiment, I guess you could say. And then, you know, once I go job hunting and stuff like that, you know, we'll trim it up proper so I look professional. <laughs> and uh, another thing is, you know, the goatee. So, um, I know I can't grow out the full, you know, Navy vet beard <laughs> like everybody seems to have. But uh, I'm trying my best, you know, just trying to get a little little goatee action going and then growing out the sideburns, you know, a little bit. You know, some sides look better than others, but, you know, hopefully it'll even out, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Again, it's just something new I'm trying out, so, yeah, there's that. But uh, one of the main things I want to talk about is just, uh, you know, I'm going dark again, sorry. It's just, you know, my whole experience being back in my ho hometown of uh, Salina, Ohio. So, um, I left here to join the Navy about over five years ago. So, um, a lot has changed and yet a lot hasn't. So, you know, it's kind of interesting going around Ohio, or going around Salina rather, and seeing you know, the, the differences and stuff like that. And one of the main things is that the, the majority of my friends are gone. You know, a lot of them, once they, uh, you know, graduated college, they packed their bags and left, really. You know, and they're, they're off to, you know, better things and stuff like that, better jobs and whatnot. So, you know, I'm proud of them. But, you know, since I'm back home in Salina, it's like, you know, nobody's around to hang out anymore. And, you know, if they are, they're, you know, in the area, it's, you know, they're busy visiting their own family and stuff like that. And, uh, 
yeah. And that's just one of the things, I guess, about growing up, you know, as, as, as the years pass, I see a lot more of my, uh, my friends, you know, getting married and having kids. Not always in that order, but that's okay, you know. <laughs> I'm fine with it, but, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, just the passage of time, I guess. So, for you uh, younger viewers and stuff like that, you know, it's just something you have to come to uh, come to terms with when you get older, you know. So, and me, hell, you know. Believe it or not, I'm gonna be 30 in a couple of months. You know, December 7th, 1985, man. 30 years ago. It's hard to believe. God, like. I remember when I was, you know, in my very early 20s, you know, when I was going to college and stuff like that the first time around, and I told myself that, you know, hey, you know, I know everybody's getting married and having kids now, but, you know, I want to I wanna live my life, I want to do my thing, and then once I'm in my 30s, you know, I'll settle down somewhere and stuff like that, but it's, you know, once I actually got up to that point now, it's just like, I don't know. You know, I'm definitely open to the idea of getting married and having kids and stuff like that, but, uh, I don't know, I just, I think, you know, there's, there's more to do out there in the world, and I guess, call it greedy or whatever, but, you know, uh, I, th I don't think 10 years is enough time, to be honest with you. For some it is, but not for me, you know, I definitely have more stuff that I want to do, and yeah, I can do it with, you know, a partner or and or with kids, which would be interesting and fun. But you know, I just I just got to meet that special someone, you know. And uh, I'm not gonna settle, I guess, in that sense, you know, where I just settle for close enough, you know. So it is what it is, and you know. Some, some days I don't mind being alone. It's kind of nice, actually, because you don't have to juggle your plans with anybody. You just do what you want to do, you know? <laughs> but then there's other times where it gets kind of lonely. But it's not always lonely. So, you know, it's just one of those things, I guess. So, anyway, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, like I said, being back in Slime has got me kind of thinking about how Salina is now versus uh, how it was in the past when I was growing up and stuff like that and uh, the fact that my friends aren't around anymore you know in town so you know I'd go to uh, go to either like Walmart or you know one of the restaurants or something like that and it's like you know I don't know anybody anymore you know because usually I'd know either my friends or like my friend's little brother or little sister or something like that and you know, I'd walk in and say, you know, hey, how's so-and-so doing? You know, how's your brother, how's your sister or whatever doing? And they're like, oh, yeah, they're fine, you know, whatever. But they're not around. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going dark again. So, it's just something that's kind of odd. Because it's all the same places that I knew from growing up. But, uh, you know, the people that I grew up with just aren't around anymore. So, it's... Uh, Strange dichotomy, I guess you could say. Here's your word of the day, dichotomy. <laughs> but, like I said before, it's just a part of growing up, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm getting a little rambly here, you know, just kind of waxing nostalgia and stuff like that. So, like I said, you know, I'm hoping to uh, reconnect with old friends and stuff like that before I head up to Michigan. And, hell, even, even when I am in Michigan, you know, I still want to come down here every once in a while and visit everybody, you know. It's not like I'm going to another planet or something like that so yeah it's just uh you know up in michigan will be a bit harder to do just because i'll be further away but it won't be impossible so there's that but anyway before i get a little too rambly which i think it's a little too late sorry <laughs> better sign off so yeah this is the andy san sign up for now like i said <laughs> thanking you guys boop, for tuning into this video and watching my other stuff also want to thank you guys for liking the thumbs commenting, subscribing, send your friends to the party, and hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.
All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. Coming at you with another uh, video, or like a car vlog, I guess. So, um, testing out another new uh, new system here. So I got both my old system, which was uh, my GoPro here for black, plugged into a lavalier mic, as well as my uh, Zoom H2N in the, uh, the bottom, uh, uh, <laughs> drink holder here. So, uh, just heading into town, gonna get some coffee, gonna get some food, and I thought I'd take you guys along for the ride. So, uh, yeah. And I might, I'm not sure, I'm not 100%, but I think uh, last time I did this, um, I had the GoPro set to wide instead of super wide. So you guys might be getting a little bit more than last time. I'm not really sure, but we'll see how it comes out. And like I said, I'm also testing out the new system with the Zoom H2N in the bottom uh, cup holder here. So um, just to get a different, uh, different take on sound and whatnot. So I tried plugging in the lavalier mic, but it just wasn't picking up for some reason. It was very strange, but it's whatever. So I just have it set off to the side here in the bottom. I'm not sure if I'm gonna, you know, have it as the main sound or if uh, I'm just gonna use it to blend just to get a nice uh, bass going. Cause that, that's usually what I do for like, uh, for most of my videos and for like concert videos and stuff like that. It's a neat little trick. You know, I have, um, if my internal mic isn't too bad, I might add it just to add a little bit more treble. And then I add my zoom mic in for, uh, for the actual detail and more clarity and things like that. So yeah, fun tricks. So today we're gonna go get coffee at uh, my favorite coffee place here in Salina called Hazelnut Coffee. It's supposedly run by the uh, the mayor's wife because her name's Hazel. So uh, she brews a nice batch of batch of Joe. So uh, yeah, <laughs> why not? Let me just get in through this way. And then uh, once you grab it, we'll go by the lake and uh, continue the video. That guy's going like really freaking slow. <laughs> like, come on, man. You got all day. Also, gotta get food too. I'm really freaking hungry. Okay, cool. Yeah, we'll just go through the drive-through here. May or may not cut this part out. There it is, hazelnut coffee. Real small place, but uh, real awesome coffee. All right, guys, so the whole car smells like coffee now, and it's just fantastic. So I'm gonna swing by the lake here and uh, have ourselves a nice, little chat just talk about stuff and things whilst I'm drinking my coffee so yeah I guess I'll divide this video up into like two little parts right so this is gonna be like the little car vlog part and then the next part's gonna be me actually uh, talking about updating things and whatnot so. I'm just going over here, right? So, yeah, here's a good spot. Right here. All right, cool. All right, guys, so I decided to uh, split off the uh, talking portion where I give you guys updates and things like that to a separate video. And I'm just gonna make the car vlog its own uh, separate video, separate from 
the talky portion <laughs> where, I, where I'm talking to you guys in front of the camera and stuff. So consider this part two of the, today's car vlog. Uh, so I just got done eating some hothead burrito and drinking some coffee. I know I got a death wish. <laughs> so yeah, but anyway, let's roll out of here. And uh, for you tech spec guys, if you didn't catch it in the first part, um, I'm running my old setup with, with a little something new just to test it out. So my uh, main setup is my GoPro here for black plugged in to a, um, a lapel mic that I got from the, uh, oh, where did I get this from? I think the Hapeg Rocket, I believe is where I got this from. It's, it's, it's an unknown, it's like a no name uh, generic lapel mic. I have like a little windscreen thing attached to it. So that way you don't hear so much uh, popping noises and stuff like that. Excuse me. You might hear some ruffling though, just cause it's pretty close to my face. It's like close to my neck, I guess, so yeah. And in addition to that, I also have my Zoom H2N uh, running in my main little uh, uh, cup holder spot as opposed to up forward a bit more. So I got that. And uh, we're just gonna roll and I'll, I'll see how the audio sounds. Might blend it a little bit. Cause I, I typically do that for like concerts and stuff like that. Just cause some mics pick up frequencies better than others. So I might add like the, uh, you, typically what I do is <clears throat> I use the external mic for the majority of it. And then I have my internal mic if the audio is not too distorted. Uh, I use that for like more of the trebly, more detailed sound. So I just kind of add it a bit low in the mix so you get a little bit more, more definition. More sparkle, more spank. Put some spank on it, <laughs> as it were. So yeah, like I said, we're just leaving Hothead Burrito. Um, it's good stuff. Basically, it's, it's kind of like, uh, like Chipotle, but it's got a bit more options. Food's really fucking good, let me tell you. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I definitely missed uh, Mexican food when I was out in Yokosuka, Japan. Because, I mean, yeah, they had, Jesus truck, okay. Yeah, they had uh, like Taco Bell, like I could access it on base and stuff. But, you know, it, it's not the same, you know. And uh, there were some good Mexican restaurants out in like the Tokyo area but I'd have to go all the way out there for that. Yeah. I guess like some of my recommendations would be uh, Guzman y Gomez. That's uh, one that I went to a couple times as a recommendation from Fox from the Kanto Kitsune channel and Japanista. <laughs> so just a little plug for him. Um, he also <clears throat> goes to more uh, Mexican restaurants and stuff like that out in Japan as well. And so definitely check them out. I'll put a link below in the, uh, the description down below in the boopy boops so you can check them out there. So yeah, uh, we're just kind of driving through uh, a little spot from, uh, from Walmart and that whole mall area. Um, yeah, Salina's not really that big. It's not a whole lot of stuff to do here. It's, I mean, <laughs> A lot of people come down here for like the summer because of the lake, which you can see off in the distance. <laughs> um, a lot of people tend to come down here for the summertime because you know that's when all the, the the tourists and stuff come down, you know, just to relax for a weekend or whatever. And uh, you know they get like they rent boats and stuff like that, and <clears throat> they have like you know lake cabins and things like that. And uh, there's also a, uh, a college campus, the Wright State Lake Campus is here as well. But uh, it's more of like a, just an extended campus rather. So it only has like a couple courses and things like that. And it's kind of, it's kind of a downer because they, uh, Salina isn't really marketed as a college town. And I think uh, it would do a lot better than it does now if it were to uh, market itself as such. But, you know, it is what it is. So, yeah, we're just driving down the, uh, not Main Street, per se, but uh, one of the main roads. So, oh, 
and uh, for my um, international viewers, uh, that's in miles per hour, not kilometers. So I would actually be driving about 45, 50-ish kilometers per hour, somewhere in that range. So, um, after putting up the, uh, the first car vlog video, I noticed I got a lot of comments about how, um, <clears throat> how much parking and how much uh, space and everything there is. Oh, geez, I better speed up. <laughs> Going too slow, Andy. But anyway, like I say, oh, they're tearing down the, uh, the old Bob Evans. Okay. Or they're renovating, I'm not, not sure. Yeah, the building on the left used to be a Bob Evans. Anyway, like I was saying, uh, in the first car vlog, I uh, noticed a lot in the comments about, you know, how much space there is here in Salina, and uh, how much parking, and how low the uh, the gas or petrol prices are here in the states. And uh, yeah, that's that's one of the things I do like about uh, about America in general. You know, it's not just a Salina thing or an Ohio thing. It's definitely an American thing about the low cost of gas. And it's it's funny whenever like my friends or my parents or whatever complain, oh my God, Andy, the gas price is so fucking high. I'm like, really, mom? Really? What? what? Okay, <laughs> he was just backing out. So, um, yeah, I thought it was kind of funny because even when gas was in, you know, the four dollars per gallon range which was way back in the day thankfully um, it was still considerably lower than internationally and uh, thankfully gas prices have gone down considerably and I attribute that to the fairly recent uh, oil find in North Dakota which um, lowered our dependency on foreign oil so because it was more domestic, it cost less to transport, cost less to import, all that kind of stuff. So obviously they pass on the savings to us. So thanks, Obama. You're, you're not so bad of a guy, despite what people may say. But anywho, yeah, right now it's fall, as you can see from all the, the changing leaves and stuff like that. I also got a viewer from California who, you know, probably doesn't see these kinds of colors too often in Cali, huh? Jeez, uh, okay. Stop, 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 stop. All right. <laughs> yeah, I gotta remember I can't make sudden stops with this car. So, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I, I'm used to, you know, I like the bigger vehicles, that's why I got this one, but uh, I'm used to the smaller cars that kind of break on a dime. So, you know, whenever I see the, you know, the the caution light, you know, the ye yellow light, I start to break and I'm like, mm. <laughs> So, sometimes I just gotta run it, you know. Not run a red light, obviously, but, you know. I can't break on a dime like I could before. And actually, like, <laughs> activated the anti-lock brake system when I was, uh, trying to brake suddenly the other day. And I was like, okay, this ain't a little itty bitty tiny car. So yeah, there's that. That is pretty much the, uh, the outskirts of town here. So um, anyway, uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to say in this, uh, this little car vlog. Uh, there's not much else really to see from here on out. So we'll just end the video here. So yeah, this is the Andy Son. Sign up for now, thinking you guys poop. Tuning in to this uh, car vlog and for watching my other stuff. Also want to thank you guys for liking, the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, sending your friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, guys. So this is the little sit down uh, talky portion of the uh, the car vlog here so um yeah just sitting out here by the lake here in lovely salina ohio it's a wonderful day outside and uh just sitting here drinking some coffee see here right here coffee eh? <laughs> from hazelnut coffee here in uh, salina awesome coffee love it wakes me up in the morning slash afternoon whenever i decide to wake up <laughs> so yeah um so basically, I just wanted to talk about, you know, just different things that I'm up to, basically. So, um, 
really haven't been up up to uh, to a whole lot. I've just been uh, working on finishing up, tying up a bunch of loose ends and stuff like that with uh, projects that just kind of got pushed to the wayside, you know, due to work schedule and all that kind of stuff. Like uh, First Impact Anime, I just finished up the uh, the fifth season which is our most recent season, which was actually recorded like a year ago. <laughs> so sorry about the uh, lack of timeliness in releasing it, but uh, hopefully in the future it'll be a lot more better managed. Um, I know I can't even English this morning because coffee, <laughs> I haven't drank it all yet. So, oh, it's afternoon now, my bad. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> I'm just like really out of it right now. So, um, but basically, I just wanted to apologize for the uh, the lateness with uh, First Impact Anime, Second Impact. Um, and I'm looking forward to uh, making uh, more episodes with the Talking Vidalkin, also known as Ariopolis. So uh, hopefully those will be coming soon. Uh, just got to set up a schedule and stuff like that with him. He's been uh, very busy as of late, so it's been kind of hard to set things up. But uh, it will come. It will come. <laughs> but uh, in the meantime, I'm going to be working on uh, remastering old episodes of First Impact Anime. Now, uh, like I said before in previous update videos, um, we've been doing the series even before I, I joined the Navy. So like, you know, early to mid 2010. So um, it was a series that, you know, we really enjoyed doing. Um, we were very green at the time, and I'm still getting used to the whole, like, talking while stuff is going on in the background, kind of like the whole Let's Play thing. So, um, hopefully, you know, we'll kind of, you know, get more into it and stuff with future episodes and things like that. But I also wanted to show you guys just kind of, you know, just where we came from in earlier episodes, because a lot of those episodes were... Uh, put up on blip.tv which as you guys know has been taken down as of late and it's been bought by Maker Studios so blip.tv is no more so all, obviously all our old episodes and stuff are gone and so what we did at the time was basically just put up the intro which is just us no anime or nothing like that and then you know it would have a link to the blip.tv episode which had the full thing so Basically now what we're doing is just putting the anime into like a little tiny box, little corner or whatever the screen. So hopefully, you know, it won't be flagged or anything like that, you know, fingers crossed. <laughs> Who knows, but uh, it's been working for us pretty good in the past, so I think we'll, we'll keep it up until the feds shut us down or something like that. But uh, yeah, there's that. And also, I've been looking to uh, to uh, to start up my Andy Cade channel again, but uh, I won't be able to do it until I get my uh, my capture equipment and stuff like that back from the move, and uh, that's scheduled to come around like mid-November-ish, and that's also when I'm you know planning on moving out to Kalamazoo, Michigan. So um, I got a couple apartments lined up. Um, it's just a matter of me going there and signing the lease and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, a lot of good to come and it's really windy outside. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Maybe <laughs> it's crazy, but anyway, yeah. So, um, won't really be able to start on new episodes of Andy Cade until, uh, until at least like mid to late November at the earliest. So we'll see how it goes. And uh, speaking of Andy Cade and the whole Let's Play thing, um, I kind of came to a realization, even though it's kind of been a long time coming, really. But I just kind of came to the realization that, uh, you know, I wanted to uh, basically, like, uh, that's kind of hard to say, actually, but uh, I basically come to the realization that my main channel, youtube.com slash andysan, has... Uh, basically reached its limit as far as progression and things like that. And it's kind of sad, really. But it is what it is. So, um, hopefully once I get all my capture equipment and stuff like that, I'll be moving forward more with the, uh, the Andy Cade channel. And, you know, obviously, 
you know, I do like playing video games. I like doing stuff on YouTube and things like that, but I've kind of painted myself into a corner when it comes to uh, personal vlogs and things like that. I mean, you know, I still like doing those, don't get me wrong. It's just, you know, if I want to progress in, on YouTube, then, you know, I can't just be stuck in the whole personal vlog thing that that scene kind of died out years ago really so and yeah i know it's not all about making money and getting subscribers and stuff like that but you know i do i want to reach out to a wider audience and it's kind of hard to do that where i am right now as far as you know what i do on youtube so um I figure, you know, get into the whole gaming thing. And I do like games. I'm not just doing it for the views or whatever. And uh, get back into the whole gaming scene because, I don't know, like sometimes I feel kind of lost, you know, among my friends. Because it's like, you know, I don't play games nearly as much as I used to when I was younger. And, you know, a lot of them be talking about a lot of the newer games that are coming out. Like, at the time of this recording, Halo 5 is the new hotness. And then... Uh, Street Fighter V, uh, the beta edition, has been released as of late, so there's that and a bunch of other games, and I feel kind of out of the loop as far as that whole scene goes, so I'm like, I kind of kind of want to be uh, in the loop with things, so, you know, just, I figure, you know, start up, you know, bring back my whole Andy Cade channel, and, uh, you know, try to get to a set schedule. Cause that was my problem being in the Navy was that it was hard to get a set schedule on things. And plus, you know, I didn't want to give out, you know, movements and things like that. It's like, oh, we'll be leaving this time this day and I won't be able to release a video. Sorry, you know, I don't want to do any of that kind of stuff. So um, I was kind of at a crossroads as far as what I should do. And so eventually I just had to stop with the whole Andy K thing altogether just because it was it was too time consuming and I really need to work on my uh, my on screen persona as it were. So um, hopefully if I just kind of keep at it as far as the whole let's play thing goes. I know it's it's not going to be super awesome at first, but once I get into a rhythm and just kind of a groove as far as things go, I think uh, things will start to pick up. So, um, and I've kind of lo I've looked at a couple of older videos by more popular uh, YouTube Let's Players, like uh, Jack Septiguy is one. So, like I'd go back to. And he's only been doing YouTube for maybe like two, three years as far as the whole gaming thing goes. So he hasn't really been doing it for very long and he's already got like, oh, uh, was it like 7 million subscribers last time I heard? So um, I go back to like a year ago and you know, he wasn't the brash persona that he is now. It was just like, hey guys, what's up? Jacksepticeye, we're gonna be playing this game and blah blah blah. And back then he was the Mustang passing by. <laughs> anyway, but anyway, back then he was just kind of a more subdued and it seemed like he was trying to hide his Irish accent, whereas now it's just like all out there. It's like you know, <laughs> top of the morning to you laddies. You know, that's my that was my Jacksepticeye impersonation. Sans coffee. So um yeah, so that's why I'm not my super hyper, hyper happy self. Say that three times fast. Because, you know, I need, I need some coffee. I need it. <laughs> so, but anyway, what this whole rambly car vlog Madhu Bop is about is just to let you guys know that even though I'm not making videos as much as I used to, and I know I've slowed down a lot, I haven't lost, you know, the, uh, I guess, the passion, I know it sounds kind of, you know, foofy saying that, but I haven't lost the, the passion or the drive to make YouTube videos. It's just a matter of rebranding myself, I guess, because, you know, I've been doing the YouTube thing for a long time and for basically half of my time being on YouTube was uh, being in the US Navy and talking about the Navy and then for the past, Two and a half years I've been in Japan so I've been talking about that as well 
So it's a major brand shift for me, as a major shift of focus as far as what my videos and stuff are gonna be. And I know that I'm alienating a lot of you guys who've come here just to see the Andy Japandi stuff or to see the NFAX stuff or whatever the case may be. And you know, for that I apologize, but it's simply, you know, life. <laughs> I'm, I'm not that guy anymore, you know, I'm not in Japan, I'm not in the Navy, so it's just simply a new chapter for me, and uh, it is what it is, and yeah, I'm kind of sad to see it go, you know, some parts of me are like, you know, I kind of, kind of liked, you know, being in Japan, and there were some, some aspects of the Navy, not a lot, but there were some, that I was just like, hmm, <laughs> I kind of missed that, but you know. Overall, I'm satisfied with, with where I am right now. I'm um, gonna be going back to college soon, so um, I'm getting excited for that. Getting a place all lined up, and uh, we'll continue on from there. So um, hopefully once I get all my stuff and get all settled in up to Kalamazoo, I'll be able to lay down a more uh, set schedule for not only my Andy-san videos, but uh, future Andy Cade videos, the Let's Play thing, you know, what I'm what I'm gonna do, is it gonna be strictly like a, a YouTube Let's Play, or is it gonna be more like Twitch streams, maybe a combination of the two. I'm still kinda, kinda learning both platforms, actually, so, even though I've been a fan of both platforms for a while, it's, it's one thing to be a fan and to watch that kind of stuff, but to actually sit down and make it yourself is a whole nother beast entirely. So it's uh, definitely a big uh, learning process for me. But, you know, I look forward to uh, getting my hands dirty as far as that goes and, you know, just rebranding myself, figuring out who I am now, who is the Andy San <laughs> online, stuff like that. So um, there's that. And with that said, this is the Andy San. Sign up for now. They can you guys boop, for tuning in to this uh, rambly car vlog of sorts and for watching my other stuff also want to thank you guys for liking with the thumbs commenting subscribing send a few friends to the party and hey as always we'll see you next time catch you later guys bye all right, I'm recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you with my November 2015 update video for, you guessed it, November 2015. Woo! So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, we're gonna be talking about some personal life stuff as well as some YouTube stuff. But before we begin any of that, uh, today is Veterans Day, November 11th. So I wanna issue a special thanks to uh, all the veterans out there and especially to those who are currently serving, active duty, reserves, whatever, give them hell, guys. <laughs> so yeah, um, this is actually my first Veterans Day as a veteran, so it's kind of hard to, uh, to put into words just kind of what it means because, you know, I never really uh, had this kind of experience because, you know, none of my immediate family or anything like that were military. You know, the closest I had were my cousins, which I've mentioned before, you know, were my inspiration to not only join the service, but also to uh, go out to Japan as well. So, you know, they've been a big inspiration for me. Uh, so aside from them, I really didn't have anybody, you know, growing up, you know, because when I was a kid, it was just like, ah, it's just another day off, you know, whatever. But I think, I think now it has a little bit more significance and, you know, it means a bit more to me now than, you know, when I was younger, just because it actually, is relevant to me, you know? <laughs> it's kind of odd to say that, but you know, it is what it is. So, um, yeah, I guess in light of all this, you know, I want to um, do a new series. And now, I know a lot of people have been asking me, Andy, when's NFAX coming back? When are you gonna do a new NFAX episode? When's the next episode? And stuff like that. And uh, I do apologize for uh, basically killing off the series. I decided to, uh, to bring it back, kinda. So NFAX was basically created as kind of my uh, response as someone who was active duty 
responding to Navy related questions, you know, what's boot camp like, you know, how fat can you be to join, you know, stuff like that, how much money do you make, you know, whatever. So now as a veteran, I don't think the series would really work. So I've decided, you know, I've taken a lot of inspiration from this guy on YouTube named JT Suits, and I'll, I'll put a link below in the description for his channel and things like that. And uh, he's, he's also a veteran, also Navy, but he was an air guy, so he was working on the uh, the carrier out in Yokosuka, I think it was G-Dub at the time. And so he's been doing, you know, videos while he was in, you know, showing planes taking off and stuff like that. And uh, recently he's been doing uh, kind of a life after the Navy sort of series, you know, answering military questions and things like that. So I think that's what I want to do for my, uh, my next series. But calling it NFAX is kind of silly. So I decided to rename it to something a bit more relevant, I guess. You know, it will be called Life After Navy. At least that's the working title. I'm, it might change later on, but Life After Navy is the working title right now. I don't think I'll start filming that series until, you know, after I get all settled up in uh, Michigan, you know, sometime either the end of this month or early next month. But uh, that series is definitely in the works. Um, I'm writing down a lot of different uh, video ideas for it, so definitely uh, check it out soon. And speaking of Michigan, um, this is gonna kind of tie into personal slash YouTube, so it's kind of hard for me to segment uh, the personal life stuff and the YouTube stuff like I usually do with my update videos because they kind of intersect a little bit too much this month, so uh, apologies for that. But anyway, yeah, as far as YouTube stuff, I don't have a lot of stuff going on currently this month. Maybe some random doodads here and there, but you know, nothing really in the works as of yet. So um, I do apologize for that, but I've been focusing mostly on uh, just basically finding a place out in Michigan because I'm going to be moving very soon. This week, uh, my mom and I are going to go up to Michigan, to Kalamazoo, and uh, look at some apartments and things like that. And I'm hoping to, you know, just bring out my cell phone, nothing too pro level, <laughs> you know, just bring out my cell phone and uh, just kind of look around at places I could potentially live at. And uh, just kind of, you know, at least have something a bit more concrete, a little, little something to actually look at so I can get like a second opinion on, eh, maybe this place is pretty good or maybe this place is better or something like that. Because uh, you know how retailers are, they're, they're salespeople. So obviously they're gonna, they're gonna talk up their place like it's the pl best place to live. You know, I just wanna kinda have a more, I guess like what, subjective, objective. You know, just a, an outside opinion on the whole thing. And uh, like I said, I'm going to be focusing most of my time on uh, just finding a place up there, moving, which uh, if you guys follow me on Instagram, instagram.com slash theandysan, my stuff came in yesterday. So all my stuff from my apartment up in Yokosuka came in yesterday. It's filling up the garage and uh, also my car's in there too. So because, you know, my brother and I were working on it because one of the, one of the uh, heater coil hoses was leaking. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a big mess right now. So hopefully all this kind of stuff will be sorted out. And that's another reason why you haven't seen car vlogs is because my car's been kind of uh, laid up as of late. So uh, hopefully that'll be all fixed up soon. I'll find a place up in Michigan and uh, we'll begin the moving process. <laughs> Fun times. And uh, if you guys follow me on my Let's Play channel, Andy Cade, um, you guys are probably wondering, you know, what's going on with that channel? Why haven't you uploaded anything to that? And uh, I guess the long and short of it, though, is that, you know, I basically put that channel on hiatus because of all the, uh, the time and stuff I needed to invest in moving. And not only moving, but transitioning out of the Navy. And it's it was such a stressful experience, especially going from Japan to Washington. Once I got to Washington, it was just kind of smooth sailing from there because you just basically waited for like a week. And then uh, once I got all your paperwork and your DD-214 and all that kind of stuff, which is definitely something I'm going to be talking about in a future video. But uh, once you got all your paperwork and you got the plane ticket and all that kind of stuff, it just, you know, smooth sailing from there. So I've been home for 
about a month and a half now, I think. So I've been just taking this time to just kind of relax and get myself back into the uh, the civilian mindset rather than the uh, the military mindset. So um, I'm a lot less a lot less stressed now than when I was in and when I was up in Yokosuka. You know, things are looking pretty good. But there is uh, there is one thing that has been bothering me though. And that's just boredom, really, you know? <laughs> as much as I want to try and take a solid R&R, you know, vacation or staycation or whatever have you, what have you, um, I do like to work. I love working on YouTube videos. And I love editing and I love, I love doing this, you know, talking with you guys and things like that. And uh, recently I've been doing uh, live streams. And I've wanted to do live streams for a long time, but I just, I just didn't know what to live stream about. I didn't know really what, what to do. I wasn't familiar with the live stream technology and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's been a learning process for me. But uh, recently I've been doing uh, video editing live streams and I think this video is gonna go up there soon as well. <laughs> Once I'm done recording it anyway. So I've been doing that and uh, I first started doing it on Twitch, but uh, Twitch wasn't really that good with uh, the creative side because it's like, it, it categorizes streams based on like what games you play, which is great if you're playing games, but if you're not playing games, you're lumped into the creative category, which is extremely broad. And I hope that Twitch, you know, rectifies this in the future and kind of, you know, puts creative in like subcategories or something like that. I mean, that's, that's just me anyway. So, cause it's hard for people to find my stream and stuff like that on Twitch if I'm doing the creative thing versus the video game thing, which is a bit more clean cut. The first stream went pretty okay, I guess. Knocked out some technical difficulties, and then second stream went a lot better, and I did the second stream on YouTube just to kind of A-B the technology, and I think for, uh, for the creative video editing stream side of things, I'm gonna stick with YouTube for live streaming. And then I'm going to, uh, for like gaming streams and stuff like that, I'll stick with Twitch. Because it's just, it's better organized for games right now versus uh, the creative side. But hopefully that'll change. Yeah, I'm really glad that you guys have been enjoying those live streams and stuff like that. The feedback has been very positive. So I'm gonna continue doing those. Definitely a lot more stuff from me on the way, but uh, right now this month, and leading into the beginning of next month, it's gonna be kind of busy because I'm gonna be, you know, busy moving and getting myself settled into uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan before I start school in January. Hopefully I'll be able to, to iron out a schedule and stuff like that once I settled in up there. We'll be able to uh, to do some more Let's Plays and do, do some more stuff on Andy Cade and do more videos and things like that. That's pretty much all I wanted to, uh, to say in this video. So yeah, this is the Andy San. Sign up for now, thinking you guys poop, for uh, tuning in on this kind of long and rambly uh, update video, as well as tuning into my other stuff. Also, want to thank you guys for liking, the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Happy Veterans Day. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. And today I just wanted to uh, basically just talk to you guys and air out some uh, inner thoughts and things like that. So vlog. <laughs> so I'm here in my car, just kind of chilling by the lake, uh, doing a lot of thinking and stuff. And I uh, just want to kind of air it out for you guys because I've been going through a lot lately and uh, just been doing a lot of thinking as far as what the future holds for the old Andy son here. As you guys know, I'm currently looking for an apartment up in Kalamazoo, Michigan before I start school in uh, January. The hunt's been going pretty good. I went up there this past weekend with my mom. We looked at a couple apartments and I submitted an application to one that I thought was uh, really good. So, um, haven't heard back from them yet, but like I said, we just went up there this weekend, so give it a little time. <laughs> you know, in addition to that, uh, Thanksgiving's coming up, so I'm gonna be visiting, you know, my family up north for Thanksgiving as well. So that's gonna be fun, seeing family up there again. I don't know, lately I've also been feeling a lot of uh, social media burnout and YouTube burnout as well. So that's one of the reasons I haven't really been posting videos that much, in addition to doing personal life stuff like finding an apartment, things like that. In light of all the tragedies and stuff that's been go on, going on in the world lately, um, Facebook's just been 
you know, bombarded with a bunch of, you know, political posts and things like that. And, you know, I've been part of that too. I'm not going to say I'm innocent. I'm certainly not innocent in the whole thing, but... Uh, it's just been kind of wearing me down. So I've been, you know, kind of angry on Facebook as of late. And I actually had to uh, defriend a couple people because um, it just got to be a bit too much. You know, it is what it is. Nothing personal. It's just, I don't know. <laughs> it's just one of those things. Yeah, I've just been feeling really burnt out by the whole thing. And plus, you know, being in Salina, there's really not a whole lot to do. All my friends are pretty much gone from here now. They've, you know, moved out of here and moved to uh, bigger cities and stuff like that. And they're busy with their nine to five jobs and their new lives, you know, with wives and some with kids and stuff. And it's just been, you know, I've been back for like two months now and, you know, none of them have really made any kind of effort to be like, you know, hey, Andy, you know, I want to come over this weekend or you busy this weekend or something like that. Because I'm always trying trying to uh to call them and see if they want to hang out but it's like ah no i'm busy this weekend or "Mm, you know i'm gonna do something with the kid this weekend or you know whatever the case is and you know i'm not blaming them for having a life i mean it's their life so it is what it is but i don't know just a sign of the times you know getting older and stuff and it's just been kind of weird you know ever since i came back here to salina you know two months ago like i said because, you know, the town is pretty much the same, really. You know, it's not too much different from when I left it. Maybe, you know, so a couple new businesses cropped up. You know, they might have changed a couple things here and there. But it's essentially the same town. But the thing is, you know, my friends aren't here. And a lot of the people that I knew when I was living here and growing up here, you know, they're gone. You know, either they you know, passed away or they've moved or whatever. And it's, it's so strange, man. Like, uh, I remember going up with, uh, with my folks to Taco Bell uh, a couple weeks back and like, I would always know everybody or at least one person that was working in any of the, uh, the restaurants in Salina. And so, you know, I used to know some people that were working at Taco Bell and if not them, then maybe like their little brother or sister or something like that. You know, I'd come and be like, hey, how's it going? You're so-and-so's little brother, you know, how's so-and-so doing? And just kind of be like, hey, I know you guys, you know. But uh, now it's just like, I don't fucking know anybody. (laughs) You know, they're all gone. And it's just really weird, you know, because this is my hometown. The town is essentially the same as it was when I left. But, like, none of the people that I knew, you know, as far as that I consider my friends and stuff, are around anymore. And, I mean, I don't blame them. The town's essentially a dead zone. You know, there's not a whole lot of growth going on here. I mean, that's why I got out. But still, it's just a sign of the times, really, and just a just a sign that, you know, I, I need to move on. Otherwise, I'll get stuck here. So, I don't want that to happen to me again. So, that's why I'm going back to school. <laughs> well, one of the reasons. I've also been uh, stressing about uh, finding a job and stuff like that up in Kalamazoo because I guess things are different in my life now, man. It's like, you know, before if I were to move to a new town, I would probably, you know, look for something in fast food just to kind of get myself started, get my foot in the door, get a little bit of cash, find a new place or place to work or whatever, and uh, just kind of go from there. But, uh, you know, that's kind of socially acceptable when you're in your 20s, when you're a 20-something. But, like, I'm going to be 30 in a couple weeks. You know, December 7th, by the way, if anybody's wondering. <laughs> it's okay when you're, in, when you're a 20-something, but once you're a 30-something, I mean, unless you own the place or maybe, like, next in line to own the place, um, it's just fucking sad, you know, in my opinion work in fast food i mean if times are tough and it's the only job available hey do what you gotta do and it might be silly of me if after i make this video i end up getting a uh, fast food job when that just be the shits <laughs> but you know i'm trying i'm trying to avoid that i mean if i have to i have to but i'm just trying to avoid getting trapped in that environment again because i've worked in fast food and i've worked in retail you know, before I joined the Navy, and it's just, you know, thoughtless work, you know, 
thoughtless, thankless work. Friggin' anybody can step in and do it. You know, you're just an automaton. And that's one of the reasons why I gravitated towards YouTube because, you know, yeah, anybody can pick up a camera or pick up a cell phone like I'm doing now and, and talk to it for a couple minutes. But, you know, you tend to put like your own spin on things and uh, your own style into making videos and just things like that. And we all come from different places in life. So we all have different backgrounds and different stories to tell. So it's a much more personal experience on YouTube versus, you know, a regular nine to five job where, you know, anybody, they get a little bit of training, they can do your job. Yeah, man, like I just, I'm looking for a, uh, like some kind of part-time gig while I'm up there in Kalamazoo because I mean, yeah, the GI Bill does pay for um, my school and it does give me a living allowance, but um, the living allowance only, only goes so far and it only accounts for months that I'm in school. So during the summer months, I have to find a full-time job so that way I can still continue to uh, pay on my expenses and stuff. Otherwise, you know, my savings account's gonna take a pretty big hit. So um, I got a, a decent amount saved up now, but um, it's still a, still a finite amount, so it's not by any means endless. I just have to keep that in mind and try to make it more of an emergency fund rather than, well, I don't have enough this month, so I'll just kind of, you know, bring it in from the savings account, that sort of thing. And in addition to finding a part-time job, I'm also looking into other ways of uh, just making income from uh, YouTube as well. It's something I've been wanting to do for a while now, but I just haven't really found like a, uh, a decent means to make it happen as far as making money off of YouTube and stuff. And I still want to, you know, make these kinds of videos, these vlog style videos, just to let you guys know like how I'm doing and to show off different, you know, parts of uh, Kalamazoo or Michigan or just whatever. But I also want to make uh, different types of videos, you know, ones that'll hopefully uh, bring in a new audience and, you know, bring in more people so that way I can feel creative again, I guess, and also to make a little bit of money, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna friggin lie about it, you know, it's just, but I'm not doing it just for the money, I just want to put that out there, um, this is just to um, help supplement my income, and to also uh, get a new audience, do something a bit different, and stuff like that, you know, it's just been rough for me lately, as far as trying to figure out um, what I want to do with, you know, my main channel, what I want to do with making videos and stuff like that. It's just been rough trying to figure out who I am now that I'm no longer in the Navy, no longer in Japan. So, I mean, those are my two most marketable hooks, really, you know, get myself out there in videos and stuff. I'm just going to try a bunch of different things and, you know, just kind of see what sticks. I'm also going to be uh, building up my Andy Cade channel. And I'm going to be working a lot on that once I get all moved out to Kalamazoo, uh, get my schedule set up so that way I can try to have a an actual set schedule with my Let's Plays versus just like, eh, whenever, you know, because that's one of the things about Let's Plays. It's very, uh, it's a very disciplined style of video. Like a lot of people just think, you know, oh, just, you know, put a microphone in front of you, play a game and like talk and make a bunch of noises for like 10 minutes on end and bam, video, you get like a billion views. You're like the next PewDiePie or PewDiePie, whatever. <laughs> the next Markiplier. But it's a lot, it's a lot more difficult than people think to do something like that, you know? Um, I've tried doing it before and uh, it's just, I don't know, like especially doing it by myself. Like I'd prefer if there was, you know, another person in the room with me doing it with me, but uh, it is what it is. So I might have guests on the show. It's a little too early for me to say, but uh, that's what I, I do want to shoot for is to grow my Andy K channel and to hopefully, you know, set up an AdSense account with it, set up all these uh, different things. So that way I can get, you know, another source of income to help me cover the bills and stuff like that. Cause Hey, you know, <laughs> I'm a working class dude. So I still got to pay the bills, keep the lights on and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it is what it is. I'm not looking to uh, buy a mansion or buy a Ferrari or any of that other 
far-flung stuff, you know, oh my God, he's just doing it for the money. You know, I'm realistic about it. I'm not gonna come out here and tell you that, you know, I wanna work YouTube full-time and then, you know, not work other jobs until it takes off. I mean, that's just kind of stupid, right? You know, you gotta build up an audience. You got to uh, build, build up the views. And then, you know, once you start doing things consistently and, you know, you build your audience and stuff like that, you know, then, you know, I can eventually move to full-time YouTube. But I'm not just going to start off that way because I'm being realistic about these things. So, I mean, yes, my goal is to do YouTube full-time. I'm not going to lie. One of the main obstacles with doing YouTube full-time is, well, time, really. And that's one of the misconceptions of, you know, oh, he just wants to do it for the money, is that um, his time is actually more a more important currency to me than the money because, you know, you can make an infinite amount of money, but you only get so much time, you know, no matter who you are, you know? Beyonce gets 24 hours in a day, the same as you. So we'll just put it that way. It's just a matter of what you do with that time that, you know, you can make more money than other people. So, you know, with, with YouTube, you know, as long as I'm consistently putting out good content and stuff, it's going to continue to generate views and stuff like that, whether I'm on the clock or not. And that's one of the, uh, the beauties of doing stuff online is that it's continuous. There is no, well, it's only on for like eight hours at a time. And then at the end of that eight hours, you know, we take it down and you got to wait another 16 hours and then, you know, you put it back up again. It's like, it's not like that. It's continuous. And uh, I do want to make a career out of it, whether it's me making videos or me doing uh, behind the scenes work, you know, doing editing and things like that. Cause you know, like I said, I've been doing this for almost 10 years now. And I really do enjoy it. If I was doing it just for the money, I would have quit like a long ass time ago. I gotta keep, <laughs> I gotta keep driving that point home because I know there's gonna be somebody in the comments who's gonna be like, oh, Andy says he's doing it for the money. He doesn't care about stuff. Ah. So I just gotta, just gotta drive that point home, you know? Cause like I said, if, if I was in it for the uh, the money, I would have quit a long time ago. Especially after Aston's banned my account, which uh, hopefully will be changing soon, but we'll see. So, um, yeah, that's basically what's been going on. Just been doing a lot of thinking as far as what I want to do with my channel, channels rather, and just kind of planning for the future. Uh, I am getting excited about it, you know, starting college again and redoing a new channel again and stuff like that. Here's the thing though, you know, while I'm in college, my main focus has to be college. You know, I still want to do YouTube and all that kind of stuff, but honestly, you know, this is it for me as far as college goes. You know, this is, you know, this is my last chance at getting my high, higher education. So that does have to come as a priority for me. You know, I'm going to try to do YouTube as much as I can. It's just, you know, I got to, you know, let you guys know that, hey, you know, I'm, I'm taking my education very seriously here and I can't, I may not be able to make um, videos on this channel as consistently as I used to, or as much as I used to. And so, you know, I don't want you guys to think, oh, Andy Sounds just killing his channel. You know, I do love this channel. I love talking with you guys. You know, I am going to be focusing first and foremost on my education. And then after that, it'll be, you know, supplemental income and stuff like that. Because, you know, long term, I think, you know, this will be good for me. And even if nothing comes of my degree, even if I don't end up using it at all, it just... It's a goal that I've wanted to do for a long time was to graduate from college because that's been really holding me back, you know, because all my friends have graduated college. Some of them have even graduated from graduate school. And here I am with no degree to show for. I mean, I feel really behind the power curve here and I want to, you know, do something and make something of myself, you know. 
And I realize that, you know, a college degree doesn't necessarily mean that you've made it, but, you know, it's just been something that's been kind of bothering me lately that I haven't had. Like I said, even if nothing comes of it, and, you know, I don't get a job from that degree, or if I don't even work in that field, it's just something to say that, hey, I did this. I stuck it out for four years, and, you know, I fucking did it, you know? I just want to make that my priority, and then all the other stuff will come second to that, you know? It just simply is what it is. So don't worry, I'm not gonna leave YouTube. It's just, you know, I'm gonna be posting a little bit less and then with my Let's Play stuff, I'm gonna try to get a schedule out so that way, you know, it's much more um, consistent, I guess. You know, maybe do like a recording session and then just kind of break it up. So we'll just kind of see how it goes. As far as uh, releasing stuff, maybe do like one video a day, I think. That's that's the goal with uh, my Indicate channel is to get it set up to where I release like one video a day, one game a day, you know, that sort of thing. And then depending on how well the channel takes off and if it takes off to a point where I can get rid of my part-time job, then I'll start making more videos, you know, maybe do like two videos a day or something like that. But, you know, this is, you know, future planning and stuff like that. So this is the Andy song. Sign for now, like I said. Thanking you guys, Pook, for tuning in to this extremely rambly, incoherent blog and just kind of hear me, you know, rant and rave about stuff and my poofy hair, <laughs> which will be cut soon, I promise. But um, yeah, I just want to thank you guys for uh, sticking with me on my channel during these times because, you know, I know how fickle the internet can be, you know, if you're not you know, the guy for something. If you're not the Japan guy or the Navy guy or the whatever guy, then people tend to lose interest. So I, I just want to thank you guys especially for continuing to stick with me during these, uh, these changing times. And uh, I hope you guys continue to stick with me as, you know, we move this channel forward and we move other stuff forward as well. So I also want to thank you guys for liking with thumbs, comment, subscribing, set a few friends to the party, and hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, coming at you, you boop, <laughs> with my December 2015 update video for, you guessed it, December 2015. Woo. So yeah, this is my last uh, monthly update video for the year. And uh, as always with these things, you know, we'll kick off with some YouTube stuff as well as personal life stuff. And uh, I got a lot of cover on the personal life stuff. So we'll just start off with the YouTube stuff as always. <laughs> so um, in YouTube news, um, as you guys know, I haven't been really all that busy on YouTube lately. And that's mostly just due to personal life stuff, which we'll get into in the next segment but I have been working on some videos on the side, so um, those will be coming out very soon. It's, uh, for now, it's just some unboxing videos, you know, since tis the season, right? So um, we're gonna be getting those taken care of. Um, I'll be sure to do like live streams and stuff like that. I've really been enjoying uh, doing the live stream edits for my videos and stuff like that. So I uh, really like the interaction between me and you guys during those times. Um, if you guys have any suggestions for those, you know, be sure to leave a comment below in the booty boop or leave me a personal message. And I read all those things. <laughs> Even if I don't respond to all of them, I do read them all. So, I'm just saying. But anyway, um, in addition to that, I've also been working on a secret project um, that unfortunately, as of right now, I can't tell you at the time of this recording just because I don't have, you know, the sufficient, I guess, rights. I don't know way to say it, but like, you know, I don't really have the permission, I guess, to really publicly announce it yet. But I have been working on a secret project that I've been wanting to do for years, but just never really uh, got the time to do or just really had the know-how on how to do it. I'm working on it in secret. <laughs> <laughs> and I really hope to uh, get this project out to you guys as soon as I can because uh, it's really a, uh, a labor of love and uh, it's something I've been wanting to do for a long time, but right now I can't talk about it. But soon. Soon. 
<laughs> so in addition to all that, um, you know, there's gonna be more YouTube -y stuff coming out. Uh, but that's just all I have right now, you know, in the recording or the editing queue, rather. So anyway, moving on to uh, personal life stuff. So as you guys know from my uh, last update video, I've been busy looking for an apartment up in Kalamazoo so I can, you know, live up there and then start back at college again. And um, the hunt has you know, been pretty unsuccessful for a while just due to, um, I guess, I don't know if this is common elsewhere, but in the Kalamazoo area, um, they have this thing where you have to make at least three times the amount of your rent. So say for instance, your rent is, you know, 600 a month, which is about the average up there actually. You know, you have to make at least 1800 a month or more in order to qualify to rent up there. So, um, since at the time of this recording, the only income I have is would be from my BAH, which I'm not getting cut right now because I'm not in school right now. But once you know January starts rolling around, I'll start getting it. So since that would have been my only source of income, and for the Kalamazoo area, it's a little over 1,200, almost 13. You know, which is still a decent amount of money, but uh, not enough for their standards, I guess. So um, the hunt has been going pretty bad in that regard, but I do have some good news. Um, I just um, found a place out in Portage, which is the town right below uh, Kalamazoo. It just kind of blends together pretty much. So I'm um, really excited to uh, be doing some paperwork and signing the lease and getting that ball rolling before the new year starts. And <laughs> oddly enough, I'm gonna be signing the lease and doing all that stuff on my birthday, December 7th. So, you know, for those of you who've been around for a while, watch my videos for a while, my last apartment, in uh, Yokosuka, Japan, I actually signed the paperwork and all that kind of stuff on my birthday as well. So for my, uh, what would have been like my 28th birthday, I guess? Yeah, for my 28th birthday. And now for my 30th birthday coming up, you know, I'm gonna be getting an apartment for my birthday. So that's, that's a pretty sweet deal, you know, not gonna lie. And uh, you know, the apartment I'm gonna be getting now up in Michigan is not gonna be as fancy as the one in Yokosuka, you know? <laughs> But um, it is uh, really nice. It's close to a lot of stores and things like that. So I'll be within, you know, good walking distance of those or driving distance. Cause you know, hey, in America, we drive everywhere, right? I mean, I'm in my car right now, so. <laughs> but uh, it's good to know that there's a lot of stores nearby. So if, you know, gas money's kind of tight that month, I can just walk there and get something. Real excited to finally have a place lined up because it just, you know, for the longest time, I didn't think I was gonna get a place. And I was just like, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna make it? Like, am I gonna have to live out of my car or like what, you know? And, you know, I was considering, you know, going into the dorms and stuff like that, but I didn't know if they had like an age policy. You know? so, some colleges do, not all. I was just afraid that they would have like an age policy or something like that. And uh, I wouldn't be able to get into the dorms, but you know, whatever. But, you know, it all worked out. So I'm real, uh, real glad for that. And I'm gonna be starting the move-in process uh, a little bit before Christmas. So I should be all moved in uh, before Christmas. At least that's the plan right now. So I'm getting moving stuff all taken care of, you know, setting up the U-Haul, you know, getting stuff well, stuff's already packed pretty much because of my uh, PCS move back to the States. It was all already packed away and put in boxes and stuff like that. So now it's just a matter of putting it into a U-Haul and taking it up there. So really, there's not a whole lot of prep work to be done, but I'm taking care of some loose ends here and there, stuff like that. So um, the plan is, uh, you know, once uh, I get all moved up there, to Kalamazoo to uh, find a job basically because you know yeah I have a decent amount in savings and I'm gonna be getting BAH but I still need at least some kind of part-time income to help cover the bills and stuff like that so I'm not living so lean you know or relying on my savings account to you know cover the difference because it's only so finite <laughs> so um 
just really excited to, you know, finally be moving forward with the whole college thing because um, it's been a long time coming. And, um, you know, I was talking with my mom about it last night is that, you know, I've been, you know, wanting to go back to college for eight years now, you know, because uh, May 2007 was my last was the last time I was in college. And, you know, it's been almost 10 years and I'm, you know, I've been fighting to get back into college, you know, during that three year stint in between college and the Navy. You know, I was trying to get my life back on track again, and it just wasn't working. And then when I joined the Navy, you know, I did the whole, well, you know, see the world, do my thing. And then, you know, once I'm done with that, go back to college. And, you know, it's just, you know, I've really uh, grown as a person as far as that whole experience with the Navy. And I've had a lot of bad times in it, but I've also had a lot of good times too. And I think overall, it's really uh, helped mold me as a person, and uh, yeah, I don't I don't regret joining at all, you know. But I think everything, you know, worked out the way I wanted it to. And you know, some people are like, "Why didn't you stay the whole six years? You know, why couldn't you just you know lose a little bit of weight or suck it in or something like that?" And I guess you know the truth is, I just felt it was my time to go. You know, I just. I felt like I didn't have anything left to really offer the Navy. And then, you know, the Navy really didn't have anything more to offer to me that was enticing to me, you know, to compel me to stay other than, you know, making the next rank, which, you know, I was up for recently, but, you know, got out. So (laughs) what you gonna do? Um, But it just, you know, I just kind of looked at it because, you know, when I made, you know, second class or E5, um, I really had to kind of think about it because my my whole plan going into the Navy since day one was to, you know, do my initial enlistment, you know, see the world, explore, do all kinds of things, make all kinds of cool videos, whatever. And then once that's all done, get out and go to college. But when I made E5, especially when I started getting paid as an E5 and got to enjoy the benefits of an E5, like BAH and stuff like that. Um, I really had to kind of sit down and think about it because, you know, in addition to a pay increase, I'm also getting, you know, a housing allowance too. So um, that's covered. So the rest of my income is, you know, a lot of disposable income. So um, I really had to weigh the pros and cons and I really had to think about, you know, well, what if I did decide to re-enlist? You know, what would, What would my goal be if I decided to do just at least one more term, you know, another four years or whatever. And, you know, obviously the next goal would be making, yeah, SCG1 and then SCGC eventually, you know. So um, I just kind of looked at other people in those positions and just kind of, you know, just shadowed them a little bit, just kind of followed, see what they do and you know, what my potential future could be like if I were to assume the next rank. And it just, I mean, to me, it wasn't really all that appealing for me anyway. I mean, for some people, you know, they may be totally fine, you know, taking in a more leadership role, but I'm not really that kind of person. I'm not, I just, I'm not really a babysitter, you know, I don't like dealing with people, you know, so that's not really my bag. So I figured, well, you know, what if I just became like the subject matter expert? What if I learned as much about sonar as I possibly could, about the equipment, ASW, whatever. And I kind of shadowed people who were in that field, you know, or in that mode, I guess, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, they didn't really, they they got looked down on a lot, actually. I mean, sure, you know, they were the saving grace when the equipment went down and nobody knew what to do, except for them. But uh, in most other cases, they were just kind of looked down upon because, yeah, they knew a lot about sonar and stuff like that, but they weren't, you know, the hotshot, you know, go-getter type person that, you know, the Navy looks for. And so, you know, they just you know, were looked down upon, and that didn't, that didn't really appeal to me either, so, you know, for me, it was just like, you know, I had my fun in the Navy, I had a lot of good times, um, met a lot of great people from all walks.
walks of life and all over the country and all over the world, in fact, you know. There were some people who were outside of America that joined the Navy, and they were a blast to get to know. But, you know, at that point in time, I just realized, you know, the writing's on the wall, man. Like, it's, it's my time to go. And, you know, if you guys are out there considering, you know, getting out of the service, I'm not gonna discourage you at all, by no means. But I do want you to at least, you know, think about what life's gonna be like on the outside, have a plan, and save. Save as much money as you possibly can. And, you know, that's, that's, you know, that helped me out so much. I mean, had I not saved up so much money over the years, like, I wouldn't have this car. I wouldn't have been able to pay for this car in full, you know. <laughs> you know, at best, I would be leasing a car and then have to pay that. And then car insurance it would be way jacked up. And, you know, what if the car broke down? You know, I'd have to pay to repair that, too. And it would just add up over time so you know if you do plan on getting out save 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 now that's not to say you can't go out and enjoy yourself at all you know I still saved a lot of money and I went out a lot and I bought a lot of expensive things you know some of them I shouldn't have but you know live and learn but I did manage to save up enough money to have a nice little cushion so that way when I did get out I could get a vehicle and have enough saved up to where there's going to be some transitionary time before, you know, if you want to go back to school, you know, there's going to be a little bit of transitionary time because you're not going to get out right before the semester starts and you're not going to be able to get a place right before the semester starts. You know, it's just, it doesn't operate that smoothly. There's going to be a little bit of transition time. And plus, you know, you yourself have to get used to civilian life again. So, you know, there's that to consider. And, you know, I I, I might make this a, a future video where I go into more detail and stuff like that. And speaking of which, just as a little segue, you know, the segue from the segue, um, I do want to, uh, starting next year, January 2016, <laughs> um, I do want to make uh, a Life After the Navy series, which is going to be my sequel series to NFAX, which is going to talk more about um, Life After the Navy, obviously, since the name, <laughs> and, you know, just what to think of when, when you're transitioning out and things to do while you're in the service, you know, to help the transition process and, you know, maybe I can talk a bit more uh, honestly about um, a lot of my experiences in the Navy because while I was in, it was, it was difficult to make videos about the Navy while I was in the Navy because, you know, you're kind of put in this position where you're seen as a representative of the Navy and you are, you know, you're an ambassador. That's what they always say. That's their... You know, that's their key phrase. You know, you're an ambassador to the Navy, an ambassador to the to America, and stuff like that. And so, if I were to talk uh, negatively about the Navy, even if it was opinion based, um, that would really reflect poorly on me and then the Navy. And you know, if the wrong person saw it, you know, they could you know get my channel taken down, and I might get in trouble or something like that. I mean, I didn't. I really had to tread carefully as far as you know, what I could talk about. And this is by no means discouraging people from talking about their military experience. It's just, you know, if you, if you are gonna talk negatively, you gotta put disclaimers and make it known that, you know, this is your opinion. This isn't a statement coming from the United States Navy or anything like that. It's just you as a citizen, it's your opinion. And then you should be okay, you know? So. Um, just take precautions, you know, is what I'm saying. So, um, I think I've rambled on long enough with this video. Um, hmm, excuse me. Uh, so, I think we'll end it here. And uh, once I get settled up in Kalamazoo, I'll probably do a second update video to show you guys around the new place. Um, and then try to get into some kind of video schedule, because that's what I want to do. I mean, I guess you could say it's my New Year's resolution for 2016 is to get into a set video schedule. So that way, you know, it's not too uh, unpredictable as far as when I'm doing videos and stuff like that. Now, 
for these, you know, personal vlogs and stuff like that, you know, it's it'll have to be like an as time allows sort of thing because I'm gonna be very busy with, you know, school and work and stuff like that. But you know, I've been busy before and I've still managed to crank out videos. So it's all a matter of finding a schedule and finding a groove and getting into it and stuff like that. So just <laughs> give it a little time and eventually it'll settle down. So yeah, you know, can't wait to also start up Andy Cade again. Um, my long dormant Let's Play channel. Um, I've been looking at a lot of, uh, of Let's Players lately and just kind of, you know, cherry picking things that I like from their channel. You know, that's a bit more subtle as far as like production and things like that. Like what they talk about, how they do things, you know, the little edits and stuff they put in. You know the, the flow of the series and, and stuff like that and I've just been kind of you know doing a blueprint for a new and improved Andy Cade <laughs> so um, definitely check that out soon I'll probably be starting uh, next year in January so yeah <laughs> more to come and with that said this is the Andy song sign off for now thinking you guys spook, for tuning in on this rambly update video and for watching my other stuff also want to thank you guys for liking, thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send up your friends to the party, and hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. I farted. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, coming at you, book with my December 2015 update video, part two. So yeah, I'm just sitting here in my car out by uh, Grand Lake St. Mary's here in Salina, Ohio. Uh, just going over, giving you guys a little bit of update on what's going on uh, YouTube-wise as well as personal-wise. But it's mostly going to be personal because of reasons I'll get into later. But basically, like, I've been very busy as of late, you know, getting personal stuff taken care of. So I haven't had as much time to devote to YouTube stuff as I, I would like. But uh, hopefully that's going to change soon. But uh, in the meantime, uh, pers in my personal life, um, as you guys know, I already got an apartment all squared away up in Portage, Michigan, which is just a couple miles south of uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan, where I'm going to go into school at. So um, I start in January of 2016, so uh, next month. I'm getting the rest of my classes and stuff squared away for that. Um, <laughs> I should have gotten it squared away earlier, but you know, the whole uh, sign up process for it was kind of complicated and I didn't really know what I needed. This past weekend, my mom and I went up to uh, Western, Western Michigan, where I'm gonna be going to school at. We did like the orientation thing, but because it was for the spring semester, which is uh, primarily when a lot of transfer students come over, instead of just fresh new faces, you know, the uh, celebration stuff wasn't as big as I'd expected, because there wasn't as many people. And like the first couple panels and stuff were pretty disorganized. There's a lot of people coming in late and not explaining stuff and just basically doing like a and a Ooh, the sun's, co sun's coming out again. <laughs> So you can see how white I am. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so the first couple panels were pretty uh, pretty thrown together, so we were kind of discouraged by that. But then we went to the, uh, the VA office, the Veterans Affairs office. You know, finally got to get some FaceTime with people I've been corresponding with uh, on email for a while. And uh, it just, you know, it felt great, you know, to actually touch base with them and stuff like that. And, you know, they kind of taught me some things, things I needed to uh, submit still, you know, for extra grants and money and whatnot. So uh, I already took care of that. Still in the process of getting it all sorted out. But, you know, hey, that's, that's extra money, you know. So that's great. Because I'm going to be signing up for a business major. So I went over to the business college out there. Met with everybody. It was very professional, of course, you know, business. <laughs> but they have like uh, collaborations with a lot of, you know, major name uh, companies and stuff like that. You know, they do like internships and, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, I'll, I'll pretty much, I mean, you know, knock on wood, you know, I'll pretty much have a job lined up by the time I graduate. So, I mean, at least that's the plan anyway. So, really excited about that. Really excited to be starting school again for the first time since uh, 2006 actually was the was when I started at uh, Urbana University now I started there in fall of 2006 and then I 
uh, got kicked out in the spring of 2007. It's kind of funny because it's like it's almost 10 years after I started at Urbana that uh, I'll be starting college again. And, uh, you know, I think now I'm in a much better place in my life to actually, you know, get my shit together, get a degree, go out, get a job, and do other things as well. So, I'm um, really looking forward to it. You know, it's gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna be some ring rust, as it were, to, you know, get back into the, the groove of things for college, you know, because, like I said, I've been out of the whole college thing for almost a decade, so, you know, like math and things like that, I'm really wasn't good at it then. And I'm probably worse off now. Once I shake off all that stuff, I think we'll be good to go because I'm in a, a much better frame of mind this time around versus then. A lot of the issues that I had back then were money related. So, you know, like not having enough money to go to college, not having enough money to, you know, eat, things like that. So, you know, <laughs> it's usual college gripes and things like that. But I think a lot of that's going to be taken care of once the uh, post 9 11 kicks in. I get my BH and stuff like that. But for now, you know, I'm going to have to be living a little bit leaner than I was used to, you know, being in the Navy, getting a lot of d disposable income and stuff like that. So um, I'll have to buckle down a bit more because uh, I cut into my uh, my savings a bit more than I expected during my stay out here. And that's kind of, you know, the curse of uh, having that long of a break in between getting out and going to college, you know. On one hand, I think it was kind of great that I got the break because it allowed me to uh, reacclimate myself to civilian life. It allowed me to, you know, reboot my way of thinking and structure and stuff like that. But on the other hand, you know, I got bored really quickly because my friends are working nine to five jobs now and they've all moved out of Salina. So, you know, it would be very difficult for me to you know, see them again. And I want to see them again. But, you know, like I said, we're at different part points in our life now, you know, they, they've they long since graduated from college and they're not necessarily well established, but they're fairly established in their field. You know, family, of course, and you know, a lot of my friends have kids now and wives and husbands and stuff like that. So there's that. And, you know, me, single guy, fresh out of the Navy. So, you know, <laughs> you know, going back to back to college and stuff. Um, yeah. And I also turned 30 in the beginning of December, December 7th, a day to remember, <laughs> a day that will live in infamy, as it were. With turning 30, you know, there's a lot to, it hasn't really completely dawned on me, but it's starting to, little chunks day by day. And it's just like, you know, you have to change your mentality because, you know, I'm no longer a 20 something, you know, trying to figure his life out. You know, I'm a 30 something and it's more about, um, it's less about figuring out who you are and more about um, just getting yourself established. That's not to say, you know, you should have all your shit figured out by the time you're 30. It's just, you should have a clear picture of where you want to be. And, you know, mileage may vary, of course, but, uh, you know, for me, you know, my 20s were a very experimental time in my life. You know, I tried a lot of different things, you know, visited a lot of different places and just, you know, broadened my horizons, all that, all that cliche stuff, you know, and I still want to travel, you know, I, I really love making travel videos, you know, that was something that really inspired me to make videos in the first place because, you know, the first series of videos that really inspired me to make videos were like the original JVlog videos where, I mean, if you break it down a JVlog video or JVlog rather, it's kind of redundant to say that but uh, you know J vlog is like uh, a travel video in Japan I really enjoyed how they did things and just them talking about Japan and Japanese stuff and it just you know it was really interesting to me when I was starting off on YouTube I decided to uh, to kind of do videos in the J vlog style but for uh, local things. Salina may not be that interesting to me or most other people, but uh, there are some people that are like, well, what's America like? You know, they have that same interest in America that I did and still do in Japan. And so I tried to make my videos like a JVlog style, and that's what really inspired the whole Life in Video series, was just like my 
you know, ham-fisted attempt at making an Americanized J-Vlog style video. A Life in Video series has also went all around the world as well, you know, to different parts of the world, you know, different parts of Asia, Australia. Really wanted to do Europe, but uh, just wasn't in the cards, at least during my time in the Navy. You know, hopefully I'll be able to go do like a European trip or something like that. It's definitely something I want to do. But uh, for now, it's just not in the cards, you know? So don't expect it anytime soon. But there is one thing that I really wanna do, and it's kind of a bucket list material for me. And I don't know if I'm gonna do it this year or next, but uh, and by this year, I mean 2016, because 2015's already over, but I digress. Anyway, so there is some bucket list material that I do wanna do in the nearish future. And that is travel across America by train. Um, I, wa I uh, read this blog by a travel blogger and he kind of outlined how he traveled across America by train and like how much it cost. It was very interesting because, you know, I, <laughs> to be honest with you, I really don't like driving. Like if it's local or something like that, fine, great, cool. But like traveling long distances, I hate it, you know, it, you know as far as driving goes. Now, if I'm riding the train or something like that, all right, cool. You know, I kind of get into a rhythm when it comes to stuff like that, you know, trying to find a seat and, you know, making sure the battery for my phone, the little USB battery is hooked up to my phone so I don't run out of power and stuff like that. You know, I, I got like a rhythm going. But basically, you know, my brain is occupied with other things rather than, you know, driving and making sure I don't hit people and stuff like that. I think, uh, you know, riding, riding a train through America, I'll be able to see so many different sites and I'll be able to enjoy them a lot more in the moment because, you know, I won't have to worry about driving. You know, I can just, oh, we're by the Grand Canyon or whatever the case may be, you know, snap, 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 take pictures. You know, of course, you know, if I do eventually do it, um, I do want to make a video of it, but I also want to take pictures and stuff like that. So um, that's definitely something for the bucket list in the fairly, uh, imme not immediate, but you know, the, the soonish future. So I'm really excited about that. But aside from, you know, future plans and stuff like that, you know, with moving and all that, just getting everything all sorted. And uh, like I said, I already got an apartment, already got the keys and all that stuff. I've been busy moving as much as I could in my car up there. You know, we made two trips. One was when I got the apartment and the second one was this past weekend when my mom and I visited uh, Western. So we just dropped off a couple of boxes and stuff, whatever we could fit in the back and then came back home. Now this weekend, I'm gonna be getting a little U-Haul trailer to uh, get the rest of my stuff, which is mostly, uh, you know, big, you know, bigger items like, you know, my bed, my couch, my new futon, table, and some boxes and stuff like that too. But uh, it's gonna be a lot less now because we already took so many boxes and stuff. So um, yeah, that's pretty much just gonna be my weekend this coming weekend, you know, busy moving. And once I get all moved in and settled, into my new apartment, which should probably take like maybe like a week or two, depending. I do want to get some things going for my channel, you know, set up some some, some kind of a schedule, I guess, you know, for certain things like my Andy Cade channel, which is my Let's Play channel. I really want to get that thing off the ground. It's just uh, with school and whatnot, um, it's going to be difficult, but I do want to get it off the ground. And uh, as long as I can set up certain times to do it, you know, I, th I think I can, I can pull it off. And I also need to work on my commentary a bit more. I realized that kind of looking over the early episodes of Andy Cade, I was like, <sighs> you know, <laughs> so I really need a lot of help, you know, developing my Let's Play channel. And I've been looking at a lot of other Let's Play channels because that's pretty much what I what I watch nowadays. You know, I still tune in to J Vloggers and my friends and stuff like that. But you know, it's primarily uh, Let's Players. You know, the you know mostly the more laid back Let's Players like Game Grumps and uh, Super Beard Bros. Um, Super Best Friends is kind of hit hit or miss depending on what they do. 
Um, two Best Friends is pretty good too. And of course, you know, you got the big names, you know, like Markiplier and Jacksepticeye and PewDiePie and stuff like that. But um, I, for those, especially those particular three, I don't, it, this is gonna sound really weird and I don't want, you know, you guys to rag on me for it. It's just my opinion, take it or leave it, whatever. <laughs> but I don't really like uh, their Let's Play videos. To be honest with you, I, I just don't like that style of humor. It's a little too much. It's a little too exaggerated. You know, it's just, you know, scream after scream after scream. It's like there's no, there's no build up to it. It's just, bah, 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 you know, stuff like that. And it can get a little uh, draining to watch those types of videos because they have to be like constantly on all the time. But the one thing I do like about those guys is their, um, I gotta find the right word, but like transparency, honesty, I guess, in talking about their channel and talking about themselves and just the way that they open up their lives to us. You know, like Markiplier is a great example of this. You know, there's some Let's Plays of his that I like. I kind of like the Honey uh, Honey Pop stuff. I've been liking his run with Super Mario Maker. You know, I know it's an overused Let's Play title, but I still like it. But I really enjoy his, uh, you know, just his life vlogs or where he talks about issues or something like that, whatever whatever you want to call it, you know, just his non-Let's Play stuff. And, you know, talking about his, do his new dog, Chica, and stuff like that. And he's he recently came back to Ohio, because he's actually, I mean, he wasn't born in, o in Ohio. He, he lived out here for a long time. So, you know, it's kind of cool to see, you know, one of the, the big names on YouTube is from your home state. It's like, it's so cool, you know? <laughs> and then my best friend actually went to middle school with him, didn't even know it. So I'm just like, dude, you went to school with Markiplier? That's so cool, you know? I just kind of gushed and was like, oh, man. You know, because to me, it's like, you know, it's like if I went to school with Ego Raptor or something like that. It's like, oh, my God, you know? Those guys are like, you know, my YouTube heroes, you know? And I'm gushing. I'm fanboying. I realize that. Yeah, man. It's just, yeah, I, what I'm doing with the whole Let's Play thing is just kind of cherry picking uh, different things that I like about their channels and how they do business on YouTube. And then, you know, just kind of discarding the stuff I don't like, just trying to organize it as far as like how I want to approach things. Cause I prefer the, uh, like the grumps more laid back style or it's just them talking all the time. But at the same time, there's, there's a lot of parts in there where it's not necessarily dead air, but it's just, you know, it's not very interesting. It's a lot of grinding and that's kind of the nature of some of the games they play. So, you know, it is what it is. You know, I want to take their laid back style and kind of, you know, incorporate some of the more mainstream uh, Let's Players, you know, like PB and Jeff, uh, Peanut Butter Gamer and Space Hamsters Co. Let's Play channel is a great example of how they do this. You know, they have like the little edits and stuff like that. They put the text on the screen and they skip over a lot of the boring parts, but I just don't want it to be, you know, a big scream fest where I'm playing like Insomnia and Soma and, you know, Five Nights at Freddy's and I'm not really interested in that kind of stuff, you know. My angle is more towards uh, the retro games or retro style games. I know, super original, you know. Who doesn't do those types of games? I know. That's the kind, those are the kind of games I'm really interested in. You know, it's just, you know, games from my childhood and then, you know, some of the newer retro style games like Shovel Knight is a great example. Phantom Breakers Battlegrounds, another great example. One of the, it was the second game that I played, which I'm going to be picking up a lot of those series soon. Be finishing them up. But basically, I just want to retool the whole Andy Cade uh, style, I guess, of videos. And, you know, I've just been writing down different things I want to do, different things I don't want to do. And I'm hoping to uh, do collaborations, of course. You know, I'm always down for collaborations. But, you know, again, it's got to rely a lot on timing. If they're in the area is another thing. But, of course, with online gaming, you know, we can kind of bridge that gap a bit more. But, you know, it's, <laughs> it's a little iffy. But uh, anyway, um, I know I'm, you know, rambling on about stuff like that. And, uh, you know, in more YouTube news, I guess, just to kind of wrap up this whole section, 
uh, you know, I am planning something very big, a major announcement for next year because next year is going to mark my 10th anniversary on YouTube and uh, I really want to do something, something major to uh, kind of shake things up as far as, you know, my channel goes and to, you know, help push me forward into, you know, the next decade of content creation, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I hate using that word content. It's just, I mean, it is what it is, but I just, I hate using it. It sounds very, to me, it sounds very pretentious. You know, I'm a content creator. You know, you got to create the best content and it's just, ugh. I don't like it. I like it. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, I do want to do something, you know, very big and I'm, you know, in the middle of preparing for it. I'm not going to announce anything just yet because I'm still in the middle of getting it ready. When the time is right, I will uh, reveal it to you. Now that we've gotten the uh, the YouTube stuff out of the way, like I said, with, uh, with personal life stuff, you know, I'm going to be moving this weekend, going to be starting school. Um, I do want to set up, you know, my New Year's resolution is to set up a fairly set schedule for YouTube stuff. You know, so that way you guys aren't like, when's the next video coming out? I don't know, dude. Other things I want to do beyond youtube -y stuff is I really want to get into podcasting. And I know I've mentioned this before on earlier videos. I do want to get into podcasting. And I'm, you know, I, I got a pretty solid idea of what I want to do. It's just a matter of, you know, getting it lined up. And again, with podcasting more than YouTube, because YouTube is a little more forgiving, but podcasting, you have to have a fairly set schedule with stuff like that because it's very, it's got to come out, you know, once a week at this time on this day, you know, it's very regimented more so than YouTube, which is saying something because YouTube's starting to get there too. But anyway, I do want to start a podcast. I'm, it's still in the developmental stage. You know, I got a, I got a good idea. I just need to get a name for it, branding, getting guests lined up. That's going to be a, another big one for my podcast and just the general uh, structure of the show. The general gist of it without actually giving away what the subject is, but it's basically just gonna be like an interview style podcast where it's gonna be probably like 45 minutes to an hour is what I'm shooting for. And you know, if I start talking with the guest a bit more and we start getting into stuff a bit more, then it can go on a little longer, but it's at least 45 minutes to an hour. That's my goal per episode. And I want to do it like one episode a week, but again, it depends on guests, you know, when I can get them on and stuff like that. But the basic structure is going to be like me introducing the episode. You know, I also want to get sponsors and stuff involved, you know, so that way I can not only support the podcast, but also begin to uh, support myself, you know, because I'm no longer in the Navy. And at the time of this recording, I don't have a job yet. I'm going to be getting one of those. So don't think, you know, oh, I just, I quit my job to, you know, work on YouTube. You know, I'm, you know, I'm being realistic about it, but still, you know, I need a little bit of kickback. So that way, anyway, you know, I, I shouldn't talk about money on YouTube. You know, it's the cardinal sin of YouTube is talking about money. But anyway, um, so the idea is, you know, I'll do the intro, you know, give the sponsor plug, you know, when we get sponsors and then hit into the interview, do a wrap up and then episode. So I know groundbreaking format, but that's the general idea. Um, so I do want to get some content creators and I hate using that word, but I do want to get some of them on because that's kind of going to be the, uh, the theme of my podcast, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But that's pretty much what I want to talk to you guys about in this rambly, extremely long episode. Jesus. Oh, that's insane, man. And uh, I'm sure my mom's wondering where the hell I am, you know, because dinner's going to be soon. It's getting dark and cloudy. and <laughs> So that's, uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to say in this rambly, extremely long um, update video. So with that said, this is the Andy San. Signing out for now. Thinking you guys, Pook, for tuning in to this, like I said, rambly, long, <laughs> tangent-filled uh, uh, update video and for watching my other stuff. Also, I want to thank you guys for liking, the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, 
send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. See you in Portage. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang. Andy here. Coming at you, pook, with my December 2015 update video, part 3. So yeah, this is my end of the year update video. Just wanted to give you guys a heads up as to what I've been up to for the past week or so and uh, what to expect for 2016. So, here we go. Um, so right now I'm at uh, Grand Lake St. Mary's in my hometown of Salina, Ohio. So there's the lake right there. And uh, this is just a nice little quiet spot that I like to go to to, uh, to record videos, to eat, relax, get out of the house, you know, that sort of thing. So, um, anyway, with today, I just want to talk to you guys about, you know, what's been going on with me lately. So, um, not a whole lot of youtube -y stuff to talk about because I've been really busy in my personal life, but uh, youtube -y stuff is definitely going to be coming out uh, next year, you know, once I get... Once I get all settled into uh, my class schedule, work schedule, all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, basically, um, if you guys don't know, uh, I've moved into my apartment up in Portage, Michigan. All moved in. Uh, a proper apartment tour video is going to be coming out soon, so you guys will be able to see um, how we got everything all set up and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> um, and... Uh, yeah, I've just been busy with that. Uh, I've been busy with trying to find a job. Just a little part-time gig, nothing too special. Uh, I've been looking around at different places, you know, putting in my applications, stuff like that. So, uh, you know, we'll see. But it's the holidays, so um, they're pretty busy with uh, applicants and things like that. So um, it might take a little bit, but uh, hopefully I'll, I'll have something very soon. So, in addition to that, uh, in about a week or two, I'm going to be starting a, a school again, going to Western Michigan University. Um, going to be majoring in uh, computer information systems, but uh, I guess like how they do it is like for the first year or two, you're technically a business major, like you're just a nondescript business major, and then for the last two, then you actually work towards a major or something like that. I, I don't know. <laughs> it's confusing, you know, because... Yeah. Anyway, so, you know, I'm working towards that. Um, got all my classes taken care of, you know, for uh, this semester. Um, it was kind of uh, a little daunting to actually sign up for my own classes because um, I never really did that uh, with my other um, uh, colleges that I went to. Uh, it was mostly just I sat down with an academic advisor and they pretty much told me, okay, you need this class, this class, this class, and this class. And they're like, okay, sign up for it. With uh, with Western, it was a bit more uh, open-ended. So it's just like, okay, you know, they recommended, uh, I think like maybe two or three classes. And then they decided, you know, okay, you need these two or three classes and then whatever else you pick for the semester, that's on you. You know, just <laughs> for like general electives and stuff like that. So, um, I got an accounting class, a, I think it's micro, yes, microeconomics, not macro. So microeconomics, a sociology class, which is like my last minute pick because I was kind of running out of classes. Um, also got a Japanese class because, hey, you know, why not put a little bit of that, little bit of that Nihon Go to uh, the test, right? You know? learn how to speak Japanese proper rather than pointing at stuff and, you know, knowing basic Japanese survival or survival Japanese. Oops. <laughs> um, so yeah, I thought I'd do that just to uh, brush up on my Japanese and stuff like that. And, you know, just for something to do because I'm really interested in it. And I think uh, what I'm planning to do in about a year's time is doing the, uh, the study abroad program. Now, Western has a lot of different study abroad programs. So, and it actually goes hand in hand with my business major too. So it's not just me, you know, leaving the country just because I love Japan, you know. It actually kind of ties in with my major of, you know, having a globally diverse business profile. So um, there's a couple uh, Japanese uh, colleges and stuff like that that um, have like a co-op program or like a student exchange program with Western. Then there's a couple others that I could get through uh, through other means, but uh, 
some of the ones that uh, they have a co-op with. Uh, the most well-known one is uh, Keio University out in Tokyo. It's if it's not the number one, it's like in the top three of Japanese universities. It's basically like the Harvard or Yale of Japan, pretty much, in its uh, you know famousness, I guess. So um, that's one I I really wanted to go to, you know, just because it's so well known and uh, one of my uh, favorite YouTubers of all time, the late great Roger Swan, went to Ko as part of an exchange program as well. So I thought that'd be kind of neat to do it to do it as well. But um, the thing with Ko is though, it's uh, it's also in Tokyo, so. Um, I was out in the uh, Kanagawa area before, so it's just like, for me to go back to that, it's just gonna be, well, me going back to that. And, you know, I love Tokyo, Tokyo's nice, but the thing is, it's, it's not gonna be anything that new, really. You know, because it's pretty much gonna be a case of been there, done that. Because, you know, I've already been to a lot of the places, not all, but a lot of the places that I've wanted to see in Tokyo. And for me to go back to that, it's just going to be, you know, retreads and stuff like that. And plus, you know, there's a bajillion other, you know, YouTube videos out there talking about how great Tokyo is. And, you know, why do, why should I, you know, put my little drop in the bucket for that? So, um, there's also other places that I want to, uh, go to as well. Like, uh, uh, there's a couple, uh, universities in Kyoto. I've... I think it's like Ritsu Mei Daiken or something like that. Uh, the name kind of escapes my head right now, but I think that's it. Um, that's one of the uh, the universities out in Kyoto that I'm thinking about going to. Uh, they have one up... Uh, it's not Sapporo, Sapporo, but it's like near Sapporo. It's like a satellite city of Sapporo which is another interesting thing, but you know, it's a lot of cold weather, so I'm a little iffy on that, <laughs> but it would be interesting, and I don't know a lot of people that make videos up that way, so I think it would be a pretty interesting experience if I were to do something like that. And of course, Kyoto, you know, not a lot of, you know, people doing their thing up in Kyoto other than going to like the temples and stuff like that, but even then, it's just like, you know, onesies, twosies, so. Um, so there's that one. Uh, I think there's another one a bit further south, like in Kumamoto or something like that, I think. Um, I'll, have to, I'll have to get back to you on that, but I definitely know the one, you know, Keio, obviously. Then there's a couple in Kyoto. Uh, there's one up north in Sapporo, or in the nearby Sapporo area. And then there's ones a bit further south, which is what I'm thinking, because I, I want to go to a... Uh, a southern Japanese university just because um, when I visited um, Hiroshima and uh, also visited uh, Sasebo uh, it was just a beautiful place and it was very very scenic Japan not necessarily traditional Japan I mean they had a lot of that too but it was very scenic in that there was a lot of little islands and stuff like that it's just it's just a beautiful place so I definitely want to see if I can get to a university down there, but um, barring that, I would say probably Kyoto because it's more the traditional Japan. You know, you got a lot of the temples and stuff like that, so that would be kind of neat to see and to experience a whole other side of Japan. I've never been to, to the Kansai region before. and. Uh, Kansai region is known as like the business capital of Japan pretty much, you know, Shinjuku be damned, <laughs> I guess, but uh, a lot of a lot of famous businesses out in that area, I mean the most, one of the most well known, at least for me, is uh, Nintendo HQ is actually in Kyoto, and a lot of uh, Nintendo alumni are from that area as well, so it'd be kind of neat to see um, the area where a lot of, you know, well-known game designers came from and the area that kind of inspired them to make games and stuff like that you know games like zelda pokemon not so much mario but you know yeah you know stuff like that so i think that'd be kind of interesting uh but that's a bit more further long-term planning maybe maybe in about a year or two so um that's definitely something i want to do uh but in the meantime 
Um, I'm going to be uh, doing this year, um, just starting out, I decided to make a, a fairly easy course load just because it's been a while since I've been in college. And I know it's going to be easy, you know, well, I say it's going to be easy, but uh, I just wanted to kind of ease myself into uh, the course load rather than thinking, oh, college is going to be a breeze and just like overload myself with the courses. And plus I wanted to leave myself uh, open so that way I can, you know, work a decent schedule so I can get some hours and stuff like that, even though I, I really don't need a whole lot of hours, but... I still want, you know, a decent amount of, of time left over so that way I can, you know, allocate it to work and then, you know, making YouTube videos and stuff like that, which is definitely something that I'm going to be doing more of in 2016. Um, it's going to be a lot of changes to the channel, a lot of, uh, it's going to be a major focus shift in 2016. Um, I'm going to be focusing a lot on the Let's Play scene for my uh, Andy Cade channel. I'm going to be, uh, you know, giving it the old college try, as they say. So um, I got a lot of ideas for the channel, a lot of game ideas that I want to do. Um, I already have the equipment pretty much um, taken care of. Uh, I might get a couple things here and there, but uh, for the most part, the, the basics are covered. So... Um, I just want to get that get that off the ground, um, you know, get the games that I want to review out there, and uh, you know, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I just I'm I'm just like whenever I go online and I look at a lot of Let's Players and I'm kind of you know gleaning a little bit of stuff from them, like how they do videos, and there's a lot of different styles of how Let's Players do things, you know. There's people that have the face cam, and there's people that don't have the face cam. There's some people that do like long form let's play, you know, like the Grumps, uh, Super Beer Bros, stuff like that. Then there's others like Markiplier and PewDiePie who do more like highlight style. I think I think for me, like I, I would be more of like a, a combination of the two as far as how their editing goes. You know, just you know, kind of cut out a lot of the boring parts but still have more of like a casual flow to it. Um, it's not going to be all screams and reaction videos and stuff like that. But, you know, I, I still want to keep it fairly entertaining and, you know, ramp up the personality a little bit, you know, be a bit more animated, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, maybe put in some live action stuff before the episode. That's another idea I've been tinkering around with as far as you know, what I want to do for games. And speaking of games, like, I have so many ideas for games, but, um, uh, like, I don't know how I want to schedule this because I don't know if I want to, you know, stick with a, you know, one video a day sort of format with my Indicate channel. Or should I do, like, two videos a day? Um, three videos is a bit much, but I think two videos a day would be ideal. So I've just been kind of toying around with, well, what do I want to do? You know, do I want to have like a theme? Do I just want to, you know, play a game for a week and then start a new game or something like that? You know, I just, because I know that there's some games that you can't finish in a week or at least a, a week's worth of Let's Plays. So I wanted to get back to them and it's just a bunch of, you know, debating on what I'm going to do. But I think ultimately I just got to do it <laughs> really. And um, once I'm actually in the groove with it, then I can, you know, make corrections as needed. But the uh, the initial idea for Anticade is to um, have it be uh, one video a day, every day. Um, I don't know times yet. I'm thinking probably afternoon-ish, Eastern Standard Time. So maybe between like uh, 12 to 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Eastern Standard Time. Um, again, toying with the schedule idea. You know, it's it may change. But the idea is to have uh, one video a day every day, uh, do one game a week, and then every week change it up. And then, um, as far as bringing games back, I'm not sure how I want to do that. I'm not sure if, like, maybe do one game 
one week, do a new game next week, and then the week after that, bring back the game from the first week. Um, still kind of toying with the idea. Um, who knows? <laughs> or, or maybe just, you know, mix it up and have, like, a different game every day. Or, like, have, you know, cycle between two different games. You know, have one game released Monday, another Tuesday, and then the previous game on Wednesday. Um, just a lot of different uh, ideas as far as how I want to do things. So that's what I want to do starting off. Um, later, as I get used to the uh, the format and can, you know, record stuff a bit more efficiently, then I want to upgrade it to uh, two videos a day every day. And... Uh, possibly do three I don't know if three is pushing it it just uh, it just depends because like <laughs> it just depends on where it goes from here um, if if I can manage to pull off three videos a day you know I'll do it but uh, again it's very time-consuming and uh, you know there has to be some kind of you know uh, <laughs> something uh, I lost bleh, lost my train of thought <laughs> but basically like you know I don't want to overwork myself essentially you know as I'm rambling on here so I don't want to overwork overwork myself but I do want to get uh, good videos out there a lot of good games stuff like that so uh, I guess like the the game not really a theme or a motif per se it's just uh, I'm gonna be going over a lot of games that um, that I grew up with, you know, the whole retro game thing. I know, so original, <laughs> but uh, a lot of retro games, retro style games, uh, anime style games, some anime games, because there are some anime series out there that made good games. Uh, definitely want to get those on the show. Um, you know, like I said, games I grew up with, um, newer sequels. To games that I grew up with, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, <laughs> um, stuff like that. And uh, I'm just, I'm really excited about, you know, what I'm going to be doing for the show. And I just, I, I just have so many ideas. And, um, but ultimately, though, even though I have a lot of ideas, it's, it's all about the execution of the ideas, isn't it? You know, just, um, it doesn't really matter how well. Um, or how well the game selection is. Like, if my commentary is off, or if me personally, if I'm not that engaging of a Let's Player, then the whole thing's just whatever, you know? So, um, I definitely want to give it the old college try and, you know, get the new channel off the ground. Um, stuff like that. So, um, we'll see where it goes from there. If it's a success, then I'll run with it. If not, then, you know, it's whatever. Um, I'll probably just, you know, downscale it, do it for fun, stuff like that. But, you know, ultimately time will tell. So keep myself open to either possibility. Uh, but aside from that channel, um, there's going to be some uh, major, major news for my main channel in the coming months. Um, really excited about the changes and stuff like that that are going to be happening to the main channel. Um, really nervous too because um it's a it's a very major change in the main channel and uh, i hope you guys will stick around with me for it and i know i'm gonna probably alienate some people especially the the long termers uh for it but uh, hopefully you guys will stick around with me for it um who knows <laughs> It may be my downfall on YouTube, I don't know, but uh, um, but I'm hoping that you guys stick around, you know, ha have something new, something fresh, super fresh bros on the uh, on the main channel. So uh, we'll see, we'll see, but uh, I'm going to keep it a little bit quiet for, uh, for a couple months until it's completely developed, but uh, hopefully you guys will like it. And uh, we'll just go on from there. So, I see I've been rambling on for quite some time. So, um, better end things here. So, yeah, this is Andy San. Sign up for now. Thinking you guys, poop, for uh, tuning into this rambly, long uh, update vlog, last video of the year for 2015, and uh, for watching my other stuff. 
also want to thank you guys for liking with the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party, and hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Take it easy, guys. Bye. See you in 2016. <laughs> Bye.